Advertisement. Hi, when calendar year 1520, there was a loud noise in the sky. The giant's thunder axe. Golden Lion was completely defeated by Straw Hat Luffy. Several islands controlled by the Golden Lion's ability also fell from the sky. Set off a huge wave. Golden Lion lay paralyzed on the ground, lost in memories. Roger, did I fail again? You are indeed a failure, Golden Lion. A voice suddenly sounded from Golden Lion's ears. Golden Lion mentioned his strength and asked, Who is it? Who are you? At this time, a figure kept walking towards the Golden Lion. This figure was Luo Chen who had traveled to the world of pirates. Luo Chen has been waiting for this moment for a long time, almost a year. In addition, there are no real masters in East Blue, so the Golden Lion has become Luo Chen's primary target. All this is because of the system, so Luo Chen has been waiting for the opportunity. Now the opportunity has come, and it is time for Luo Chen to take action. Golden Lion used his remaining strength to ask, Boy, what do you want to do? Or do you want Liao Zi's head in exchange for the bounty? Haha, <laughs> Luo Chen just sneered and said, Rather than letting you be imprisoned by the Marine and imprisoned again, you might as well fulfill me directly. What do you mean? Golden Lion had no idea what this man was talking about. To Golden Lion's surprise, Luo Chen pulled out a short sword and stabbed it directly into Golden Lion's heart. You, Golden Lion wanted to open his mouth to say something, but nothing came out. His body couldn't even move. The Golden Lion, which was already exhausted, had completely killed him. Advertisement. System, start. Ding. Congratulations to host, activation, inherit all the character's abilities once. The first additional gift of a certain ability of the copied character does not include the devil fruit ability. Activation conditions for the next stage, intervention in summit war. Start inheriting all abilities. Inherited character, golden lion shiki. Inherited status, weak, old, and disabled. Inherited lion fruits ability, awakened, the side effects of devil fruits ability have been eliminated. Inherited observation hacky, class D. Inherit armament hacky, D class. Inherit conquerors hacky, C plus level. Inherited physical skills, C level. Inherited swordsmanship, SS level. Inherited basics, physical endurance defense, C level. Comprehensive attack power, S plus level. Comprehensive defense power, C level. With the death of Golden Lion, all the abilities of Golden Lion were integrated into Luo Chen's body. Looking at the interface provided by the system, Luo Chen had to sigh that this Golden Lion was extremely weak. But the weakness was quite serious. The grade classification given by the system is E.D.C.B.A.S.S.S.S.S. They correspond to ordinary people to the god level above the general level. A level represents ordinary people, and E plus represents masters among ordinary people. Advertisement. A level represents the existence of vice admiral level, and A plus level belongs to the elite vice admiral ranks. The S class belongs to the three disaster like existence of the four emperors pirate group. The S plus level is like the second in command of the four emperors pirate group, similar to Marco, Flame Calamity, and Katakuri. The SS level is recognized as the ceiling combat power of the high, the general level. As weak as Golden Lion is, it has reached an unbearable level. The two-color Haki has weakened to the point of disappearing. The lowest level Haki is D-level. As a result, Golden Lion's two-color Haki is only D-level. Fortunately, at least the basics of two-color Haki are there. Without Haki, Luo Chen would have to learn Haki by himself. This results in more time being wasted. But because Luo Chen is only about 20 years old, he is still in his prime. After inheriting all the abilities of Golden Lion, the overall strength has also changed. Luo Chen opened the system interface. Host, Luo Chen. Paramecia Lion Fruit, Awakened. Observation Haki, Class C. Armament Haki, C Level. Conquerors Haki, S Rank. Physical Skills, C Plus Level. Swordsmanship, SS Level. Basic. Physical Endurance Defense, C Plus Level. Comprehensive Attack Power, S Plus Level. Comprehensive Defense Power, B Level. The reason why Conqueror's Haki has improved so much is because Conqueror's Haki improves based on the comprehensive improvement of courage and strength. Advertisement. For the two-color Haki, in terms of basics, Golden Lion is old and frail, while Luo Chen is young and energetic. Luo Chen looked at his palms and clenched his fists, the weapons are hardened. C-level armament Haki can barely reach the standard of hardening, but D-level Haki cannot do it at all. In addition, the S-class Conqueror's Haki can also be controlled freely and achieve precise strikes. But to achieve Conqueror's Entanglement, it's obvious that Conqueror's Haki, which is only S-level, is simply not enough. I guess you have to be at least SS level to be able to do it. Luo Chen slowly squatted down and pulled out two weapons from the two legs of the Golden Lion, the big sword Sakura Ten and the dead wood. Luo Chen looked at the two weapons and smiled and said, Fortunately, swordsmanship is not related to physical fitness. It is a skill. However, the swordsmanship of the world's greatest swordsman at that time must have weakened a bit, and he is probably at SS plus level. Otherwise, Golden Lion, I will not waste such a precious opportunity on you. After Luo Chen finished speaking, he stretched out his right hand and lifted up the Golden Lion. Since he has inherited all the abilities of the Golden Lion, he should be given a good burial place. In the original work, after the Golden Lion was defeated by Straw Hat Luffy, he was rearrested by Marine. Marine can only do these sneaky things. Luo Chen carried the Golden Lion's body and slowly ascended to the sky. Luo Chen controlled Lion Fruit's ability and flew in one direction. After Luo Chen left with the Golden Lion, Marine arrived at the scene with five military ships. After searching around, I couldn't find any trace of the Golden Lion. In the end, Marine attributed the incident to the Golden Lion escaping. Otherwise, how could I not find the Golden Lion even after searching around? It is impossible for people to disappear for no reason, and Golden Lion itself has the ability of Lion Fruit. Being able to escape is also part of Marine's calculations. Advertisement. Chapter 2 Logetown tries the waters with Smoker. Advertisement. Luo Chen, who planned to fly out of East Blue, passed by Logetown, looked at the island below and said lightly, Logetown, since you're passing by here, let's go down and take a look. At the same time, the Logetown Marine Branch base. Smoker sat on a chair smoking a cigar and said, Straw Hat Boy, that boy's bounty has now been increased to 300 million belly. Colonel Smoker, are we really going to transfer him? Tashiji who was on the side had been thinking about this matter since he followed Colonel Smoker back to Logetown from Alabasta. Smoker exhaled a puff of smoke and responded, that's right, you can't get real exercise by staying here in Logetown. That's why I applied to be transferred from Logetown to the New World. 
Only there is the real battlefield where I can train myself and improve my strength. But, Colonel Smoker, do you think Marshal Sengoku will agree? Tashiji asked worriedly. Smoker slowly stood up and walked to the window, looked at the streets of Logue Town, and said, It's too peaceful here, and you won't encounter really powerful pirates. Besides, my application is to Aokiji Admiral. Aokiji Admiral. Hearing this, Tashiji thought of Aokiji, one of the three admirals. Suddenly, Smoker, who was standing by the window looking outside, saw a figure flying down from the sky. Smoker was shocked and said, What is that? What are you talking about? Colonel Smoker. Tashiji asked very confused, not knowing what Colonel Smoker just said. Advertisement. Without saying a word, Smoker directly picked up his ten-hand weapon and ran towards the door, saying, Tashiji, follow me quickly, there may be pirates coming to Logue Town. Pirates, aren't there many pirates passing through Logue Town every day? Zayao Shijir picked up her weapon and quickly followed Colonel Smoker. Tashiji said quickly while running, wait for me, Colonel Smoker, I can't keep up. Tashiji looked at Colonel Smoker more and more, and became more and more anxious, fearing that he would lose Colonel Smoker. Luo Chen fell on the streets of Logue Town, unaware that he had been discovered by Marine. After all, the current Luo Chen, observation Haki level C is only a low level level, not much better than D level entry level. Therefore, it is not possible to achieve large scale perception. Just when Luo Chen was about to go over and take a look at the execution platform where Pirate King Roger was executed, there were countless footsteps behind me, Luo Chen turned around in confusion and found that the leader was Smoker, followed by a large group of Marine soldiers. Luo Chen chuckled nonchalantly, I just arrived in Logue Town and I was discovered. After Smoker came to Luo Chen, he asked, who are you and what is the purpose of coming to Logue Town? In Smoker's opinion, people who can fly from the sky are definitely not ordinary people. You have to figure out what the other party's purpose is. Advertisement. Tashiji followed a group of marine soldiers, running all the way, and finally caught up. Tashiji gasped for air and looked very tired, making a group of marine soldiers even more unsightly. After all, they all ran all the way with all their strength. Tashiji took a breath and looked at Luo Chen, then opened a stack of reward orders. After searching around, I couldn't find any information about the person in front of me. He ran to Colonel Smoker and whispered, Colonel Smoker, that man is not a pirate, nor is he a bounty criminal. Huh. Smoker frowned and said, not a pirate or a bounty criminal. Luo Chen put his hands in his pockets and said with a smile, What? You marines, are you going to attack people indiscriminately? Smoker looked at Luo Chen's appearance and said very unhappy, Since you are not a pirate or a bounty criminal, then marine is naturally not qualified to arrest you. But, you'd better not cause trouble in Logue Town, or I'll send you into Impel Down. Since I've been warned by you marine, shouldn't I show you a little bit? Luo Chen said with a smile at the corner of his mouth. Luo Chen doesn't plan to use swordsmanship. He just wants to have some fun with Smoker. Luo Chen's two-color haki is both C-level, and his physical skills are C+. Taken together, they should be considered close to B-level and less than B-level. The combat capability is probably around that of Colonel Marine. It just so happens that this Logia Demon Fruit Power Smoker is very good as a sparring partner. If he used his sword skills and Lion Fruit ability, Luo Chen could kill a rookie like Smoker in a matter of minutes. Advertisement. After all, Luo Chen's current strength is focused on swordsmanship and Devil Fruit abilities. But doing it that way, in Luo Chen's opinion, has no meaning at all. Fortunately, this is the first official battle since coming to the pirate world. Smoker saw the man in front of him in a fighting stance and immediately said, It seems you are planning to go against Marine. For people like you, even if you are not a pirate now, you will become one sooner or later. Stay back and don't be affected by my battle. Yes, Colonel Smoker. Tashiji and a group of Marine soldiers responded in unison. Smoker's lower body turned into smoke, and he smoked a cigar and said, Boy, let's see if you are still arrogant later. White Smoke Launcher. So fiercely that Smoker rushed towards Luo Chen. When Smoker's smoke fist was about to hit Luo Chen, Luo Chen narrowly avoided Smoker's attack. At that moment, Luo Chen observation Haki kept locking onto everything around him. The moment he avoided Smoker's attack, Luo Chen hit him with a backhand fist. Smoker pushed his ten hands and aimed at Luo Chen's neck and pounced on him. Because in Smoker's opinion, this person flew here, so it is demon fruit power. As long as the demon fruit power is hit by his ten hands, then the battle can basically be declared over. Advertisement. Chapter 3 Conqueror's Haki. Advertisement. When Smoker's ten hands were about to hit the man's neck, he dodged it in time. No matter how slow Smoker's reaction was, he now knew that the person in front of him had observation Haki. At the same time, Luo Chen's fist also hit Smoker's stomach, knocking Smoker away with one punch. This scene was unexpected by the Marine soldiers and Tashiji present. Tashiji said in disbelief, Colonel Smoker, isn't it Logia Demon Fruit Power? Why were you hit by this person? In Tashiji's memory, no one had ever been able to hit Colonel Smoker. However, this perception has now been officially shattered. Logia Demon Fruit Power can also be hit. The Marine soldiers were also very panicked. Colonel Smoker was their boss. If Colonel Smoker were defeated, how could they be the match for the man in front of them? Smoker, who was knocked several dozen meters away, got up and dusted himself off. It had been a long time since he had felt pain, which made Smoker very unhappy. Smoker lit another cigar for himself and said, Boy, it seems that you are really not simple. Even the two-color hacky has mastered it. It seems that I have to keep you today, otherwise it will be a disaster for you to go to the Grand Line. Smoker didn't expect that the opponent would play hacky in two colors. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been hit by the opponent just now, and Smoker wouldn't have felt the pain in his stomach. Advertisement. Luo Chen said with a smile, It turns out that Colonel Smoker of Logue Town can't even do two-color hacky. He is really rubbish. Damn boy, you're looking for death. When Smoker heard this, his whole body almost exploded. Lifting the ten hands, his whole body turned into smoke and he rushed towards Luo Chen. While Smoker was fighting with Luo Chen, Tashiji was also analyzing the two weapons hanging on Luo Chen's waist. So Tashiji kept opening the small book and finally found the information about the two knives. After seeing the information about the two knives, Tashiji was shocked and said, Those two knives are indeed no ordinary weapons. They are the 21 swords, Sakura Ten and Deadwood. In other words, the opponent is most likely a master of swordsmanship, but why does he not use swordsmanship but keeps using physical skills to fight Colonel Smoker? The marine soldier on the side asked, Sergeant Tashiji, should we go help Colonel Smoker? It looks like Colonel Smoker won't be able to defeat him in a short time. We have to believe in Colonel Smoker, he will definitely be able to defeat that man. 
Tashiji said. In fact, Tashiji herself had no idea that someone could fight to such a degree with Colonel Smoker. How could they handle it? And Smoker, who was fighting, also discovered that the other party was using him for training? Smoker roared angrily, you bastard, fight Lao Zi seriously. Are you a swordsman? Use all your strength. Advertisement. Luo Chen didn't answer Smoker, after fighting for so many rounds. Regarding Smoker's situation, Luo Chen has roughly analyzed everything. That is Smoker's physical skills, which are superior to Luo Chen's. It is estimated to be around B level, which is more powerful than Luo Chen's C plus level. But Luo Chen's advantage is that he has two-color hacky. Even if he is not strong, there is a big difference between having two-color hacky and not having two-color hacky. Smoker, who possesses the ability of Logia Smoke Fruit, may cause a devastating blow to those who do not know how to hacky at any time. Unfortunately, Smoker cannot use dual-color hacky, which is Smoker's biggest weakness. With the addition of Smoke Fruit, it has no powerful lethality on its own. Therefore, up to this point in the battle, Smoker has become more and more passive. Luo Chen constantly seized opportunities to counterattack. Smoker gritted his teeth and thought secretly, although this person's strength is about the same as him. However, Smoker knows that as time goes by, he will be the one who ultimately loses. Because, he doesn't know how to double color hacky, especially observation hacky. Therefore, Smoker relies more on his eyes when fighting. Trouble. Smoker whispered, however, there is no chance. As long as ten hands hit the opponent, then this battle will be over. Suddenly, Luo Chen took the initiative to attack and rushed forward. Advertisement. The same goes for Smoker. Just when the two people were about to collide, the ten hands in Smoker's hand suddenly became uncontrollable. What? Smoker was distracted for a moment. After all, the ten hands were his important weapons. And Luo Chen directly caught Smoker's distraction, clasped his hands directly, and hit Smoker's head with all his strength. Smoker was hit so hard that he spat out a mouthful of blood. Being distracted in such a fierce fight is very dangerous. Smoker, who vomited blood and fell to the ground, still couldn't figure out why his ten hands were suddenly out of control just now. This kind of thing has never happened before. What Smoker didn't know was that the reason why the ten hands suddenly went out of control was because Luo Chen's lion fruit ability was attached to Smoker's ten hands. Colonel Smoker. Tashiji screamed loudly and worriedly, running towards the direction where Colonel Smoker fell to the ground. A group of marine soldiers also followed Sergeant Tashiji. Smoker tried to get up, but fell down again, and said desperately, Don't come over, he is not an enemy you can deal with. It's okay for Smoker to be injured himself, but Smoker doesn't want his subordinates to be killed because of him. Haha. <laughs> Suddenly a terrifying momentum burst out from Luo Chen's body. Once it spread, the marine soldiers rolled their eyes and foamed at the mouth. Tashiji was also within the target range of Luo Chen's conqueror's hacky. Advertisement. Chapter 4 Take Tashiji Away. Advertisement. Smoker is also enduring the impact of Luo Chen's conqueror's hacky. Smoker was stunned and said with difficulty, conqueror's hacky? You guy. Because at this moment, Smoker felt like he was about to faint, if Luo Chen conqueror's hacky hadn't just been released for a moment. Smoker estimates that he himself may also faint in the end. Luo Chen slowly walked up to Smoker, smiled and said, Mr. Smoker, do you want to continue? Damn bastard. Smoker clenched his fists and stared at Luo Chen. Luo Chen turned to Tashiji and said, My name is Luo Chen, remember this name. Besides, as punishment for offending me, I will take away your man. Smoker's eyes widened and he said, What are you going to do? Come at me, don't attack my man. However, Luo Chen ignored Smoker's incompetent roar, lifted Tashiji and slowly lifted his body into the air. Smoker just watched Luo Chen fly away with his subordinate Tashiji. Damn it. Smoker slammed his fist on the ground unwillingly. Half a day later. Smoker dialed the number of Marshal Sengoku of Naval Headquarters. Meanwhile, Naval Headquarters Marine Ford, Marshal's office, Sengoku were processing various documents. The phone nearby is ringing? Do do do. Advertisement. Sengoku took a look and smiled, it turns out to be that kid Smoker. Aokiji told me before that Smoker wants to be transferred to the Grand Line. Moses Moses, this is Sengoku. Sengoku picked up the phone and responded. At the same time, Smoker, who was far away in East Blue Logue Town, said in a low mood, Marshal Sengoku, I have something important to report to you. Smoker then told Marshal Sengoku what happened in Logue Town and Luo Chen's abilities, including the fact that Tashiji was captured. After hanging up the phone, Sengoku was lost in thought for a moment, and muttered, an amazing newcomer has appeared in East Blue. According to what Smoker described, the young man named Luo Chen not only knows the two-color hacky, but also the conqueror's hacky has also awakened. Such a boy, if he grows up smoothly in the future, he may become as powerful as the seven warlords of the sea. After all, having conqueror's hacky means there's plenty of potential. As for why Sengoku didn't think of Luo Chen at the level of four emperors. Because, the level of four emperors is simply not something that ordinary people can reach. That's a real recognized monster of the sea. Soon after, a reward order for Luo Chen was printed, with a reward of 100 million belly. The first bounty reached 100 million belly. It can be said that Sengoku has taken Luo Chen very seriously. Sengoku looked at Luo Chen's bounty poster and said calmly, with the addition of Luo Chen, the number of supernovas in the first half of the Grand Line will reach 12. It seems that this generation of supernovas deserves Marine's high attention. Advertisement. Here, Sengoku made errors in Luo Chen's intelligence. Smoker didn't know that Luo Chen had very powerful swordsmanship. He just knew that Luo Chen was also a swordsman. The focus is on Luo Chen's conqueror's hacky. As for the devil fruit ability, if Sengoku saw it with his own eyes, he would definitely recognize that Luo Chen was using lion fruit. Now Sengoku doesn't have much energy to focus on a newcomer. Because, there is a very important thing at the moment, which is about Blackbeard Daiki becoming the seven warlords of the sea and marine capturing Fire Fist Ace. Just now, Smoker called, and Sengoku also informed Smoker to come over and gather at naval headquarters. Of course, during the process, Sengoku will definitely not tell Smoker what is going on. This matter is now highly confidential in naval headquarters. No slightest disturbance can be leaked out. If there is any mistake, consequences that even Marine cannot bear may occur at any time. At the same time, Tashiji, who was taken away by Luo Chen, also woke up. Ah! Help! Why am I flying in the air? Help! Colonel Smoker! 
Tashiji looked at the endless sea below and was almost frightened. Luo Chan raised Tashiji and threatened directly, Shut up, you stupid woman, do you want me to throw you away now? Only then did Tashiji realize that there was another person next to her, who was just a natural idiot. After Tashiji fainted before, he lost any consciousness. Advertisement. Tashiji asked anxiously, What did you do to Colonel Smoker? He's not dead. Luo Chen simply responded. Tashiji was relieved to hear that nothing happened to Colonel Smoker. However, after Tashiji breathed a sigh of relief, he thought of something. So Tashiji asked, Then what are you going to do with me? Let you become a pirate. Luo Chen said in a cold tone. Tashiji was stunned and said in horror, I don't want to be a pirate. I am a righteous marine. Tashiji also started to make a fuss out of fear. Luo Chen warned, After three seconds, if you continue to make trouble, I will throw you out. Tashiji looked at himself thousands of meters in the air. What if he fell from such a high place? Must he die immediately? Even if Tashiji herself is in a daze, she still knows to save her life. We can no longer sacrifice for no reason. Furthermore, Tashiji also thought that as long as she didn't become a pirate, could anyone force her to become a pirate? Not even the person in front of me. Luo Chen doesn't care at all what Tashiji thinks. It's just Luo Chen's bad taste. Tashiji asked, then where are you going to take? Don't ask questions that you shouldn't ask, do you understand? Luo Chen threatened Tashiji. Advertisement. Chapter 5 Killing 3 Original CP9 People. Advertisement. The time came two days later. In these two days, Tashiji finally got a taste of Luo Chen's evil methods. Now Tashiji seems very well behaved in front of Luo Chen, because she is really afraid of being molested by Luo Chen. An island near the Seven Waters capital, Luo Chen arrived here with Tashiji. Tashiji asked doubtfully, Luo Chen, what are you doing here? Looking for someone. Luo Chen simply responded. In the original work known to Luo Chen, CP9, who was defeated by the Straw Hat Pirates, was hunted by Marine and ended up here, doing street busking to earn money for Rob Luchi to recover from his injuries. If this is true, then members of CP9 are here. When Tashiji heard that Luo Chen said he was here to find someone, he didn't dare to ask any more questions, so he chose to shut up and followed Luo Chen silently. After asking around, Luo Chen came to a street. Fortunately, this island is not a particularly big town. Otherwise it may take longer. Luo Chen and Tashiji walked to where a group of people were watching. Tashiji whispered in surprise, there are many people watching here. Luo Chen didn't waste any time, and directly hit Conqueror's Hacky. In an instant, countless people rolled their eyes and fell to the ground one after another. Keiku, Jabra, Bluno, Kumidori, Otonashi Fukura, and Kalifa immediately became alert. Luo Chen smiled and said, I finally found you, CP9. What a mess, being thrown into the streets. Advertisement. Conqueror's Hacky. How could there be such a powerful person here? Kumidori said in shock. Others were also very shocked. Who are you? Jabra pointed at the person speaking. Khalifa suddenly reacted and reminded, that person is the criminal with a bounty of 100 million belly reported yesterday. The bounty is 100 million baileys. Keiku followed. Luo Chen pressed the question, where is your boss Rob Luchi? Or are you still recovering from the battle with Straw Hat Luffy? Damn, they are really coming for us. Jabra immediately got into a fighting stance. Bluno asked Dolly, do you have anything to do with us? Besides, we are no longer members of CP9. Fukura said, if you want to know information about world government, we can also tell you. Fukura, you. Keiku looked at Fukura. If he had said this before, he would have been dealt with by the world government in minutes. Luo Chen stood in front of these people and said directly, take him away to find Rob Luchi. Are you kidding me? How can I go to Rob Luchi? Jabra refused without thinking. If this person goes to find Rob Luchi, doesn't that mean Rob Luchi is in danger? Rob Luchi has not fully recovered from his injury yet. As for Jabra's thoughts, these original CP9s also have the same thoughts. Advertisement. Kumidori said in a weird tone, don't think that because you are a pirate with a bounty of 100 million belly, we are afraid of you, there are so many of us, and you are the only one, could you be our opponent? Fukura then laughed and said, even if there is a weak woman, she dares to come to see how many of us? A bounty of 100 million belly is really impressive. Brush, a flash of sword flashed across. Otonashi Fukura's entire head was chopped off by Luo Chen. Jabra is about to speak. Another sword flashed past by, and Jabra was cut in half. In less than a second, two members of the original CP9 were killed. Bluno saw something bad, and quickly opened the door fruit power to get Keiku, Kalifa, and Bluno finally wanted to catch Kumidori. Bluno was so frightened that he quickly retracted his arm. Kumidori was also killed and was beheaded by Luo Chen. In just two seconds, three of their original CP9 were killed. They didn't even dare to think about this before. Tashiji was in a state of confusion throughout the whole process. After a full seven seconds, he finally reacted and said, What an amazing swordsmanship. It turns out that your swordsmanship is so good, no wonder you can hold two big sharp knives. Tashiji was not surprised that Luo Chen killed three people, but was surprised by Luo Chen's swordsmanship. Tashiji himself is a person who is very obsessed with swordsmanship and famous swords. Tashiji walked up to Luo Chen and asked, Why did you let those three people go? Advertisement. Haha, <laughs> what do you think? Luo Chen asked Tashiji with a smile. Tashiji continued, your swordsmanship is so powerful, they shouldn't be able to escape if they want to? So, Luo Chen, you did it on purpose. The analytical skills are good. Luo Chen responded calmly to his affirmation of Tashiji's analytical skills. At the same time, Bluno took Keiku and Kalifa and fled to another street. At this moment, the three of them had scared expressions on their faces. Kalifa said with a pale face, that man's swordsmanship was so terrifying. I really thought I was going to die just now. Now is not the time for us to be in a daze. We should go find Luchi immediately. We can't stay on this island any longer. We will be targeted. Kabu decided. Bluno agreed and said, I agree with Kabu's decision. Khalifa has no objection to this. Now they really can't stay on this island any longer. That scary guy may continue to kill him at any time. So, Keiku, Khalifa, and Bluno all ran cautiously towards the place where Luchi was resting. However, what they didn't know was that this was Luo Chen's intention. The purpose is to fish out Rob Luchi. In a remote thatched house, Rob Luchi is lying on the bed and resting. Suddenly, the door was pushed open, and Keiku, Khalifa, and Bluno appeared in front of Rob Luchi. Rob Luchi asked, why did you three suddenly come back first? Where are Jabra and the other three? 
Advertisement. Chapter 6 Annihilating the original CP9 and leaving behind Khalifa. Advertisement. Because those three people have been killed by me. A voice came over. Scared, Bluno, Keiku, and Khalifa quickly hid next to Rob Lucci and looked at the door. Luo Chen and Tashiji had already appeared at the door. Rob Lucci stood up from the bed and said, You guys run, I'll deal with him. Rob Lucci, I heard that you are the strongest genius in world government for 800 years. What do you think? Do you want to work under me? After all, world government has abandoned you? Luo Chen opened his hands with a smile on his face said. Rob Lucci probably also knew what was going on, and said, It turns out they are here to recruit me. I'm sorry, I didn't intend to work under the pirates. That's such a pity. Do you really want to be a lackey of the world government? Luo Chen responded with a smile and shook his head. For invited people, Luo Chen will only make it once. At this time, Blue No plans to continue to use the door fruit ability to escape with Rob Lucci. Luo Chen continued, Tashiji, go ahead, that woman is your opponent, so hone your own strength. Luo Chen, damn it, why are you ordering me? I'm not a pirate, nor am I your subordinate. Tashiji pouted depressedly. Luo Chen's eyes slowly moved towards Tashiji. Tashiji was severely frightened when he saw Luo Chen's diverted gaze. Because of the experience he had yesterday, Tashiji really didn't want to go through it again. For the first time in Tashiji's life, he went through that experience and realized that Luo Chen's true face was too evil. Advertisement. Tashiji called out Shijir and said, I know, I will deal with her. Khalifa frowned. Khalifa would be afraid of that man, but there was no reason for Khalifa to be afraid of the frail woman next to him. Bluno is extremely anxious, they are trying to escape. It's not a fight. If the fight continues, none of them may be able to escape in the end. Rob Lucci pulls off his bandage. Shaving. Using Marine 6 style shaving, Rob Lucci also entered the Zoan Devil Fruit ability to transform into a beast during the process of advancing. Keku saw Lucci taking action and rushed forward quickly. Luo Chen shook his head with a disappointed expression and said, What a pity. Lion Majesty. Thousand Slice Valley. Sakura Ten quickly swung the big blade with dead wood, and swept numerous flying slashes towards Rob Lucci and Keiku. The swordsmanship of the Great Swordsman level covers the entire huge area overwhelmingly. The first to bear the brunt are Rob Lucci and Keiku. Keiku has realized that he shouldn't rush forward so recklessly. And Rob Lucci had no idea that the swordsmanship of the man in front of him was at the level of a Great Swordsman. Rob Lucci and Keiku hurriedly avoided so many flying slashes. However, without observation hacky, how can they escape? The first person to be hit by Luo Chen's Thousand Slice Valley was Keiku. The moment he was hit, the next sword energy hit him immediately, followed by the next flying slashing sword energy. Advertisement. Ah Keiku cried out in pain. Rob Lucci, shouted, Keiku. Ah after Rob Lucci called out the sound card library's name, he was also hit by Luo Chen's Thousand Slice Valley. Just like this, Rob Lucci and Keiku were hit continuously by flying slashes that struck as fast as rain. Gradually, Rob Lucci and Keiku also completely lost consciousness. Countless wounds caused the two of them to lose their vitality at a rapid rate. Khalifa, who had just fought with Tashiji, was instantly confused. Tashiji reminded, look at the opponent in front of you, don't be distracted. Bluno watched as Rob Lucci and Keiku were killed so easily. Without even thinking about it, he raised his hand to grab the air and use the fruit ability to open the door, and ran away. However, the door fruit ability that Bluno opened was interrupted by a sword energy. Bluno fell to the ground in fright. Luo Chen said with a smile, do you think that after you ran away once just now, you will still let you run away a second time? Besides, I did it intentionally when you escaped just now. Don't kill me, I am demon fruit power, I can be your subordinate. Bluno said quickly, the only chance to survive now is to join this man's army. Otherwise, it would be a dead end. Didn't you see that all the original CP9 members were killed until only he and Khalifa were left? Resistance will definitely lead to death. Advertisement. Luo Chen said directly, No, although you are demon fruit power, your strength is too weak. What if you are won back by the world government again? This, can't happen. Bluno quickly denied it. With such a big hat, how could Bluno admit it? Slash wave. Luo Chen swung his sharp sword with dead wood and swept it out with a huge flying slash. Help. Bluno's eyes were filled with despair. Boom, right in front of Luo Chen's attack, there was a slash mark of several hundred meters with smoke rising. Bluno's ending is that he can't die anymore. Khalifa left Tashiji alone and ran away. All of them were killed by Luo Chen until she was the only one left. Even if he can't escape, Khalifa will still run away. What if he really succeeds in escaping? If you continue to dare to run out one meter, then... Luo Chen raised the sharp knife on the dead wood and was about to strike, and said... Khalifa immediately came to an emergency stop because Luo Chen's intimidation was too strong. It was so strong that even one word from Luo Chen made Khalifa dare not move even a single step. Naturally dumbfounded, Tashiji suddenly thought, Luo Chen, call this woman, do you want to? Because Tashiji had experienced that kind of experience yesterday, so Tashiji knew that Luo Chen was just. In the end, Tashiji didn't dare to say it, nor did she dare to think about it. Advertisement. Chapter 7 Fujitora jumped out with a smile. Advertisement. A ship is flying in the sky. Khalifa said in disbelief, oh my god, Luo Chen, your devil fruit ability turns out to be the lion fruit of the great pirate golden lion. This means that the great pirate golden lion is dead. It would be big news if this were to spread. Now Khalifa has finally looked away. She is the only one left with the death of their original CP9 member. Even if he returns to world government, he will not be taken seriously and may even be assassinated. That being the case, it's better to join Luo Chen's two-person pirate team with peace of mind. The reason why Khalifa is so open-minded now is mainly because Luo Chen gave him that. Khalifa, like Tashiji, was experiencing it for the first time. Tashiji said strangely, obviously I didn't agree to join the ranks of pirates. Why, Khalifa, do you already think that I have joined the pirates? Khalifa said with a half-smile, what a silly girl, others won't think so, so be our pirate. I don't want to be a pirate, I was forced onto the ship by Luo Chen. Tashiji denied directly and loudly. Khalifa did not answer Tashiji because as time went by, no one would pay attention to Tashiji even if she said otherwise. After all, Khalifa knows the face of world government very well because he has seen it too many times. However, Khalifa said thoughtfully, however, our pirate team is very weak. This is best. As Tashiji said this, she was thinking about Colonel Smoker asking Marine to rescue her. 
Tashiji was really afraid of Luo Chen's clutches. Advertisement. Luo Chen was sitting on the bow of the boat flying at an altitude of more than 5,000 meters, thinking. Before participating in Summit War, there is another opportunity to inherit one of the character's abilities. This opportunity does not include the Devil Fruit ability. If used properly, it will definitely significantly improve Luo Chen's overall combat capabilities. Now there is a person who has entered Luo Chen's consideration, and that is Pluton Rayleigh, the vice captain of One Piece. Although Pluton Rayleigh is old, the old guy is quite experienced in Conqueror's Haki. Luo Chen's weakest point now is the two-color Haki. As for the problem of his subordinates, Luo Chen is not worried at all. As long as he is strong enough, why not worry about not having any subordinates? A huge team can be raised in minutes. One day later, in a casino on an island town somewhere in the first half of the Grand Line, a blind uncle is pressing code. Suddenly the blind man looked up towards the sky. At this time, the banker roared loudly, Hey, why are you, a blind man, looking at the ceiling? You are obviously a blind man. Don't make it look like you have eyes. Hurry up and press the code for me. Don't you want to win back the money you lost? Is it the Golden Lion? There were rumors that the Golden Lion was haunting some time ago. The blind uncle said to himself in confusion. Advertisement. What's Golden Lion? Blind man, do you still want to place a bet? The dealer saw the blind man in front of him delaying his bet and still talking to himself. He had been waiting for a long time and complained impatiently. Said. What the dealer didn't know was that the blind man in front of him was actually Admiral Fujitora who appeared two years after the summit war in the original book. I should not care about this kind of thing, but. Yuxiao did not respond to the dealer, but said to himself. Besides, Marine should be the one to handle this kind of thing, but the justice in Yuxiao's heart made him want to take action. After all, Golden Lion is going to destroy East Blue, so forget it if he doesn't encounter it. Now that he has encountered it, Yuxiao really can't ignore it. Just when the dealer is about to continue talking, Yuxiao pulled out the sword in his hand, and a wave of energy was generated. Circles of blue waves were sprayed into the sky. This energy circle also broke the roof. The dealer and the gamblers nearby were frightened. They originally thought that the blind man was a disabled person, a person who was ready to be slaughtered. I didn't expect it to be so powerful, especially the banker was frightened. He had defrauded this blind and disabled man of a lot of money. In the sky, Luo Chen is enjoying Califa's personal service. Califa is feeding Luo Chen grapes one after another. Tashiji is practicing swordsmanship on the side. A fiery red light spot was getting closer and closer, causing Tashiji, who was training swordsmanship, to panic. Advertisement. Tashiji was so frightened that he quickly said, Oh no, Luo Chen, there is a meteorite above our heads. Califa was stunned and said, Meteorite? Improbable, right. However, the moment Califa raised his head, his eyes widened. Just as Tashiji said, a meteorite is quickly approaching their ship. How could this happen to be aimed at us by coincidence? Califa almost collapsed, and finally escaped from Luo Chen's hands. We are trying hard to make this new Captain Luo Chen happy. Will he be wiped out by a meteorite now? Califa almost doubted life, and the meteorite was getting closer and closer. Califa and Tashiji both looked at Luo Chen at the same time. The only one who can save them now is Luo Chen. If Luo Chen can't do anything, then they really can only wait for death to come. This arrival time is estimated to be only a few seconds. Meteorite. Luo Chen looked at the meteorite getting closer and fell into deep thought for a moment. Speaking of meteorites, it was impossible for Luo Chen to believe that they were caused by natural causes, so the only possibility was that they were man-made. Anyway, in this case, Luo Chen directly thought of a person. That's the new admiral of headquarters Fujitora from the original novel. Luo Chen said with a smile on his lips, Interesting, I was still thinking about which person I should find. I originally thought about finding Pluton Rayleigh, but now someone has come to my door automatically. Advertisement. Chapter 8 Observation Haki soars rapidly. Advertisement. Califa shouted nervously, Luo Chen, what should we do? The meteorite is about to fall. Don't worry. Luo Chen took a step forward and pulled out the sharp knife Deadwood. Slash wave. The sharp sword of Deadwood struck out with a flying slash and rushed towards the meteorite. Boom. The flying slash instantly cut the huge fiery red meteorite in half. Rubbles kept falling from the sky. It's amazing. Tashiji said blankly as he looked at the scene in front of him. Califa nodded and said, Indeed, it turns out our captain is so powerful, there is nothing to be afraid of in the future. No. Tashiji was about to retort, but she did not admit that Luo Chen was her captain or that she was a pirate. But when Tashiji saw Luo Chen's figure, he simply chose to shut up and did not dare to continue talking. Tashiji had experienced Luo Chen's methods three times. Luo Chen said to Califa and Tashiji, You two stay on the boat. After Luo Chen finished speaking, he flew out directly. Admiral of Headquarters Fujitora smiled and really had to see that future. What's more, I was greeted just now. If I don't respond, will I think Luo Chen is a sick cat? At the same time, in the casino, Yuxiao said sheepishly, Boss, I'm sorry, I ruined your shop. The rest of my money will be used as compensation for the damage to the house. Oh, okay. How can the banker dare to say anything wrong? Is he afraid that he will not survive today? Advertisement. Although Yuxiao could not see it, his observation Haki had already locked onto a figure and was flying towards him quickly. Yuxiao felt that he had to move his position. If a fight broke out here, innocent people might be hurt at any time. So with a smile and a swing of the sword, a piece of floorboard rose up from the ground, dragging a smile and flying towards the uninhabited area. Luo Chen, who was still about a thousand meters above the ground, noticed that Yuxiao was moving in another direction. He smiled and said, Interesting, are you afraid that if a battle breaks out in the town, it will affect the people here? Then I will do as you wish. After Luo Chen smiled, he flew in the direction of Yuxiao and followed him. Lion Fruit's ability was so incomprehensible. Although the flying speed is not particularly fast, this unsolvable ability can be said to have absolute hegemony in the sky. As soon as I smiled, I found that the other party had followed me, and I was a little relieved. I was afraid that if the other party didn't follow me, it would be in trouble. When the two came to a forest area, it was basically an uninhabited land on the island. Luo Chen was the first to greet him and said, I've seen you for a long time, Mr. Yuxiao. It turns out it's not Mr. Golden Lion. It seems I made a mistake. I apologize for my behavior just now. After Yuxiao found out that the visitor was not Golden Lion, he also expressed his deep regret. It can be said that this was his mistake. Yuxiao was indeed quite confused about the fact that the other party would know him. 
Luo Chen continued, this can't be solved with just an apology. If I am not strong enough to break the meteorite, then I will be the one killed, your excellency Yu Xiao. While Luo Chen was speaking, he also used the system to bring up the Yu Xiao panel. Inherit a certain ability of the character once. Does not include devil fruit ability. Inherited object, Yu Xiao. Paramecia gravity fruit ability, awakened. Observation hacky, SS plus level. Amament hacky, SS level. Advertisement. Physical skills, S plus level. Swordsmanship, S plus level. Basic. Physical endurance defense, SS level. Comprehensive attack power, SS level. Comprehensive defense power, SS level. Luo Chen looked at the panel where Fujitora, the future admiral of headquarters, smiled, and sighed that he was indeed the future admiral of headquarters. It is indeed powerful, whether it is defense or attack power combined with the gravity fruit, it has reached the level of general level attack power. In terms of the bonus of fruit ability to attack power, gravity fruit is higher than lion fruit. However, in terms of practicality, lion fruit is better than gravity fruit. There are advantages and disadvantages between the two, and each has its own advantages. Devil fruit abilities cannot be copied, so one of the abilities, the highest one is observation hacky. Observation hacky with a smile reaches the astonishing SS plus level. This is very exaggerated. The SS plus level already belongs to the top level among the generals. After all, this Uxio is nothing short of a monster. System, give me a copy of Uxio's observation hacky. Received, host. As the system began to operate rapidly, Uxio's observation hacky energy was continuously integrated into Luo Chen's body. With a smile, observation hacky suddenly felt that the opponent's aura had changed to some extent, and he was quite puzzled by this. Host, Luo Chen. Lion fruit ability, awakened. Advertisement. Observation hacky, SS plus level. Armament hacky, C level. Conqueror's hacky, S rank. Physical skills, B level. Swordsmanship, SS level. Basic. Physical endurance defense, B level. Comprehensive attack power, S plus level. Comprehensive defense power, B plus level. Observation Hacky's extreme speed has soared, and Luo Chen's physical skills, physical endurance defense, and comprehensive defense have also been increased by half a level. Physical skill C plus will be upgraded to B level. Physical endurance, defense C plus, upgrade to B level. The comprehensive defense power is upgraded from B level to B plus level. As for the overall attack power, to increase it to the general level, it is estimated that Armament Hacky will need to improve it. Either he needs to continue to greatly improve his swordsmanship, otherwise it will be difficult for his comprehensive attack power to reach the SS level of the general level. However, Observation Hacky's rapid improvement represents Luo Chen's true combat ability and cannot be viewed solely on the panel. In terms of evasion ability and catching ability, they are both top-notch. At this time, Yu Xiao expressed the doubts in his heart and asked, Your Excellency, the aura on your body has changed just now. There is a feeling that is inexplicably familiar to me, which is really strange. Luo Chen would not be surprised by this. After all, the SS plus level observation hacky's perception ability is really exaggerated. This is what Luo Chen realized after copying Yu Xiao's observation hacky. Advertisement. Chapter 9 Arrival at Sabayati Archipelago. Advertisement. Luo Chen was in a good mood and said with a smile, Your Excellency Yu Xiao's perception is very strong, you can even feel the subtle changes in my body. Thank you. I see that your strength is also very strong, you must not be an ordinary person. He responded with a smile and cupped his hands. Luo Chen said directly, I won't beat around the bush anymore, since your excellency Yu Xiao just took the initiative to attack me. How are you going to deal with it? Give me an explanation. Your excellency Yu Xiao. In addition, Luo Chen's goal has been achieved. As for inviting Yu Xiao to join the Luo Chen pirates, Luo Chen wouldn't consider it. After all, this guy loves Marine. Then there is no need to do anything that is not a waste of time. When the time comes, Luo Chen plans to see if he can take advantage of this smiling character. If he does, it will of course be the best. Excuse me, what is your name? I owe you a favor. After thinking about it for a while, Yu Xiao responded. Luo Chen heard the conditions offered by Yu Xiao and said with satisfaction, Okay, my name is Luo Chen. I will keep your favor for now. In the future, a favor from the Admiral of Headquarters may have unexpected results if used properly. Luo Chen's body slowly rose into the air and flew back in the direction of his ship. Yu Xiao observation hacky paid attention to the direction Luo Chen left the whole time. He said lightly from the corner of his mouth, It seems that Luo Chen is not simple. From his tone, he values me, a blind man, very much. Advertisement. When Luo Chen returned to his boat, Califa and Tashiji quickly gathered around him. Califa asked, Luo Chen, how is the situation? It's taken care of, let's go on. Luo Chen sat back on the chair and said, Califa and Tashiji were relieved to hear that Luo Chen had taken care of it. Anyway, as long as everything was fine, everything would be fine. Luo Chen said solemnly, get ready, I will start teaching you the training of two-color hacky. Becoming a strong man requires not only basic combat power, but also the equipment of the two-color hacky to be able to gain a foothold in the sea. Do you understand? Califa and Tashiji had actually been mentally prepared for this. Luo Chen specifically explained it to them last night. They will be guided to learn the two-color hacky starting today. Califa knows more about the two-color hacky. Tashiji, on the other hand, knows nothing about it. After all, he has never even heard of it before. Now Tashiji also knows that the so-called armament hacky is able to hit Logia Demon Fruit Power. Just like how Luo Chen shot Colonel Smoker. There had never been anyone who could hit Colonel Smoker. Only after Luo Chen appeared, this record was broken. Tashiji has been in the East Blue Marine branch since he signed up to join the Marine Corps, and has been working under Colonel Smoker. Tashiji thought of Colonel Smoker. Colonel Smoker must be very worried about her safety now, right? Advertisement. Time, four days later, Luo Chen, Califa, and Tashiji also arrived at the Sabayati Archipelago. Luo Chen, who has the ability of lion fruit flying, can be said to be quite fast. This is still the case with Califa's inaccurate route. If the route is accurate, it will take less than four days, and it is estimated that it will only take one or two days to reach the Sabayati Archipelago. But for Luo Chen, there is no shortage of two or three days. After all, Luo Chen's next move is in Summit War. There is still plenty of time for Luo Chen. 
The Sabayadi archipelago is divided into several different regions according to the number of trees. 1-29 GR, a lawless zone where pirates and bounty hunters run rampant, and where human auction houses also operate. 30-39 GR, Sabayadi Land Amusement Park. 40-49 GR, tourist area full of shops and souvenir shops. 44 GR is the public entrance. 50-59 GR, shipyard, protective film processing station. 60-69 GR, marine regional headquarters, world government entrance and exit. 70-79 GR, Hotel Street. Khalifa held the Sabayadi Archipelago regional analysis map in her hand and said, How about we go directly to Islands 3039? I think it's okay too. Tashiji actually wanted to go to the amusement park. After all, even if Tashiji is a sword fanatic, it doesn't stop him from liking the amusement park. Luo Chen didn't care about this, so he flew the ship directly to the shore of Island number 32 and stopped. Advertisement. Khalifa jumped down first, followed closely by Tashiji. Khalifa asked, Luo Chen, do you want to play with us? The amusement park must be very fun. You go, just remember to pay attention to safety. I want to close my eyes and rest on the boat. Luo Chen said, leaning on the chair and closing his eyes. Luo Chen said he didn't want to go, and Khalifa and Tashiji looked at each other. Then let's go have some fun. Khalifa suggested. Tashiji agreed and had originally planned to go to the amusement park. Khalifa and Tashiji left, leaving Luo Chen alone on the boat. The reason why Luo Chen is so relieved is not that he is 100% assured, but that he is confident enough in his observation hacky. Luo Chen's observation hacky is fully activated and can already cover the entire Sabayadi archipelago. Therefore, whenever Khalifa and Tashiji are in danger, they will be able to notice it immediately. If it doesn't work, Khalifa also has a phone bug, so, there is no need to worry too much. Tashiji, who was walking on the road, asked, Khalifa, let's just play around nearby. It's too far away, Luo Chen will be worried later. Don't worry, I'm bringing the phone bug. Besides, the strength of the two of us is not very bad. It's enough to deal with some enemies. Even if we can't defeat it, we still have Luo Chen. In this regard, Khalifa is more satisfied let it go. Tashiji responded, okay. Oh turn Dao. Advertisement. Chapter 10 meeting at the amusement park. Advertisement. More than two hours later at noon, the Straw Hat pirates arrive at Sabayadi Archipelago, Island 41. Straw Hat Luffy raised his hands in the air and said excitedly, Great, we finally arrived at the Sabayadi Archipelago. Everyone in the Straw Hat Pirates smiled, and they felt very happy. Octopus Sayoba said seriously at this time, Everyone, I have something that I must tell you, because this matter is very important. As Octopus Haki said this, everyone stopped smiling, including Straw Hat Luffy. The same goes for Starfish and Kami. After all, the two of them know more about the Sabayadi Archipelago than the Straw Hat Pirates. Octopus Haki took a deep breath and said, There is a group of people on this Sabayadi Archipelago that you cannot offend under any circumstances. Even if these people kill people in front of you, it's still the same. They are the world's noble celestial dragons. Celestial dragons. Straw Hat Luffy showed a confused expression. He didn't even know what Celestial Dragons was. Sanji smoked a cigarette and said, It seems that this place is very close to the naval headquarters, and there is also darkness. That's true, Robin said with a sinister smile. It's so scary. Usopp, Chopper, and Brooke all showed scared expressions. Advertisement. Octopus Haki continued, In short, you can't provoke the world's noble Celestial Dragons. Then just avoid those world noble Celestial Dragons. Frankie followed. Frankie's statement was immediately agreed by everyone in the Straw Hats. On the contrary, Luffy laughed happily and said, Haha, no matter, let's go to the amusement park. How about it? Soon, Luffy, Chopper, Brook, Robin, Nami, Starfish, Kami, Octopus Haki, a total of eight people headed to the amusement park together. And then, Zoro acted alone. Usopp, Sanji, and Frankie were the only three people left on the Straw Hat boat. At the same time, Califa and Tashiji have also bought a lot of things and put them on the phone car. Califa sighed and said, It's such a pity that Luo Chen didn't come with us. There are so many fun places. That is, Tashiji originally wanted to answer Califa, but she saw a group of people in her sight. Califa looked in the direction Tashiji was looking at, not knowing. As soon as he saw it, he frowned and said, The Straw Hat Pirates, and Nico Robin. The moment Califa saw the Straw Hat Pirates, it reminded her of bad memories. They were the ones who captured Nico Robin, only to be crushed by the Straw Hat Pirates. This also led to their CP9 being abandoned by the world government and eventually ended up on the streets. Califa and Tashiji discovered several members of the Straw Hat Pirates. Advertisement. Luffy, Robin, Nami, Chopper and they also saw Califa and Tashiji. Luffy pointed his finger at Califa in surprise and said, CP9, why are you here? Where is the Pigeon Man? Brook joined later, so he didn't know Califa and Tashiji. In addition, Chopper and Robin only know Califa, not Tashiji. As for Octopus Haki, Starfish, and Kemi, they are even stranger to each other. Kemi asked curiously, Luffy, do you know the two women over there? No, to be precise, it should be the enemy. Robin responded with a very bad expression. Unexpectedly, he would meet CP9 again in Sabayadi Archipelago. This result made Robin feel very bad. Nami's eyes were also fixed on Califa, the woman who had finally defeated her at an ice lobby. Nami pulled out his weather stick weapon and said, Since we have encountered each other, let's let the battle speak for itself. Wait a minute, we are no longer enemies, and I am no longer a member of CP9. Califa quickly stopped him. As Califa said this, Luffy and others stopped what they were doing and waited for Califa to explain further. Califa was relieved when he saw these people stop moving. After all, if a battle really broke out, there was no way she and Tashiji could handle it. Robin quickly asked, so what is going on with your CP9? Advertisement. Now Robin is very concerned about this matter. After all, Sabayadi Archipelago is too close to naval headquarters and world government. Afterwards, Califa also patiently told these people what happened. Of course, part of the information about Luo Chen was also concealed. It was said that all the original members of CP9 were being hunted down, and she was the only one who managed to survive. Of course, the blame was placed on the world government. Originally, they were being hunted by the world government. Only Tashiji felt that Califa's expression would not change even if she lied. 
If Tashiji were to lie on her own, it would be leaked immediately. With Khalifa's explanation, Luffy, Robin, Nami, Brook, Chopper, Octopus Haki, Starfish, Kami and others also knew what was going on. Luffy said before he could fully react, so, we are not enemies anymore, right? Wait a minute, Luffy, that's not entirely true. They are also pirates now. Since they are pirates, they will definitely be hostile one day. In comparison, Robin said more cautiously. Nami said in disbelief, however, your Captain Luo Chen is really strange. One of the crew members he recruited is a former Marine Sergeant and the other is a former CP9 member. Brooke smiled and said, maybe their Captain, Luo Chen, is also a very interesting person. So Ms. Khalifa, Ms. Tashiji, can you let me see your panties? Asshole, don't be embarrassed. Nami jumped up and punched Brooke. Advertisement. Chapter 11 Celestial Dragons Shattered Tashiji's Three Views. Advertisement. Brooke's words directly caused embarrassment to Khalifa and Tashiji. Khalifa said, let's say goodbye here. We may have to meet in the new world in the future. Haha, ha. now that we have met, let's go to the amusement park together. The carefree Luffy straightened his straw hat and invited him. They don't care if the other party is their enemy. Anyway, as long as the relationship is not hostile, Luffy is very open-minded. Nami seemed very helpless. Luffy was like this, which made people very worried. Yahihi Brooke smiled and said, Nami, let's invite these two beautiful ladies to join us. Is this a matter of simply joining? Nami was also convinced by this. Are all these people so big-hearted? What Nami and others don't know is that Tashiji really wants to say, let's capture the straw hat pirates without any help. However, considering that she was alone now, Khalifa would definitely not help her if she did that. In addition, her strength is indeed too weak. Twenty minutes later, a burly man stumbled into the crowd and kept shouting, Help! Someone come and save me. I have a daughter who was just born. I don't want to die. Please help me. However, the people stayed away from the stumbling man. Suddenly, the big man grabbed a woman and shouted angrily, Hurry up! Save me! Save me! Let me go! The woman said with difficulty as she could hardly breathe. Advertisement. Suddenly the people heard the bell ringing, one sound after another. The big man was dumbfounded for a moment. He quickly grabbed the collar around his neck with both hands and said, Damn it, this damn thing. If it weren't for this thing, how could I have ended up like this? As the bell rang faster and faster, it was finally five seconds later. Boom, the collar exploded, and the big man was completely disfigured. It just so happened that this scene was also seen by Luffy and his group of ten people who were passing by. All of them looked in disbelief. At this time, a puppy ran over and peed on the big man. Suddenly, many people began to kneel down from the exit of the street. Seeing the scene, Octopus Haki quickly shouted, Oh no, it's the Celestial Dragons, the world's nobles. Everyone, please kneel down. After Octopus Haki finished speaking, he immediately pulled Straw Hat Luffy and knelt down together. Luffy said in confusion, Why do you have to kneel down? I'm not used to this, Zyoba. Luffy, you must listen to me, otherwise it will be very troublesome. Octopus Zyoba was obviously almost nervous. Kami's face turned pale with fright, and her whole body was shaking. Khalifa's eyes kept flickering, which meant that at this moment, Khalifa was not at all calm in her heart. Advertisement. However, Khalifa did not forget it and pulled Tashiji to kneel down with her. Although Luo Chen once told them that there is no need to be afraid of anyone in this world. But Khalifa, who was born in CP9, is naturally afraid of celestial dragons. Not far away, St. Roswald pulled a big man pirate with a collar, a crew member of Trafalgar Law in the original book, and Shailia Palace came over with several guards. St. Rosewater said, Shailia, your method of training slaves is really bad. You can't even take care of yourself. Father, who knew this guy was so disobedient? Shailia Palace responded. Rosewater Saint continued, but yes, I forgot to give this guy a sedative today, otherwise he shouldn't have had such a thing happen. Shailia walked up to the big man who was killed in the bombing, kicked him several times, and said, what a loser. He talks about his wife and children. That guy was obviously unable to move, but he still kicked. Luffy, who was kneeling on the ground, couldn't help but wanted to rush forward, but was immediately held down by Octopus Sayoba. Octopus Haki quickly reminded in a low voice, Luffy, please don't mess around. They are world nobles, we can't afford to offend them. At this moment, Octopus Haki was really scared to death by Luffy's impulsiveness. Both Nami and Robin covered their mouths with their palms, their faces full of horror. Kami even lowered her head so low that she didn't even dare to look at the shadow. Brooke was also frightened and fell into a complete stupor. Chopper said in horror, why are the towns here so scary? Advertisement. Tashiji's outlook on life was completely shattered by the scene before him. Tashiji said, Khalifa, are the celestial dragons the ones Marine protects? Why do they look more evil than pirates? Slave trading, this kind of darkness? Is Marine's justice allowed? Tashiji, you are still too young. The darkness of world government is far from that. As a former CP9, Khalifa knows something about the darkness of world government. Tashiji suppressed his heart and then asked, So, does it mean that as long as the Celestial Dragons are offended, the Admiral of Headquarters will immediately take action? Yes, Celestial Dragons has the right to transfer the Admiral of Headquarters. Khalifa told Tashiji truthfully, This is something that is generally accepted. As long as Tashiji goes to sea for a long time, he will naturally know it. Deep in Tashiji's heart, he felt like his faith was collapsing. What if this is the justice Marine protects? So what is the justice she has been insisting on? Tashiji didn't even know that at this moment, there were cracks in her inner justice. Shailia Palace looked at the pirate at her feet with disgust and said, What a disgusting thing. After saying that, Shailia Palace took out his gun, pointed it at the dead pirate man, and fired several shots continuously. Bang bang bang. Saint Rosewater pulled the big slave over and slowly walked over, saying, Go buy a slave. This time, you have to train it well, don't ruin it. It's just a slave. If you die, you will die. Shailia Palace responded indifferently. Saint Roswald also didn't care about this. To them, the Celestial Dragons, they were just slaves. Advertisement. Chapter 12 Ripoff Tavern. Advertisement. As the two Celestial Dragons left, the people kneeling on the ground stood up and hurriedly left the scene. After all, the people are afraid of staying here. What if they are misunderstood? Octopus Haki breathed a sigh of relief and said, Okay, now that the Celestial Dragons have left, we can relax. Celestial Dragons are really terrifying creatures. Brooke has lived for so many years, and this is the first time he has seen someone who doesn't regard humans as human beings at all. 
Tashiji's eyes were dull and he almost fell when he was about to stand up, but Khalifa quickly stepped up to hold him up and prevented him from falling. Khalifa asked with concern, Tashiji, are you okay? I'm fine, I just can't accept the facts I saw in front of me for a moment. While Tashiji responded, he kept thinking in his heart whether the justice that Colonel Smoker had always insisted on was still meaningful. Together with Marine's strongest admiral, they all serve the evil done by the celestial dragons. So can they, Marines, still achieve justice in the true sense? As someone who has experienced it, Robin said more clearly, the little girl over there seems to have experienced too little. What just happened had a great impact on her. Everyone's play after that obviously seemed to be a little off. On the contrary, Straw Hat Luffy was so careless that he had forgotten what happened just now and was now having a great time. At an amusement park, Octopus Haki and Kemi were walking at the back. Watching Luffy and the others play, Starfish also followed Luffy and the others to play. Advertisement. Suddenly Kemi accidentally dropped one of her shoes while walking. Oops. Kemi panicked and hurriedly knelt down to put on her shoes. After all, if she didn't put them on quickly, her identity as a mermaid would be exposed. However, what Kami didn't know was that the moment she dropped her shoes, she was stared at by a pair of eyes. This is a human trafficker who travels throughout the Sabayati archipelago all year round, constantly looking for targets. Originally there were five women in this group, but unexpectedly, one of the women turned out to be a mermaid. At this moment, the greed of the trafficker increased sharply. If he caught it and sold it, he would definitely get a lot of money. Octopus Haki asked with concern, Kami, what happened to you just now? It's okay. Maybe I've been walking for too long and need a rest. Kami used an excuse. Mainly Kami didn't want Zyoba to worry too much about her. Kami then said, Zyoba, I want to sit on the phone car for a while. Okay, Octopus Haki had no objection to this, and was eager to agree. After all, Kami's identity is also very dangerous on the Sabayati archipelago, and Haki happened to be riding a phone car. And Khalifa, Tashiji, rarely chatted with Nico Robin and Nami. There was nothing wrong with the hostile relationship before, but now it is no longer hostile, so there is no need to be so nervous. Nami asked in disbelief, Tashiji, so you know Zoro? It's really unexpected. Indeed. Robin responded with a sinister smile. Advertisement. Kami sat on the phone car and rubbed the tail of the fish. After walking for a long time, the burden was still a bit heavy for Kemi. Octopus Sayohachi said, Everyone, we are going to Island 13 next. There is a very powerful coding master there. It will definitely be no problem to ask him to help you with coding. Awesome, here's the coding master. Straw Hat Luffy's eyes lit up, looking forward to meeting that powerful coding master. Soon after, under the leadership of Octopus Haki, a group of them arrived at the ripoff tavern on Island 13. Octopus Haki said, We are here. Brooke responded, I didn't expect that there is a tavern in such a remote place. It's rare to see it. Tashiji, who was beside Khalifa, asked in a low voice, Are we just going to come here with the Straw Hat Pirates? Will everything be okay? It's okay, I just wanted to meet you. Khalifa smiled mischievously. In fact, Khalifa did it on purpose. Another point is that Khalifa is from CP9 and focuses on gathering information. Therefore, only then did he consider following the Straw Hat Pirates. Luo Chen, who was far away on the boat on the shore of Island Number 32, half opened his eyes and said lightly with a little surprise, Khalifa and Tashiji actually got together with the Straw Hats. He had not let go of observation Haki just now, but now that he had let go, Luo Chen was really surprised by the size of the Sabayati archipelago. Advertisement. It didn't take long for them to meet each other, and no one was so lucky. Luo Chen continued to close his eyes, not caring about Khalifa and Tashiji, as long as nothing happened. On island number 13, a voice came from the ripoff tavern, if you don't have enough money to drink, then get out. Then, in the eyes of the straw hats, the three pirates were thrown out and fell hard to the ground. Nami said in shock, why do I feel that the owner of this pub is very cruel? At this time, a woman came out of the door of the pub, smoking a lady's cigarette. Octopus Zyoba immediately ran up to greet him enthusiastically and said, Shaky, I am Zyoba. Oh, it turns out to be Zyoba, how come you have time to come to my place? Shucky responded with a smile while smoking a cigarette. So, Zyoba briefly explained the situation to Shucky. Shucky also invited the Straw Hats and others to go into the pub to do it. After Shucky poured everyone a glass of wine, he said, Since you are here to see Rayleigh for coding, he is not here at the moment. To be precise, he has not been back for half a year. Half a year? So long? What about the coding of our ships? When Nami heard this, she felt embarrassed. After all, if the ship cannot be coded, it means that it cannot go to the Fishman Island. If you can't go to the Fishman Island, you can't reach the second half of the Grand Line. Advertisement. Chapter 1312 Supernovi. Advertisement. Shucky smoked a lady's cigarette, looked at the group of young faces, and said with a smile, Where is the Rayleigh you are looking for? It should be in a casino or an auction house. You should look for it and you should be able to find it. Luffy, let's go then. Find an uncle who knows how to coat. Chopper jumped up and suggested. Brooke raised his glass and walked to the bar and said, This beautiful lady, before I leave, can you tell me what color underwear you are wearing today? Nami exploded again and instantly hit Brooke with two big bumps on his head. Brooke was instantly paralyzed on the ground, unable to move. Shucky was smoking a cigarette, turned around and said, I should be wearing black today. Chopper said in disbelief, You actually told Brooke. Kami and Tashiji are so embarrassed. On the contrary, Robin and Khalifa were more open-minded, as if they were not that surprised. Shucky flicked the ashes of his cigarette and continued, But, there is something I need to tell you. Advertisement. Right now, there are 12 pirates on this island who have a bounty of more than 100 million belly. What? There are 12 pirates with a bounty of more than 100 million belly. Nami responded in shock. I was completely shocked by the numbers I heard. Chopper was even more frightened. Tashiji's eyes widened and he said, 12 pirates with a bounty of more than 100 million belly. As a former pirate, Octopus Haki understands what it means to have a bounty of more than 100 million belly in the Sabayati archipelago. Robin said, Boss Shucky, your intelligence channels are not simple. Little girl, your observation skills are pretty good. Shucky responded with a smile, affirming Robin's analytical skills. Shucky did not continue to whet everyone's appetite and said, Where's you, little Luffy? The bounty ranks second among them. What? Someone has a higher bounty than Luffy. Chopper responded in amazement. Shucky continued, Twelve pirates with a bounty of over 100 million, two of them are little Luffy, you and your swordsman Zoro, you occupy the second one. 
Advertisement. In addition, Califa, Tashiji, your Captain Luo Chen is also one of the pirates with a bounty of over 100 million. It seems so. Captain Luo Chen's bounty is exactly 100 million belly. Califa nodded in response. This time, Tashiji did not continue to refute. Luo Chen was not her captain's business. After Shucky lit up a cigarette, he continued to light another cigarette for himself and said, The 12th ranked bounty is Captain Luo Chen Pirates. Luo Chen has a bounty of 100 million baileys. Califa and Tashiji actually knew that Luo Chen's true strength could not be judged by the bounty alone. The two of them knew Luo Chen's strength. He was as powerful as a monster. Shucky continued to introduce, Yuraj, bounty, 100,800 baileys, bounty ranking 11th among the 12 supernovas of Sabayati Archipelago, captain of the Broken Monk Pirates, born on Sky Island, so he has a pair of wings on his back. The Straw Hat Pirates, Rorano Zoro, has a bounty of 120 million berries, ranking only 10th among the 12 supernovas. Capone Beag, bounty, 138 million baileys, 9th among the 12 supernovas of the Sabayati Archipelago, user of the Fortress Fruit ability, captain of the Flame Tank Pirates. Jewelry Bonnie, with a bounty of 140 million baileys, is known as the Big Eater. Jewelry Bonnie is also a person with the ability to make people older or younger. The captain of the Bonnie Pirates, ranked 8th among the 12 supernovas of the Sabayati Archipelago. Kira, the bounty is 162 million berry, and he is known as the Killing Warrior. Kira is Kid's younger brother, a combatant of the Kid Pirates, one of the 12 supernovas, and the bounty amount ranks 7th in the Sabayati Archipelago. Advertisement. Skullichiman APU, bounty, 198 million baileys, title Haiming, one of the 12 supernovas, bounty ranked 6th in Sabayati Archipelago, Paramecia Demon Fruit Power, any part of the body can be become an instrument. Trafalgar Lot, bounty, 200 million belly, title. Surgeon of Death, Captain of the Heart Pirates, one of the 12 supernovas, bounty ranked 5th in Sabayati Archipelago. X Drake, bounty, 222 million baileys, title. Red Flag, Ancient Dinosaur Fruit Tyrannosaurus Form Ability User. Tyrannosaurus, has the ability to turn himself into a dinosaur, Captain of the Drake Pirates. Sabayati one of the 12 supernovas of Archipelago, with the 4th highest reward amount. Basil Hawkins, Bounty, 240 million baileys, Title Magician, Basil Hawkins Bounty is only lower than you. Little Luffy, ranked 3rd among the 12 supernovas of the Sabayati Archipelago, Straw Fruit a capable person, Captain of the Hawkins Pirates. Next, it's you, Monkey D. Luffy, with a bounty of 300 million baileys, ranking 2nd among the 12 supernovas in the Sabayati Archipelago. The last one is the supernova with the highest bounty. Eustace Kid, Bounty, 315 million baileys. Yes, this kid, known as Captain, has the highest bounty among the 12 supernovas in the Sabayati Archipelago and the reason why his bounty is higher than Luffy, because he killed many people. Eustace Kid, Demon Fruit Power, Magnetic Fruit, Cruel Personality, High Strength, Captain of the Kid Pirates, the crew calls him Boss Dot. The people introduced above are all 12 pirates who gathered in the Sabayati Archipelago. The supernova has a bounty of over 100 million. Advertisement. Chapter 14 Human Traffickers Appear. Advertisement. After everyone heard Shucky's introduction, everyone was shocked. On the contrary, Straw Hat Luffy laughed and said, Ha ha ha, isn't this interesting? That's where it gets interesting, you idiot. Nami couldn't help but slap Luffy on the head. Robin covered his mouth and laughed softly. Brooke and Chopper were trembling with fear from Nami's violence. Tashiji asked in a low voice, Califa, there are so many pirates on the Sabayati Archipelago with bounties worth over 100 million, will Luo Chen do it? What danger is there? What a rare thing. You have started to care about Luo Chen. Califa directly teased Tashiji and said. Tashiji immediately responded shyly, no way, there is no such thing. How could Tashiji admit this? It would be so embarrassing if I admitted it. Octopus Haki still didn't forget the main purpose of coming to Shucky and asked, So Shucky, if you want to find Rayleigh, where should you go? Rayleigh? It's usually 1-29 GR. Shucky responded with a smile. Chopper clapped his fingers and said, Isn't it true that 1-29 GR can't be taken away? It's so scary. The main thing is up to you. Shucky said calmly while smoking. Luffy raised his hands and said with a smile, Yoshi, then let's go find the coding man. Everyone in the Straw Hats had no objections, including Octopus Haki, Kemi, and Starfish. The only difference is that Califa and Tashiji are not members of the Straw Hats at all. Advertisement. Afterwards, everyone in the Straw Hats came out of Shucky's rip-off tavern, and Shucky stood at the door and watched the brats leave, and said, I wish you good luck, little devils, of course it would be best to find Rayleigh. Califa and Tashiji were following behind the Straw Hats. Tashiji asked in a low voice, Califa, why do we continue to follow the Straw Hat pirates? This made Tashiji very confused. Even if he followed him all the way, why did Califa continue to follow him now? Califa also responded in a low voice, originally, I planned not to continue following the Straw Hat pirates. Then why? Tashiji was also very curious about this. What was the reason that made Califa take her to continue to follow the Straw Hat pirates? Califa then whispered, they were talking about the man named Uncle Rayleigh. I suspect he is Pluton Rayleigh, the vice captain of One Piece. What? The vice captain of the Pirate King. Tashiji screamed loudly in an instant. This name was really too scary. Tashiji's loud scream also made Luffy, Brooke, Chopper, Nami, Robin, Octopus Haki, Kemi, and Starfish who were walking in front turned their heads to look at Tashiji in confusion. Califa quickly covered Tashiji's mouth and smiled apologetically, and reminded in Tashiji's ear, Pay attention, how can we continue to follow you like this? I know. Tashiji also realized that she had indeed lost her composure just now. In the front, Robin said to Nami, I think there's something wrong with the two at the back. Robin, I feel the same way as you. Nami also had the same idea as Robin. Advertisement. In fact, there are too many doubts about Califa and Tashiji, especially the one named Califa, who has many problems. From the perspective of Nami and Robin, it seemed that they came here specifically to explore the information of their straw hat pirates. A captain like Luffy is careless and has no idea what a sense of crisis is. Nami feels so tired. At this time, the Straw Hats encountered an amusement park and were immediately attracted to it. So, Luffy, Chopper, and others immediately pulled Brook, Octopus Haki, and Starfish to play together. Nami said with a headache, I originally wanted to remind Luffy, but it seems there is no hope. 
It's okay, let's just pay attention to those two women. Robin responded in a more open-minded manner. That's all it can do. Nami also thinks it's feasible. Cammy was sitting on a chair to rest alone, looking at Luffy and the others having a great time, and she also smiled happily. Unknowingly, a man dressed as a bear doll appeared next to Cammy. Cammy was very confused. Why did a person dressed as a bear doll suddenly appear behind her? Just as Cammy was about to ask, her eyes suddenly fell into darkness. Robin and Nami went shopping, and Califa and Tashiji didn't pay special attention to Cammy, so... Cammy was taken away without anyone noticing. It wasn't until more than half an hour later, when everyone gathered together, that they realized Cammy was missing. At this time, Nami had to come to Califa and Tashiji and asked, Excuse me, have you seen Cammy? Advertisement. Sorry, we didn't see this either. Califa responded truthfully. The two of them did not see the figure of the mermaid woman. Cammy. Luffy called. Cammy. Brooke called. Cammy. Chopper called. Cammy. Nami called. Cammy. Robin called. Cammy. Octopus Haki called. Cammy. Starfish called. Califa and Tashiji also felt that they had to help, so they joined in the search. However, they searched the whole circle and couldn't find Cammy. Starfish said worriedly, what should I do? Cammy can't be found anywhere. Cammy shouldn't have gotten lost on her own. There is another possibility that he was captured by human traffickers. As a former CP9, Califa knew something about the darkness, so she expressed her own speculation. Instantly, the eyes of Straw Hat Luffy and others became serious. This is no small matter. Luffy raised his hand and pressed the Straw Hat and said, if that's true, let's go get Cammy back. Advertisement. Chapter 15 Tashiji's Decision. Advertisement. After several twists and turns, it was finally found that Cammy was transferred to the GR auction house number one. Hyksing was so worried that he said in a panic, we are running out of time. The auction is about to start. What should we do now? Don't worry, we will take you there. Dibala said with a smile as he flew over on a flying fish. Dibala, who was once mistaken for Sanji, was later altered by Sanji. Luffy also smiled and said, haha, you guys came just in time. More than a dozen flying fish directly brought everyone with them, and Califa and Tashiji were also dragged up to sit on a flying fish. In fact, Califa didn't want to follow him this time, although he wanted to see the Pirate King's Vice Captain Pluton Rayleigh with his own eyes. However, it is obvious that the person may not be found now, because the Straw Hats are going to rescue people. However, Tashiji is different this time. She is not angry with the trafficker and wants to kill him. Therefore, Califa was roped in by Tashiji. Califa said depressedly, Tashiji, if we act without authorization, Luo Chen will be angry when he finds out. Califa, you still have the nerve to accuse me, but you were always acting without permission before. Tashiji slapped Califa back this time. If Califa hadn't pulled her from the front and followed the Straw Hat Pirates, things like this wouldn't have happened. Advertisement. Meanwhile, another part of the Sabayati archipelago has no streets. The people here knelt down one after another, including several supernovas who also chose to kneel down when facing the Celestial Dragons. Capone Beeg, Bonnie, Uraj, Hawkins, APU, and others are all here. However, they all chose to hide or kneel in place rather than offend the Celestial Dragons. Saint Charlos was sitting on a crawling slave, his eyes dull, when he suddenly saw several people running with a stretcher in front of him. Wait, who asked you to stand in front of me? The voice of Saint Charlo scared those people directly. After all, the majesty of Celestial Dragons is very fierce. One of the female nurses begged, please, let us go, the patient is dying. Saint Charles frowned, walked over, came to the patient's side, looked over, and said, it seems that he is really about to die. Just when the female nurse was about to say thank you, Saint Charles raised his foot and kicked the stretcher over, saying, since he is about to die, let him be freed. Uraj, who was kneeling on the ground, smiled and whispered, the celestial dragons, the world's nobles, are really lawless. After Saint Charles looked at the female nurse twice, he said with satisfaction, take this woman back to me and make her my thirteenth wife. I don't want those five wives in front of me anymore, just demote them to slaves. Okay, Saint Charles. The butler in a suit and sunglasses on the side responded respectfully. No, no. The female nurse was so frightened that she turned pale and helpless. Just when the female nurse was panicking. Advertisement. A man rushed out and said loudly, that is my wife, please let her go. Damn it, someone is standing in front of me again. When had Saint Charles been swayed like this by a group of humans? He raised his pistol and fired twice. Boom, boom. In an instant, the man who ran out fell to the ground. The female nurse mustered up the courage to run to her husband, shouting, someone come and save him. Who will save him? However, no one on either side of the street dared to answer. After all, answering would be tantamount to offending the celestial dragons. However, the sound of footsteps suddenly came out. Godfather, that man is the pirate hunter from East Blue, Rorino. Zoro. A pirate whispered in Capone Beeg's ear. And Capone Beeg's eyes were locked on Rorino. Zoro said, I have long heard that this group of people is lawless, and it is really so. Yuraj smiled and said, So how will you deal with what happens next? Rorino. Zoro. APU said with a playful look, There is a good show to watch. Bonnie said speechlessly, That idiot is trying to kill us. If it affects me, I won't let you go. Rorino. Zoro. Hawkins counted his Carlo cards and said, It's strange that Rorino and Zoro didn't show their dead faces today. Zoro was drinking, putting one hand in his pocket, and suddenly saw a strange person staring at him, and asked, What? Do you want to ask for directions? Advertisement. St. Charles was dumbfounded for the first time and fired twice with his pistol. Boom, boom. While Zoro dodged the bullet, he held the big sharp knife to Shui and wanted to pull it out. Bonnie jumped out and hugged Zoro, pushing Zoro down. Zoro was about to ask. Bonnie whispered, Just lie down and don't move. St. Charles said in confusion, It's strange, it seems like it didn't hit. Forget it, just die. Let's go, otherwise my sister and father will nag me for being too slow again. After Saint Charlos sat back on the slave, he kept kicking the slave beneath him. It's you, this useless slave, who is so slow that I haven't even reached my father's place yet. The slave who was kneeling and crawling on the ground was almost dying, but he still kept crawling forward. 
After the celestial dragons left, Zoro touched the sauce on his face in confusion and said, Is this ketchup? Idiot, bastard, do you know what you just did? But it will attract Admiral, do you know? Bonnie pointed at Rorino. Zoro kept scolding. Zoro picked up the fallen man and asked, Where is the hospital? Idiot, you are really hopeless. There is a way for pirates to save people. Bonnie looked at Rorino Zoro like an idiot. Advertisement. Chapter 16 Meeting Again. Advertisement. APU looked at Rorino. Zoro's leaving figure and said, The aura revealed at that moment was as terrifying as a ferocious beast. Urich said excitedly, The second in command of the Straw Hat Pirates has that kind of momentum. Capone B lit a cigar for himself and said, It's time to leave here. There are too many pirates gathering on this island now, and Marine will definitely take it seriously. Yes, Godfather. A group of younger brothers behind him responded in unison. Hawkins put away the carrot cards and said, The Straw Hat Pirates. Sabayadi Archipelago 1 GR Island. At this time Luffy and others have arrived here. Finally, I found the person in charge of the auction house and was told that if I wanted to take the person back, I needed to buy it back. Finally, Nami made a decision and said, In that case, let's buy Kami back. Anyway, we still have 200 million belly, I believe it is enough. Nami, thank you, Octopus Sayohachi said he was very sorry and grateful to Nami. Arlong's Fishman Pirate Group once brought so much harm to Nami. Now, in turn, Nami is still helping them like this, which makes Octopus Sayohachi feel very touched deep in his heart. Nami said, okay, let's go, just buy Kami back using fair and above board means. Kami, just wait, we will come to rescue you. Luffy also clenched his fists and said while looking at the auction house. The group of people walked to the door of the auction house and prepared to walk in. Tashiji and Khalifa followed them. Tashiji is seeing more and more darkness now, and the senses in his heart are constantly changing. Advertisement. Khalifa asked with a smile, Tashiji, you have changed a lot today. Really? It should be. Tashiji also felt that his mentality had changed in some sense. At this time, Sanji, Frankie, Usopp, and Zoro from the Straw Hat Pirates also arrived on a flying fish. The reason why Zoro is together is that Sanji, Frankie, and Usopp met Zoro walking on the road, so they pulled him over. Luffy smiled and said, Zoro, Sanji, Frankie, Usopp, you are here too? Great. Isn't that the woman from CP9? Usopp looked at Khalifa in shock and said, Frankie didn't look too good when he saw the members of CP9. Zoro pointed at Tashiji, so shocked that he stuttered and said, You, 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 Rorino, Zoro. Tashiji shouted Zoro's name as well. Sanji was completely confused and said, Asshole, green algae head, why do you know that beautiful girl? Zoro and Tashiji knew each other, which surprised Khalifa and everyone in the Straw Hat Pirates. After all, this scene is too incredible. After a brief explanation from Tashiji and Zoro, everyone roughly understood what was going on. Zoro asked Tashiji in disbelief, I didn't expect that you would stop being a marine and become a pirate instead. Advertisement. I have my own rights to do what I want to do. Tashiji did not directly answer Zoro's words, but the meaning was basically expressed. Indeed, Zoro agreed with Tashiji's answer. Usopp whispered to Frankie, don't you think their combination is strange? A former marine and a former CP9 have both joined the pirate camp. The man named Luo Chen is quite powerful. Haha, ha, yes, we should get to know each other if we have a chance. Although Frankie was surprised, he didn't seem too surprised. The door to the auction house was pushed open, and everyone in the Straw Hat Pirates, including Khalifa and Tashiji, entered. When I entered, I saw that the auction house was full of people, and the moment they entered the auction house, two groups of people noticed the Straw Hat Pirates. Trafalgar La pressed his hat, looked at Straw Hat Luffy, and whispered, so that's the Straw Hat boss. Kid on the other side smiled and said, haha, ha, that's Straw Hat Luffy. Yes, kid. Kira responded from the side. Kid continued, I've wanted to meet them for a long time. They create a lot of topics at Grand Line. After Tashiji came in, he saw the host on the stage constantly introducing information about the slave, and he was shaking with anger. Khalifa consoled her and said, just get used to it. There is still a lot of darkness in the world government. Advertisement. Robin looked at Tashiji out of the corner of his eye, and then looked away. No one knew what Nico Robin was thinking. Luffy clenched his fists and said, Kemi, I will rescue you later. 200 million belly is enough to rescue Kemi, don't worry. Nami holds 200 million belly in her hand and is confident that she can rescue Kemi. This is a full 200 million baileys. It's not a small amount. Frankie sighed, it's so close to the naval headquarters, but there is still slave trade. It's hard to imagine. Yeah, it's so scary. Chopper's outlook was constantly refreshed. Sanji lit a cigarette for himself and said, I, Sanji, will not let anyone hurt a beautiful lady. Starfish said with a worried face, Kemi, you must be okay. I believe Luffy and the others will be able to rescue Kemi, Octopus Haki reminded. At the same time, the host on the stage kept introducing slave information. At this time, the host said, the next slave is a subjugated princess, Peja. As the host finished speaking, a beautiful woman with blue hair wearing a collar was brought up. The host pointed at Peja and said, Peja is good at singing and dancing. Not only that, she can also cook and do various housework, and she can provide attentive service. Buying it back is definitely worth the money. This is the princess she once was. Then, the starting price for this subjugated princess Peja is 800,000 belly. Advertisement. Chapter 17 by Peja and give it to Luo Chan. Advertisement. After the host announced Peja's starting price, immediately, someone offered 900,000 belly, and then someone rich offered a higher price. In less than a moment, the price rose to nearly 3 million belly. The rich man who finally bid 2.8 million belly said with a smile, it just so happens that the family lacks such a slave. At this time, Khalifa held up the sign and said, 10 million belly. 10 million baileys, is there anything higher? The host suddenly became excited. The price was far beyond his expectation. Tashiji looked at Khalifa in disbelief and asked, Khalifa, why did you auction it? You don't understand this. Khalifa responded with an invisible smile. 
In fact, Caliph's purpose is to please Luo Chen and find someone who can sing and dance to serve Luo Chen. When Luo Chen is happy, then the credit will be hers. It will increase the weight in Luo Chen's heart. Regardless of whether it has any effect, it is of course the best if it does. Not to mention Tashiji's confusion, everyone in the Straw Hat Pirates was also confused and didn't know what Caliph was going to do. Of course, they would not ask in detail. After all, Caliph was not a member of their Straw Hat Pirates. They also have no right to interfere with other people's decisions. Caliph offered 10 million belly, which instantly persuaded many people to quit. In the VIP position, St. Roswald asked his son, Charos, won't you bid to buy it back? No, father, I just want mermaids now. After hearing about the mermaids in this auction, St. Charles's whole mind was now on mermaids. Advertisement. St. Rose Waiter looked at his daughter again. I don't want it either. I want to buy the pirate captain as a slave and torture him. One of them died today. I feel particularly unlucky. Shailia Palace said viciously. The host shouted three times in a row but there was no response, so he decided, then the guy over there will take a photo of this beautiful product Peja for 10 million belly. As a result, Califa successfully bought Peja at a high price of 10 million belly. After that, the auction continued, with a small episode in the middle. That is, there was a pirate captain who was unwilling to become a slave and bit his tongue and committed suicide. This caused the auction house to fall into temporary chaos. Fortunately, the host's reaction speed was fast enough and he directly said that he was ready to take action for the finale. At the same time, in the auction cell, let me go, let me go. Kami kept shouting in pain, but he was still dragged out by the staff. The staff threatened, you damn mermaid, hurry up Laozi, if the auction is delayed, you will be dead. No matter how hard Kami struggled, she kept being dragged away. In an inconspicuous cell, an old man was drinking wine calmly. While drinking, a momentum spread out, and the staff dragging Kami fainted instantly. The strong man who was also imprisoned on the side said, old man, was it you who did it just now? Advertisement. Who knows? The old man continued to drink and responded casually. One staff member fell, and a new staff member stepped up. In the end, Kami was put into a water tank and transported out. The host on the stage shouted loudly, Are you ready? I will give you the highlight right away. As the host finished speaking, the tarp was pulled open, revealing a large water tank containing none other than Kami. That's a mermaid. It's really a mermaid. I didn't expect to see a mermaid here. This trip is really worth it. Many people began to talk about it, which meant that many people wanted to buy the mermaid. Octopus Haki and Starfish looked so sad. Kami. Luffy called Kami's name. Nami said firmly, Luffy, don't worry, we have 200 million belly, enough to buy Kami back. Everyone in the Straw Hat Pirates is very worried about Kami's safety. To them, it doesn't matter how much money they spend, as long as Kami can return safely. The host said excitedly, I believe everyone has seen it, this is a beautiful mermaid. Once you miss it, you won't have the chance to have it again, so you must seize the opportunity. Then the starting price is 10 million baileys. Before Nami started bidding, St. Charles stood up and said loudly, I will offer 500 million. As soon as these words came out, the whole place fell silent instantly. Advertisement. Including the fact that St. Charos is a Celestial Dragons, basically no one is willing to offend the Celestial Dragons. Even the nobles of the kingdom do not dare to offend the Celestial Dragons. Because the consequences of offending the Celestial Dragons are simply not something they can afford. This. Nami was dumbfounded. She originally thought that 200 million belly would be more than enough. Everyone in the Straw Hat Pirates looked very bad, and Octopus Haki and Hyksing were even more depressed. Luffy walked towards Charles Saint with anger. Upon seeing this, Octopus Haki quickly ran up to stop him. He couldn't let Luffy do anything. What happened next was just as it happened in the original work. Octopus Sioba exposed his identity as a fishman and was shot by St. Charles. And Luffy also punched St. Charles away. The entire auction house fell into chaos, and everyone ran out. Both Roswald Saint and Shailia Palace could not believe that someone dared to attack them celestial dragons. St. Roswald said angrily, them low-level humans, call me the Marine Admiral. Zoro smiled and said, it seems that we have to prepare for battle. It's what I asked for. Sanji responded, lighting a cigarette. Frankie, Usopp, Brooke, Chopper, Robin, and Nami are all ready to fight. Trafalgar Law looked at Straw Hat Luffy and said to himself in a low voice, as expected of the Straw Hat Master, even celestial dragons dare to fight directly. It's really messy. Kid leaned on the chair and said arrogantly, Advertisement. Chapter 18 The Big Shot Appears. Advertisement. The entire auction house instantly became a mess. Hundreds of celestial dragon suit guards and auction house guards surrounded the Straw Hat Pirates and others. Neither Califa nor Tashiji were spared. There were also a large number of marine soldiers surrounding the auction house. However, these marine soldiers are no match for the Straw Hat Pirates and others. Kid said unhappily, it's really unlucky, is it even affecting me? Master Kid, don't you think this is quite interesting? Trafalgar Law responded with a smile. The murderer is Straw Hat Luffy, don't let him get away. Suit guards from Celestial Dragons kept shouting that the murderer was Straw Hat Luffy. Meanwhile, Naval Headquarters Marine Ford. Sengoku is preparing for the upcoming war. This time he faces the strongest man in the world, Whitebeard. Therefore, Sengoku does not dare to take it lightly, as one mistake may lead to the failure of their marine. Once marine fails, the consequences will be unimaginable. At this time, the phone nearby rang. Sengoku answered, Moses Moses, I am Sengoku. Marshal, what's wrong? The Celestial Dragons were attacked in Sabayati Archipelago, and the murderer was Straw Hat Luffy. A Marine Commodore quickly reported what happened at the Sabayati Archipelago Auction House to Marshal Sengoku. It can be said that the Sabayati Archipelago Auction House is in urgent need now. Advertisement. What? Sengoku was stunned, Celestial Dragons were attacked. Something that had never happened since he became Marshal actually happened? Marshal Sengoku, let me take action. Kizuru, who was sitting aside and manicuring his nails, said. Sengoku glanced at Kizuru and said, Okay, we must make sure to rescue the Celestial Dragons and not let any accidents happen to the Celestial Dragons, otherwise those Marijoys guys will keep bothering us Marine. 
Kizara stood up, put his hands in his pockets and walked out slowly. After Saint Rose Waiter was knocked unconscious by Usopp, Shailia Palace was already livid with anger. Shailia Palace came to Kemi, pointed the golden pistol at Kemi and said loudly, You damn pirates, you'd better stop resisting me immediately, otherwise I will kill this bitch immediately. Kemi, Octopus Haki shouted Kemi's name in fear. Damn it. Sanji wanted to rush to the rescue, but was afraid of hurting Kemi. Nami held the weather stick tightly and said, Oops, Kemi is in danger. The current situation is very unfavorable for the Straw Hat pirates. More marine soldiers are coming in from outside, and now Kemi has been kidnapped again. Trafalgar Law and Kid were watching the whole show. Califa and Tashiji were also forced to get involved. The furious Shailia Palace was about to press the trigger when suddenly her eyes turned white and she fell heavily to the ground. Immediately after, a hole was torn open in the wall, and a burly man and an old man walked out calmly. Advertisement. The moment the old man came out, Octopus Haki recognized him as Rayleigh. Rayleigh looked around, and probably had an idea in mind, and said, that's it, then. As soon as Rayleigh finished speaking, an invisible aura emanated from his body. In an instant, except for the Straw Hat Pirates, Califa, and Tashiji, and the Heart Pirates, the Kid Pirates were fine. Everyone else rolled their eyes and fell to the ground. This scene can be said to have severely frightened everyone present. Tashiji said in disbelief, is this the same trick as Luo Chen? Yes, if my guess is correct, that old man is Pluton Rayleigh, the vice captain of the Pirate King. Califa responded with a judgment. Upon hearing this, Tashiji looked at Califa and then at the old man in front of him. Tashiji said, this is the Sabayati Archipelago. It is so close to the naval headquarters. Did Marine not even notice that such a big shot is here? Who knows? Califa didn't know the specific situation, so he said without answering, however, I have already informed Luo Chen, and he should be here soon. That's good. Tashiji breathed a sigh of relief after hearing this. To be honest, the next scene would be more and more dangerous for the two of them. Especially since Tashiji himself was originally just a marine sergeant, it would be quite dangerous if you faced too many marine soldiers at once. Advertisement. Although Trafalgar Law didn't know who the old man in front of him was, he felt that this old man was inexplicably dangerous. Kid smiled and said, I didn't expect to see such a big shot here. Rayleigh said with a smile on her face, the people here have been dealt with, and marine outside, I'll leave it to you young people. Trafalgar Law twisted his neck and said, I've been wanting to stretch my shins for a long time. I wish you could, I'm very angry right now. Kid spread his fingers and smiled evilly. Kid hasn't killed anyone in a while, and now Marine is here. Frankie said, is that the coding master? He's so strong. Yes, the terrifying momentum just now is still fresh in my memory. Ha ha ha. Brooke responded with a smile. Nami quickly reminded, now is not the time to talk about this, we have to escape quickly. Luffy stood up and said, everyone, let's get ready to escape. Let me delay the Marines outside. More than half a minute later, more than a thousand Marine soldiers have gathered at the entrance of the auction house, led by the Naval Headquarters Commodore. Naval Headquarters Commodore took the microphone and shouted, Pirates inside, you have been surrounded by our Marines, come out and surrender quickly. After that, he reminded the Marine soldiers behind him and went around through the back door to rescue the Celestial Dragons. If the Celestial Dragons continues to suffer, his career as the Naval Headquarters Commodore will be over. Advertisement. Chapter 19 Luo Chen arrives. Haki shocks the audience. Advertisement. Kami was successfully rescued by Rayleigh, and everyone ran towards the door. When Tashiji was about to escape with him, he looked at Califa doubtfully and asked, Califa, aren't you going to run away? It's dangerous for us to continue to stay here. The specific time when Luo Chen will come is temporarily unknown. Don't worry, Luo Chen also gave me a task. It shouldn't be a task for us. Califa smiled mysteriously and continued, that is to kidnap the celestial dragons. What? Kidnapping celestial dragons. Tashiji had no idea that Luo Chen would issue such a crazy order. It is conceivable that once they do this, naval headquarters will definitely send Admiral to hunt them down. Maybe even the world government will take action. When the celestial dragons were defeated, the Admiral of headquarters was directly dispatched to suppress them. Not to mention kidnapping the celestial dragons? Califa smiled and said, Tashiji, don't you think it would be interesting to have such a big fight with Captain Luo Chen? Tashiji felt like his whole head was buzzing. Califa didn't talk nonsense and immediately pulled Tashiji to start F King. At this time, many marine soldiers ran in from the back door to rescue the celestial dragons. However, most of the marine soldiers were stopped by the three captains Luffy, Kid, and Luo at the gate. Therefore, the marine soldiers here at the back door are not very strong. Advertisement. The marine soldiers faced Califa, who knew six styles, and Tashiji, who knew swordsmanship, and they were no match for them. At the same time, at the door, Luffy, Kid, and Luo were teasing each other about each other's strange devil fruit abilities. On a spaceship, Luo Chen stood at the bow of the ship with his hands in his pockets and said calmly, just after a short sleep, Califa and Tashiji and the Straw Hat pirates caused so many troubles. Don't you know Straw Hat Luffy is a problem guy? Forget it, Califa and Tashiji don't know either. Just three celestial dragons? It's quite a harvest, haha. <laughs> Luo Chen sneered at the end of his sentence. If celestial dragons makes good use of it, they might be able to get a lot of resources from the world government. Marine Commodore said in horror, damn it, why are those three pirates so powerful? Why hasn't Admiral come yet? We can't stand it anymore. Marine Commodore watched as his marine soldiers were being slaughtered by Straw Hats Luffy, Kid, and Luo like they were chopping melons and vegetables. His face was also full of horror. Now we can only hope that Admiral will arrive as soon as possible, and he should be able to reverse this unfavorable situation. Luffy said loudly, just leave these marines to me, you too, don't bother me. Damn it, I should be the one to say this. Kid shouted angrily at Straw Hat Luffy. Trafalgar Law held the head of a marine soldier in his hand and said, Your devil fruit ability is really fancy, and it's not as direct as mine. Your devil fruit ability is just fancy. Straw Hat Luffy and Kid said the same thing at the same time. Advertisement. Suddenly, among all the people, Rayleigh looked up at the sky and said doubtfully, Isn't that the ability of that guy from Golden Lion? As the ship got lower and lower, everyone present soon discovered the airship. Kid looked at the people getting closer and closer to the spacecraft and said in surprise, That person is. Luo Chan. It's him. Like us, he's a pirate with a bounty of over 100 million. Trafalgar Law responded. 
Sanji smoked a cigarette and said, Is that guy the captain of the two ladies Califa and Tashiji? How enviable. Idiot, what are you envious of? Nami looked at Sanji with a very dangerous look and said, This look scared Sanji instantly, and he didn't dare to talk nonsense anymore. Nami would be angry later, but it would be very scary. Usopp said in shock, It's so scary. Why does that guy's devil fruit ability remind me of that golden-haired old man? Don't say it, it's true. Frankie also responded. Luffy kept looking at Luo Chen, as if he had a feeling, and said, That guy is very strong. Zoro didn't look at Luo Chen, but kept looking at the two knives at his waist and said, Those two knives belong to the Golden Lion. As soon as Zoro said this, everyone in the Straw Hat Pirates focused on the Luo Chen weapon. It was indeed the case. Rayleigh kept smiling throughout and said, It seems that he should be the successor of Golden Lion, but that guy would find a successor, which is really unexpected. Rayleigh, is Golden Lion one of the three great pirates back then? Octopus Haki asked uncertainly. Advertisement. Rayleigh did not deny it and nodded in response. Octopus Haki gasped. Marine Commodore clenched the gun in his hand and said worriedly, Damn it, there's another supernova. Listen to the order, aim at the ship in the sky, and shoot it down for me. Yes. The Marine soldiers responded in unison. They all pointed their guns at the spacecraft controlled by Luo Chen. Luo Chen put his hands in his pockets and looked calmly at the thousands of Marine soldiers below, and said, There are so many trash fish, it's time to clear out the place. Just as Luo Chen finished speaking, an invisible force of Conqueror's Haki exploded instantly. Like a strong wind, it swept over the Marines below. Then a large number of Marine soldiers rolled their eyes, foamed at the mouth, and fell to the ground. Even the Marine Commodore was holding his hands on the ground in pain. Straw Hat Luffy said in shock, Is this the same trick as the uncle used just now? Conqueror's Haki, damn that guy. Kid quickly became vigilant, someone who could use that kind of trick would be a formidable competitor. Trafalgar Law said in an uneasy mood, It seems that the 100 million belly bounty given by Marine severely underestimated Captain Luo Chen. Advertisement. Chapter 20 Luo Chen is ready to cause trouble. Advertisement. Chopper said in a cute and frightened voice, How scary, oh oh. He killed more than a thousand Marines in an instant. What kind of power is this? Oh turned AO. I also want to know what kind of power it is. Usopp responded with a bad expression. In the entire Marine, only the leading Marine Commodore was still holding on, while the other Marine soldiers had been knocked unconscious by Luo Chen's conqueror's hacky. At this time, Califa and Tashiji also came out, one carrying two celestial dragons, the other carrying one celestial dragons, followed by Peja. Luo Chen parked the boat next to the two of them and said slowly, You two can really sort things out. I'm sorry, Luo Chen. Tashiji apologized quickly, it was indeed a big problem. Luo Chen raised his hand and said, Don't worry, you did a good job, I appreciate it. Tashiji was stunned. He originally thought he would be scolded, but unexpectedly, he was praised by Luo Chen. Robin said in disbelief, Did they kidnap the celestial dragons? It seems like that's true. Nami nodded in response. Hixing said in horror, How do you feel that the Luo Chen pirate group is more capable of causing trouble than Luffy? Trafalgar Law, and Kid never looked away from Luo Chen. This person who is the same supernova as them is very extraordinary. Now that he has even kidnapped celestial dragons, what else can he not dare to do? Advertisement. At this time, Rayleigh reminded, Young people, now is not the time for you to be in a daze. If you don't leave here quickly, the Marine Admiral may be arriving soon. Only after Rayleigh's reminder did everyone react, and now their crisis has not been resolved. If he continues to waste time, Marine Admiral might actually arrive. Kid held the knife at his waist and said, Straw Hat Luffy, see you in the new world. When that time comes, I tell you, I will not show mercy to you. And that Luo Chan, I will prove that I am the strongest among the supernovas. Exist. Hee <laughs> hee, I'm not afraid. Straw Hat Luffy responded with a grin, not caring about Kid's threat at all. Kid said to his subordinates, let's go to New World. Trafalgar Law, carrying Ghost Cry, the name of the weapon, said, then Straw Hat Master, I have to leave too. Marine Admiral bumped into me, it was too early, so it's also New World goodbye. Okay, Terra Man. Luffy responded with a toothy smile. You guy, don't use random names. Asshole. Trafalgar Law, he had not been so speechless to a person for a long time, and now this person is the bastard Straw Hat Luffy. Trafalgar Law, ignoring Straw Hat Luffy and others, left with his men. However, when Trafalgar Law left, he also glanced at Luo Chen. The scene just now still had a huge impact on him. Advertisement. Less than a minute. Only Luo Chen, Califa, Tashiji, Peja, three unconscious celestial dragons, and a large group of marine soldiers who rolled their eyes were left on the spot. As for that marine commodore, at this moment, I have chosen to play dead. Califa asked, Luo Chen, are we leaving Sabayati Archipelago now? No, I'm not leaving just yet. Luo Chen responded meaningfully. However, Califa still expressed her worries and said, that Straw Hat Luffy beat the Celestial Dragons, and we also kidnapped the Celestial Dragons. Maybe our kidnapping of the Celestial Dragons has not been exposed yet, but it is probably a matter of time. In addition, Marine Admiral may be on the way here too. Yes, Luo Chen, Marine Admiral, is known as the Marine's highest combat power. I'm afraid of you, Tashiji said without continuing. In fact, the meaning was already expressed clearly. You don't have to worry. Luo Chen responded, now you get on the boat first, and I will use the Devil Fruit ability to lift the boat to an altitude of 10,000 meters. Because, here at Sabayati Archipelago, there are still things that have not been settled. Luo Chen showed an excited expression. Since he had already arrived here, it would be unreasonable not to do something. It just so happens that starting from Sabayati Archipelago, the plot is directly reversed to develop in a different direction from the original work. That must be interesting. Luo Chen has made this decision, and Califa and Tashiji do not dare to have any objections. They only hope that Luo Chen can be safe. Advertisement. Lifting the ship to a height of 10,000 meters is an easy task for the Awakening Level Lion Fruit ability. When the matter was finalized and Califa, Tashiji, and others were sent to an altitude of 10,000 meters, Luo Chen came to the Marine Commodore who was pretending to be dead. 
said, Mr. Marine, how long are you going to continue pretending to be dead? Don't kill me, don't kill me, I don't want to die yet. Marine Commodore was so frightened that he stood up quickly and kept retreating. I thought I could get away by pretending to be dead, but, Luo Chen walked over, raised his hand and patted the Marine Commodore on the shoulder and said, Remember afterwards, I will tell you about Marshal Sengoku's kidnapping of Celestial Dragons. Also tell him that if he wants to redeem the Celestial Dragons, he must prepare enough chips for me. Remember, I know, I know, Marine Commodore how dare he say a, eh? not, word, what if you say it? He must have been killed by now, very good. As soon as Luo Chen finished speaking, he knocked out the Marine Commodore with a fist. Let him deliver the message, not now. Then the main event comes next. Luo Chen used the Lion Fruit ability to slowly lift his body into the air. It flew in one direction. At this time, the Straw Hat Pirates and others returned to the ripoff tavern where 13 GR Shaki was located. Only this time, instead of Califa and Tashiji, there are four more people, Sanji, Usopp, Frankie, and Zoro. Advertisement. Chapter 21 The Big Crisis of the Straw Hats. Advertisement. The Heart Pirates and the Kid Pirates were intercepted by pacifists when they were about to leave the Sabayati Archipelago. The pacifists were also considered by Trafalgar and Kid to be the seven warlords of the Sea Tyrant Bears. Eurage, APU, Drake, and Hawkins were also attacked by pacifists and Marine Admiral Kizaro. It was just Kizaro who was absent-minded and toying with them the whole time, otherwise they would all have been killed long ago. 13GR ripped off the tavern. Rayleigh, Shucky, Octopus Hacky, Starfish, and Kami bid farewell to Luffy and others. Rayleigh smiled and waved her hand and said, I wish you a safe journey. Okay, Uncle Rayleigh. Straw Hat Luffy also waved and said goodbye to Rayleigh and others. Nami said, we have to leave quickly. Hehe, <laughs> how about we go to the amusement park to play for a while before leaving? Luffy said. Boom, in an instant, Luffy's head was smashed by Nami. Nami roared, do you know what the situation is now? Are you still thinking about the amusement park? Just as Straw Hat Luffy, Zoro, Sanji, Usopp, Chopper, Brooke, Frankie, Nami, and Robin were trying to escape, a figure appeared in front of them. It is the pacifist. Sanji widened his eyes and said, this guy is the seven warlords of the sea tyrant bear. Why is this guy here? Zoro quickly grasped the handle of the knife with both hands and said, Advertisement. Luffy asked in confusion, Who is this guy? Nami, Robin, Usopp, and others told Luffy the general situation. Frankie said seriously, Anyway, this guy is very strong, we have to deal with him carefully. Since you are very strong, then go all out from the beginning. As Luffy said this, he had already entered the second gear. Immediately afterwards, Straw Hat Luffy, Zoro, and Sanji launched a fierce attack on the pacifists. Under a joint attack, the pacifists were directly knocked away. Did it succeed? Usopp said, looking in the direction where the seven warlords of the sea tyrant bear was shot away. It's not that simple. Robin felt that a seven warlords of the sea tyrant bear should not be defeated that easily. The pacifist jumped out again and stood in front of Straw Hat Luffy and others. Luffy said in shock, is this guy so strong? Zoro always felt that the seven warlords of the sea tyrant bear in front of him was strange, but he couldn't tell what was strange at the moment. After more than ten rounds of fighting, the entire Straw Hat pirates teamed up to defeat the pacifist. Everyone was lying on the ground, gasping for air. Usopp said tiredly, I'm so tired, but I finally defeated him. Yes, the crisis is finally over. Frankie responded. Advertisement. Luffy said in disbelief, since this guy is not the seven warlords of the sea tyrant bear, then who is he? Are they the so-called twins? Nami reminded, don't worry about this for now, we have to leave quickly, otherwise we will have to continue fighting when the marine pursuers catch up. That's right, everyone, let's leave as soon as possible. Luffy stood up and said, just when everyone in the Straw Hat Pirates was about to continue on their way, another pacifist appeared in front of everyone in the Straw Hat Pirates. No, Brooke was stunned for a moment. Usopp said desperately, we just defeated a seven warlords of the sea tyrant bear, and now there is another seven warlords of the sea tyrant bear? How many guys like this are there? Sanji lit a cigarette for himself and said, the one we defeated just now has exhausted all our energy. Now comes another one. Why are you talking so much? Just fight. Zoro immediately said in a three-sword style stance. Luffy took a breath and said, it seems that I can only continue to defeat one more. At this time, Jean Momomaru also appeared and said, finally found you, Straw Hat Pirates. Didn't Mr. Huang say he was here? Why haven't you arrived yet? I found it. I've been looking for it for a long time. Kizaru turned into a ray of light and appeared next to Jean Momomaru. Robin said with a bad expression, oh no, that person is Marine Admiral Kizaru. Are we really going to be doomed? Facing so many terrible enemies, Usopp said with despair in his eyes. Advertisement. Kizaru looked at the Straw Hat Pirates and others, and said slyly, the murderer of the Celestial Dragons, Straw Hat Luffy, we Marine have not found the Celestial Dragons yet. What a crime you committed, newbie Straw Hat Luffy. Everyone, we are no match for them right now. Hurry up and run away. We will meet up when the time comes. Luffy announced loudly. However, no matter how the Straw Hat Pirates and others escaped, they were suppressed to death. Just when Kizaru was about to step on Zoro, a person quickly rushed over and kicked Kizaru's attack away. Kizaru put his hands in his pockets and said obscenely, are you going to show up instead? Pluton Rayleigh. Haha, <laughs> Kizaru, they are the hope for the future of pirates. I hope you can let them live. Rayleigh said with a faint smile on his lips. Kizaru then said slyly, are you kidding? If we let them go, I will be annoyed to death by the celestial dragons. It seems like it won't work. Rayleigh said. Kizaru said lewdly, there were rumors before that Pluton Rayleigh was hidden in the Sabayati archipelago. It seems that this rumor is true. But if we, Marine, want to attack you, we must be fully prepared. Kizaru, if you remove my bounty order, you won't have to go to such trouble. Rayleigh responded with a faint smile. Kizaru said obscenely, you are a serious criminal and the deputy captain of Pirate King Roger's ship. A man can giant sword. Kizaru clasped his hands together and pulled out a lightsaber. Advertisement. Chapter 22 Luo Chen shows off the great swordsman's swordsmanship and kills Jean Momomaru instantly. Advertisement. Luffy looked at Uncle Rayleigh who stopped Admiral Kizaru and said, that uncle is so powerful. He was able to hit the body that we couldn't hit just now. Luffy, let's run away quickly. Usopp reminded him quickly, carrying an exhausted Zoro on his back. Jean Doan chased after him and said, do you think I will let you run away? 
PX2 pursues. The pacifists who received the order immediately launched a pursuit of the Straw Hat Pirates. Rayleigh, who was having a quick fight with Kizaro, said out of control, It seems I'm really old, I want to go over and help them, but I can't free my hands. Are you kidding me? Let me face the opponent in front of you? I am the Admiral of Headquarters. Kizaro said obscenely while launching a fierce attack on Pluton Rayleigh. Just when the pacifists were about to hit Usopp who was carrying Zoro on his back, the real seven warlords of the sea tyrant bear appeared. Zoro widened his eyes and said, This guy is me. Disappear. Bartholomew Kuma took off his gloves and knocked the pacifist PX2 away. When everyone in the Straw Hat Pirates saw this scene, they all knew that the real seven warlords of the sea, Bartholomew Kuma, had arrived. However, they are even more desperate. It is so difficult to even fight an imposter. If they face the real person, they will be even more unable to resist. Jean Dalmer roared, Big Bear, what are you doing? Kizaro and Rayleigh also noticed the situation over there. Kizaru said in a wretched and confused manner, why did Bartholomew Kuma suddenly come over? Advertisement. When Kizaru is confused, Bartholomew Kuma disappeared from where he was and appeared in the middle of the fight between Kizaru and Rayleigh. Facing Rayleigh, he whispered a few words in Rayleigh's ear. Rayleigh is very confused, why does the seven warlords of the sea tyrant bear want to help Luffy and the others? But regardless of whether it was true or not, at least it relieved him of the pressure, otherwise he would not be able to free his hands when facing a Kizaru. After Bartholomew Kuma finished speaking, he disappeared again and went to the Straw Hat Pirates. Kizaru was very confused and couldn't figure out what Bartholomew Kuma wanted to do. Bartholomew Kuma appears in front of Zoro. Zoro, run. Luffy shouted desperately, and the rest of the Straw Hat Pirates also had their hearts in their throats. Send you to a place, so where do you want to go? Bartholomew Kuma said in an emotionless tone. Damn it, please move my body. Zoro wanted to move, but his body was so exhausted that he could no longer move. Just when Bartholomew Kuma's slap was about to hit Zoro, a flying slash flew at high speed and hit Bartholomew Kuma's back. Bartholomew Kuma's operation had to be interrupted. This scene surprised everyone, and they didn't know who was involved. A figure slowly descended from the sky. Chopper pointed at Luo Chen and said in surprise, It's that Luo Chen. Advertisement. Why did that guy come here? Sanji said with a tired and confused look on his face. Luffy, Zoro, Usopp, Frankie, Brooke, Nami, and Robin were all confused by the sudden appearance of Luo Chen. Jean Dalmera frowned and said, That person, Luo Chen, who is also one of the supernovas, since he jumped out on his own initiative, he will also be imprisoned in Impel Down. Why are you hindering me? Bartholomew Kuma turned around and looked at Luo Chen and asked. Luo Chen smiled with a frivolous look, I heard that Wang Xiaqi Wu is very powerful. I just want to try it. Is it really that strong? Luo Chen, let's capture him without mercy. Jean Doan rushed over and roared loudly. Luo Chen pulled out his big sharp sword, Sakura Ten, and flew out instantly as his body sank, double sword style secrets. Double slash wave. What? Faced with Luo Chen's astonishing speed, Jean Doan couldn't react at all. Boom, Jean Doan's whole body was penetrated by Luo Chen, two large wounds were opened on his chest, blood spurted out, and Jean Doan also lost consciousness. The area swept by Luo Chen's attack was still shaking slightly. Jean Doan, who made Luffy miserable, was killed by Luo Chen in an instant. Zoro didn't know where the energy came from, and he opened his mouth and said, that guy's swordsmanship. The swordsmanship demonstrated by Luo Chen just now had a huge impact on Zoro, so much so that Zoro almost doubted his life. Is this Luo Chen really a supernova on the same level as Luffy? Sanji said with doubtful eyes. Advertisement. Usopp said in shock, what kind of strength is that? We should be saved for the time being. Frankie said in a serious tone. Kizaro and Rayleigh looked shocked at the same time. If others couldn't understand it, it didn't mean that they couldn't understand it. The level of swordsmanship that Luo Chen used just now was clearly at the level of a great swordsman. This level of swordsmanship is obviously far beyond the supernova level. Many great pirates in the new world do not necessarily possess swordsmanship at the level of a great swordsman. Kizaru said wretchedly and in shock, that newcomer will be a big hidden danger in the future. Haha, <laughs> what's wrong, Kizaru, are you marine scared now? Rayleigh said with a smile on her lips. Bartholomew Kuma was originally going to rescue Luffy and others, but was interrupted by Luo Chen, but it would be fine if Luffy and others could rescue him. Kizaru then said slyly, today's mission is not easy at all. It is really a headache. Kizaru, with an old man like me here, you can't do anything else. Rayleigh knew that his mission was to hold Kizaru down. Now there is no guarantee what the purpose of Luo Chen is. After Luo Chen eliminated John Dalmero, he looked at Bartholomew Kuma and said, I have cleaned up the trash fish, so come on. Seven warlords of the sea tyrant bear. Newcomer, you are so reckless, it is very dangerous. Bartholomew Kuma thought in his heart, what should be done to send the straw hat pirates away safely again? Advertisement. Chapter 23 One of Luo Chen's goals is achieved. Advertisement. Bartholomew Kuma kept firing air cannons from the palm of his hand. But all of Bartholomew Kuma's air cannon attacks were accurately dodged by Luo Chen. Bartholomew Kuma used the meatball fruit ability to attack again, but was still dodged by Luo Chen. Now, no matter how slow Bartholomew Kuma reacts, he knows that the opponent's observation hacky has reached an astonishing level. Otherwise, it would be impossible to avoid all his attacks. The reason why Luo Chen was able to do this was entirely because observation hacky met the future and avoided it in advance. You've been attacking for so long, it's time to take your place. Luo Chen put the broadsword Deadwood back into its scabbard. Hold the big sword Sakura Ten with both hands. The secret of one sword style. Kang Long Break. This is Luo Chen's use of swordsmanship at the level of a great swordsman to create his own secret moves. A dragon-shaped shadow surrounds Luo Chen. When Bartholomew Kuma saw that the situation was not good, he had to dodge. After all, if he faced Luo Chen's attack head-on, he might be seriously injured. Now, as a semi-cyborg, Bartholomew Kuma is no longer able to use armament hacky smoothly. My physical strength has gone up, but I'm not as flexible as I once was. Do you think you can escape? Luo Chen's observation hacky had already locked onto Bartholomew Kuma throughout the game. What this guy wants to do is all in Luo Chen's perception of observation hacky when he meets the future. The violent wind blew everyone in the Straw Hat Pirates away. Advertisement. Only Kizaru and Rayleigh can face this situation calmly. Rayleigh commented, compared to the same period, that guy is already far ahead. A newcomer has such great strength. Marshal Sengoku will probably have a headache when he finds out about it. 
Kizura said wretchedly. Boom, boom, boom. The range of a few hundred meters was completely changed beyond recognition under Luo Chen's attack. When the smoke slowly dissipated, Bartholomew Kuma's bruised body was revealed. But under those wounds, all the machine circuits can be seen. Luo Chen said with a smile on his face, the modified human body is quite strong. With the top observation hacky and swordsmanship at the level of a great swordsman, Luo Chen has become the strongest being below the general level. The straw hat pirates and others were all lying in pieces everywhere. So strong, does he really only have a bounty of 100 million baileys? Brook wanted to say that he doubted that Luo Chen's bounty was 1 billion baileys, not 100 million baileys. Zoro said unwillingly, the gap between my swordsmanship and his is completely different. Damn it. But, no matter what, we were saved because of Luo Chen. Robin said with a fair evaluation. Chopper said in horror, that man named Luo Chen is so scary. Nami felt like she was going to despair. What on earth did she go through today? Advertisement. Rubbles and debris kept falling in midair. Bartholomew Kuma still didn't give up. Suddenly he saw Luo Chen coming in front of him and was about to use the meatball fruit ability to move away. Luo Chen said directly, the revolutionaries undercover, Bartholomew Kuma. You'd better not act rashly against me now, otherwise you won't blame me for being rude to you revolutionaries. Also, your leader Dragon's son, Straw Hat Luffy, don't worry. Nothing will happen to him today, so leave now. Bar. Bartholomew Kuma was stunned. He didn't expect the man in front of him to tell so many of his secrets at once. For a moment, Bartholomew Kuma wondered whether this man named Luo Chen was from the world government. But immediately, Bartholomew Kuma denied it again. Originally, he took this risk to rescue leader Delag's son, but now it seems that there is no need for it, and there is no need to worry about the crisis of exposing his identity for the time being. Bartholomew Kuma rarely spoke up and said, Although I don't know what your purpose is, I agree to your proposal. That's right. Luo Chen responded with a smile. This is what Luo Chen wants, to slowly push this so-called plot into an unknown direction. After Luo Chen and Bartholomew Kuma reached a consensus, Bartholomew Kuma left directly. Kizuro, who was fighting with Rayleigh, said obscenely, It's so scary, is Bartholomew Kuma leaving now? Now, I'm in a bit of trouble. Jean Doan is seriously injured again. Rayleigh hasn't answered yet. Advertisement. Luo Chen's voice came over. Old man Rayleigh, let's work together to kill Kizuro. Killing a marine admiral should be a very interesting thing, right? Old man Rayleigh. Luo Chen flew at a low altitude near where Rayleigh and Kizuro were fighting. Ha 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 Rayleigh laughed and said, This suggestion of yours is also a feasible solution for me. Kizuro listened to these two people talking the whole time, why did he feel so wrong? When things got to this point, Kizuru was actually too lazy to continue fighting. Although, Kizuru is not afraid of the so-called Rayleigh teaming up with a newcomer. After all, he is also the admiral with the highest combat power in naval headquarters. In the final analysis, Kizuru just found it troublesome. Anyway, after returning to naval headquarters, he could just find a reason to give it to Marshal Sengoku. So Kizuru put away the Tian Kong Yun sword and said wretchedly, How scary? Pluton Rayleigh, a newcomer with great swordsmanship. It seems that today's mission cannot be completed. Let's each take a step back. I will take my men and leave Sabayadi Archipelago. The Straw Hat Pirates will let it go for now. Brother Luo Chen, what do you think? Rayleigh asked with a faint smile on her face from beginning to end. In fact, Rayleigh has already agreed to Kizura's proposal, but there is Luo Chen next to him. Luo Chen couldn't tell what Huang Monkey and Rayleigh were thinking. Okay. Luo Chen responded. Advertisement. Chapter 24 The Evil Luo Chen Lets Celestial Dragons Serve. Advertisement. Naval Headquarters Marine Ford, Marshal's Office, Sengoku had just hung up the phone with a dark face. If Sengoku hadn't cultivated himself better, he would have exploded long ago. Just when Sengoku was about to call Kizuro to announce the new mission content, he saw Kizuro walking in from the door. Sengoku asked directly in confusion, Polis Alino, why did you come back? Marshal Sengoku, can't I come back? Kizuro could clearly feel that Marshal Sengoku's tone and mood were not good at this moment. Did Marshal Sengoku know in advance that he had not completed the mission? Sengoku saw Kizuro's confused look and said, Just now, the Marine Commodore stationed at the Sabayati Archipelago reported news about the Celestial Dragons. Now three Celestial Dragons have been kidnapped by Luo Chen's people. They also warned me, the Marshal, that if you want to redeem the Celestial Dragons, you have to pay enough chips. This, is so scary? Kidnapping Celestial Dragons. Kizuro responded with a lewd and shocked expression on his face. This incident was completely unexpected by Kizuro. However, after Kizuro was shocked, he also told Marshal Sengoku everything he had experienced in the Sabayati Archipelago. After hearing this, Sengoku was no less shocked than Kizuro, and said, You mean, that Luo Chen has swordsmanship at the level of a great swordsman? You really didn't lie to me. What's the use of me lying to you, Marshal Sengoku? Kizuro looked at Marshal Sengoku with dead eyes and responded, Advertisement. That's right. You have no reason to lie to me. It's not good for you? Sengoku nodded and said, Sengoku tapped his finger on the table and said, It seems that our marine seriously underestimated Luo Chen, and this Luo Chen is really courageous. If we weren't about to start a war with the Whitebeard Pirates, I really want to send two admirals to suppress Luo Chen directly. Even the Celestial Dragons would dare to kidnap him. Kizura still showed a vulgar expression and said, I thought that the newcomer was powerful, but turns out he is also so courageous? It's really scary. Sengoku's tone became very serious and he said, Judging from the current information, that Luo Chen possesses Conqueror's Haki and is also a Lion Fruit capable user. Among them, Observation Haki has profound skills and swordsmanship at the level of a great swordsman. Armament Haki is relatively weak. Overall, his strength is very close to the Admiral level. Then it can be concluded that sooner or later Luo Chen will become a strong man at the level of the Four Emperors. I don't know where this brat Luo Chen came from. He has such great strength at such a young age. Marshal Sengoku, we don't have enough energy to deal with Luo Chen's matter now. Kizuru responded after finding a seat and sitting down. Sengoku said, increase the bounty for Luo Chen to 500 million belly. In addition, the former CP9 member Califa also has a bounty of 50 million belly, the same as Tashiji. At the same time, Luo Chen flew to an altitude of 10,000 meters, carrying a large bag of food with him. Luo Chen, you're back. Tashiji was relieved to see Luo Chen return safely. Califa asked, Luo Chen, what are our next steps? Advertisement. Repair for a while until the real drama begins. Luo Chen responded with a mysterious smile. 
Califa and Tashiji didn't know what drama Luo Chen was referring to, but they thought it might be about celestial dragons. Luo Chen said, Bring me those three celestial dragons. Califa received the order and immediately went to pull out the three celestial dragons. Damn humans, you are dead. I will let the Marine Admiral capture you and torture you people to death. Saint Roswald kept crying and howling. The same goes for Saint Charles and Shailelia Palace, Luo Chen said, Califa, teach them some lessons and let them understand what it means to be quiet. Okay, Luo Chen. Califa responded excitedly. Repairing celestial dragons is something Califa never even dared to think about before. Now after following Luo Chen, it has really come true. The three views of Peja, who just joined, have been being refreshed. That man is so scary, even celestial dragons dare to do this to him. After about half an hour, the three celestial dragons finally calmed down, and they were afraid of being teased all the time. At this moment, the three of them realized that being bullied was such a terrible thing. Advertisement. Saint Roseward, Saint Charos, and Saint Shailelia were brought to Luo Chen again. Luo Chen smiled lightly and said, Can you listen to me carefully now, you three bastards? Please let us go, I can give you a lot of money, whatever you want. Saint Rose Waiter said fearfully. Saint Charlos immediately followed suit and said in fear, I have many, many slaves that I can give to you. I can give them to you even if you want Bailey. Me too, you can ask for anything you want. Shailelia Palace responded with the same fear. Ha 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 Luo Chen looked up to the sky and laughed and said, Celestial dragons, what a ridiculous thing. Others are afraid of you, but I'm not. Do you understand? My first condition now is that if you come to serve me, you must first make me happy enough. Otherwise, as you know, the consequences will be serious, including death. Luo Chen finally pointed at Shailelia Palace. Shailelia was dumbfounded for a moment. She had no idea that this person would target her. Okay, no problem. Saint Roswald agreed without even thinking. Saint Charles was so frightened that he stopped being stupid and agreed, My sister is whatever you want. Father, brother, you guys. Xiaolulia felt bad. Her father and brother abandoned her when they said they would abandon her? I can't imagine what kind of horror I will face next. Advertisement. Chapter 25 The Big Event Begins and Luo Chen's Latest Report. Advertisement. In the next two days, Shailelia truly understood what it was like to be so disturbed that she couldn't get out of bed. On the contrary, Saint Roswald and Saint Charles didn't even dare to fart. The reason why they didn't dare to say anything was mainly because Luo Chen kept asking Califa to teach them both a lesson at every turn. Regardless of whether it was Saint Rose Ward or Saint Charles, both of them secretly planned in their hearts that once they return, they must send CP0 and Marine Admiral to capture Luo Chen, that damn human being. Let Luo Chen experience what real slave life is. Of course, they dare not say this. On the contrary, Xiaolulia was so manipulated by Luo Chen that her mentality changed slightly. Another day passed. Sabayati Archipelago, 13 GR in the ripoff tavern. Rayleigh came back after finishing her work. As soon as she entered the door, she saw everyone from the Straw Hat Pirates. She smiled and said, I have already finished the coating of your ship, old man. Thank you, Uncle Rayleigh. Luffy jumped up and said excitedly, I'm very happy to be able to help you, old man. Besides, this job is very simple for me. Rayleigh responded with a faint smile. Zoro, Sanji, Usopp, Nami, Robin, Chopper, Frankie, Brooke and others also smiled together. Once the ship is coated, it means that the Straw Hat Pirates can officially go to the Fishman Island. Advertisement. At this time, a man in a black hat trotted in, handed Shucky a newspaper, and ran away again. Although Shucky hadn't read the contents of the newspaper, she roughly guessed that this matter was no small matter. After all, she could ask people in her intelligence network to deliver it in person. The explanation is quite anxious. When Shucky opened the newspaper and took a first look, his eyes widened instantly. Shucky read in front of everyone, Marine, in one week, there will be a public execution of Fire Fist Ace, the captain of the second division of the Whitebeard Pirates. Luffy, who was eating happily, was stunned for a moment, almost wondering if he heard it wrong. Everyone in the Straw Hats knew that Fire Fist Ace was Luffy's brother, so they all looked at Luffy with great concern. Both Shucky and Rayleigh could tell something was wrong. Nami explained, Shaky, Rayleigh, the Fire Fist Ace, the captain of the second division of the Whitebeard Pirates, is Luffy's brother. That's it. Shucky finally knew what was going on. Shucky continued, it was also reported that Luo Chen kidnapped celestial dragons, and Luo Chen's bounty was also raised to 500 million belly. But because Luo Chen kidnapped the celestial dragons and asked you, little Luffy, to beat up the celestial dragons, it was downplayed a lot. Luo Chen also indirectly attracted firepower to you. As someone who has experienced this, Rayleigh can certainly understand what Luffy's expression means at this moment. Rayleigh took a sip of wine and said, it seems that your departure to the Fishman Island has to be postponed. Luffy clenched his fists and said firmly, everyone, I plan to rescue Ace. Advertisement. Luffy, we already knew you were going to do this. Sanji responded while smoking. Although Zoro didn't speak, his meaning was already obvious, that is, he supported Luffy's decision. Including Usopp, Frankie, Brooke, Chopper, Nami, and Robin all support Luffy's decision. Luffy smiled, thank you. At this time, Nami suddenly reacted and said, by the way, I have Luo Chen's phone number here. He said last time that you can call him if you need it. Yes. Usopp responded with a fist in one hand and a palm in each hand, hitting his fist on the palm. Shucky looked at Rayleigh and said, however, Marine is very aggressive this time. They are all trying to force Whitebeard to take action. Sengoku wants to open a breakthrough in the new world, so defeating Whitebeard will indeed be a great deterrent to pirates. Rayleigh can roughly guess what Sengoku's purpose is at a glance. Since the Straw Hat pirates plan to notify Luo Chen to help, Nami immediately called Luo Chen. Thousands of meters in the air. Saint Roswald and Saint Charos were so hungry that their eyes turned white. They only gave them one steamed bun and a bottle of water every day. Even though it was only three days, Saint Rose Ward and Saint Charles felt like they were living like a year. In other words, Shailelia Palace can enjoy good food and drinks with Luo Chen. Luo Chen was lying on a chair, with Shailelia and Peja serving him on the left and right. Advertisement. As for Califa and Tashiji, they are taking the time to train Haki. For the two of them, only when their strength improves can they truly help Luo Chen. At this time, the phone next to the bug rang. Do do do. After Luo Chen answered the call, he said, Moses Moses, I am Luo Chen. Luo Chen, this is Nami. Last time you said that if our straw hat pirates need it, you can provide us with a simple help. Does this still count? 
Nami was cautious in the Saveadi Archipelago 13 GR ripoff tavern. Asked. She was deeply afraid that Luo Chen would default on her debt later, and Nami would have no choice. Luo Chen said to the phone number, of course it counts. Tell me your location, I'll go over now. Sabeadi Archipelago 13 GR everyone in the Straw Hat Pirates in the ripoff tavern was very happy when they heard that Luo Chen was willing to help. After hanging up the phone, Luo Chen stood up and said, Califa, Tashiji, you two will be responsible for all operations on the ship. I'm going out to fight in a big battle, and I'll probably be back in a week or so. Okay. Califa and Tashiji both responded at the same time. After knowing Luo Chen's strong strength, Califa and Tashiji no longer seemed so worried about Luo Chen's safety. On the contrary, Peja and Shailia were a little reluctant to leave Luo Chen for several days. Advertisement. Chapter 26 Luo Chen pulls Rayleigh into the water. Advertisement. The reason why Luo Chen helped the Straw Hat Pirates this time was mainly because he wanted to see with his own eyes a plot that was different from the original work. In the original work, Straw Hat Luffy sneaked into Impel Down alone and then entered naval headquarters. And his crew members were dispersed to various parts of the world, so this time it was different. Luo Chen found it quite interesting. Of course, it's not that Luo Chen wants to help the Straw Hat Pirates, it's just a bad taste. Among them, Luo Chen's purpose is to invade Impel Down and recruit some crew members there. Otherwise, just a few women cannot support a pirate group. At the same time, Luo Chen returned to Sabeadi Archipelago again. 13 GR in the ripoff tavern, Luo Chen opened the door and walked in. Rayleigh looked at Luo Chen who walked in and said with a smile, Golden Lion's Lion Fruit ability is so practical, it's very convenient to go anywhere. Thank you, Mr. Rayleigh. Luo Chen responded with a smile. At this time, everyone in the Straw Hat Pirates expressed their gratitude to Luo Chen for coming to help them. To be honest, the Straw Hat Pirates already owed Luo Chen a big favor. Luo Chen said in front of everyone, You are going to rescue Fire Fist Ace, but you can't just say you want to rescue him. As expected, Fire Fist Ace should be imprisoned in Impel Down. Choosing to invade Impel Down at this time will definitely attract support from naval headquarters. Therefore, the success rate is very low and will not be considered. Then what should we do? Luffy asked anxiously. On the contrary, Rayleigh and Shucky listened to Luo Chen's analysis and judgment with great interest. It shows that a young man has such an analytical mind, which shows that it is not simple. Advertisement. Luo Chen continued, when Marine concentrates its combat power at Naval Headquarters Marine Ford Plaza to prepare to deal with the Whitebeard Pirates, it is the best time to invade Impel Down. If we get the timing right, we might be able to intercept the military ship escorting Fire Fist Ace Midway. That's amazing. Why do you know so much, Luo Chen? Usopp said with incredible admiration. Everyone in the Straw Hat Pirates admired Luo Chen's analysis. Shucky and Rayleigh also nodded in approval. Robin smiled sinisterly and said, I suspect, Luo Chen, you know more than just this. Haha <laughs> Luo Chen laughed and responded, it's not good to guess other people's thoughts. Nico Robin, by the way, Luffy should be the only one who knows about Fire Fist Ace's life experience, right? I think I heard Ace talk about it. Luffy didn't know what Luo Chen was going to do when he revealed Ace's life experience at this time. Just because Luffy didn't understand what it meant, it didn't mean that others couldn't understand the key point. Luo Chen would say this, that is, the identity of Fire Fist Ace will also become a key to it. Zoro took a sip of wine and said, Luo Chen, don't lie, what is the life experience of Luffy's brother Fire Fist Ace? There's really nothing we can do against you impatient guys. Luo Chen waved his hand and responded with a smile. Advertisement. Luo Chen glanced at Rayleigh and said, This old man Rayleigh's Captain Roger, his son is poor Gas D Ace. As soon as Luo Chen said this, everyone became restless, except Straw Hat Luffy, who was a bit normal because he had heard Ace say it before. An hour later, a lot happened. Shucky asked, Rayleigh, have you really decided? That's right. Forget it if you don't know. Now that you know it, if you ignore it. I'm so sorry Roger. Rayleigh took off his glasses and wiped them in response. Rayleigh asked Luo Chen, I even doubt that you did it on purpose. The Celestial Dragons were kidnapped before, and the old man Ray joined them later. It seems that Marine will have a headache when facing an opponent like you in the future. Indeed, little Luo Chen, you have a lot of tricks up your sleeve. Shucky responded while smoking. Chopper said happily, with a master like Uncle Rayleigh joining us, the success rate of rescuing Brother Luffy will definitely increase a lot. Hey, Brooke said with a smile, it seems that we also have hope. Sanji said, speaking of which, we still have to wait for the next few days. Depending on the situation, it should be so. Frankie responded. Luo Chen poured himself a glass of wine and said, I know that you are asking me for help so that you can use my devil fruit ability and invade Impel Down or Naval Headquarters to hinder it. But afterwards, Straw Hat Luffy, you owe me a favor. Advertisement. No problem. Straw Hat Luffy agreed without thinking. Nami, Robin, Zoro, Sanji, Usopp, Frankie, Brooke, and Chopper knew that it was impossible to let Luo Chen help without conditions. But compared with rescuing Brother Luffy, it was nothing. It was a favor, big or small. At this time, Zoro stood up and walked to Luo Chen. Everyone in the Straw Hats can probably guess that Zoro probably went for Luo Chen's swordsmanship. Otherwise, they would not have thought of anything else, and it should be impossible for them to have anything other than swordsmanship. Zoro solemnly requested, Luo Chen, get rid of you and fight with me once. I want to see how big the gap is between my swordsmanship and yours. Okay. Luo Chen responded with a smile. This guy Zoro still has great potential, and he will be able to awaken conquerors Haki in Wanakuni in the future. And finally defeated the first of the three disasters of the Beast's Pirates, the Fire Disaster. That kind of strength is very close to the general level level. It can also be understood in disguise as stepping into the general level level with one foot. Thank you very much. Zoro bowed to Luo Chen. This rare opportunity to fight against a more powerful swordsman is very important to Zoro himself. At the same moment, the whole world has fallen into a panic. Advertisement. Chapter 27 Boa Hancock disobeys orders. Advertisement. People all over the world are talking about it. Is Marine serious this time? He wants to publicly execute Fire Fist Ace, the leader of the Whitebeard Pirates 2nd Division. Not only that, there is also a pirate supernova who is also crazy and directly kidnapped the Celestial Dragons. I don't know what the future will be like in today's world. Either it won't come, or once it comes, all kinds of big events will break out. Who says otherwise? Marine should be able to crush all of these? After all, it represents justice. If justice loses in the end, will the world be safe? 
People are worried, scared, panicked, and have all kinds of emotions. Naval Headquarters Marine Ford. There are elite Marines transferred from various branches and branches in the past few days. At this time, a Marine warship docked at the shore, and Doflamingo, wearing a pink cape on the ship, walked down with a swaggering figure. Fa, fu, 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 Doflamingo said with a smile while walking forward. The air in Naval Headquarters just makes people feel uncomfortable. Doflamingo, please pay attention to your words. Naval Headquarters Vice Admiral Doberman on the side reminded him seriously. Doflamingo continued to smile and said, Fa, fu, fu. The Celestial Dragons have been kidnapped, and you Marines haven't rescued them yet. Aren't the five elders and the people in the Holy Land anxious? Or is Marine already dead now? Doflamingo, Doberman said, staring dangerously. Advertisement. Originally, this matter was a shame for Marine. As a result, Doflamingo still picks up which pot it doesn't like. Doflamingo ignored Doberman and walked forward. With Doflamingo's arrival at Naval Headquarters Marine Ford, Gecko Moria, Hawkeye Mihawk, and Bartholomew Kuma, who has completely transformed into a modified human, also arrived at Naval Headquarters one after another. Get ready to take on Whitebeard, the strongest man in the world. At this time, a man, led by Marine, also landed at Naval Headquarters Marine Ford. This man is Blackbeard Daiki who defeated Fire Fist Ace and became the new Seven Warlords of the Sea. Blackbeard Daiki looked at the majestic building in front of him and said with a smile, Ha ha ha, as expected of Naval Headquarters Marine Ford. This building is extraordinary. If I hadn't become Seven Warlords of the Sea, I would never have been able to appreciate the scenery here. The Naval Headquarters Vice Admiral on the side was furious and said, This is a place that represents justice in the world. How can pirates be allowed to come here casually? You Seven Warlords of the Sea are the exception. Ha 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 Blackbeard Daiki laughed and said, Really? At the same time, Blackbeard Daiki's eyes revealed ferocity, and things were being carried out step by step according to his plan. As long as everything goes well, Blackbeard Daiki will immediately become the new overlord of the sea. Advertisement. At that time, Blackbeard Daiki couldn't help laughing again when he thought of this. Meanwhile, the marshal's office. Sengoku tapped his fingers on the table and said with a bad expression, Now, there are a total of five seven warlords of the sea here, right? Yes, Marshal Sengoku. The marine soldier on the side responded respectfully. Sengoku continued, Doflamingo, Gecko Moria, Blackbeard Daiki, Bartholomew Kuma, Hawkeye Mihawk, and now only Boa Hancock. As for that guy Jinbei, but he dares to oppose this public execution? Just go to him hell down and reflect and reflect. By the way, Boa Hancock still doesn't agree to this call. Yes, Marshal Sengoku. The Marine soldier reported, on the Flying Squirrel Vice Admiral's side, except for the Flying Squirrel Vice Admiral himself, everyone else was petrified by Boa Hancock's Devil Fruit ability. According to the time calculation, even if the Flying Squirrel Vice Admiral receives Boa Hancock, it will basically be too late. That woman. Sengoku narrowed his eyes and said, it seems that Boa Hancock, the Seven Warlords of the Sea, doesn't want to continue. Alas, it's been such a troubled time lately. The Celestial Dragons haven't rescued them yet, and now the Seven Warlords of the Sea are having problems one after another, and they are about to face the Whitebeard Pirates. Marshal Sengoku, the Marine soldier on the side asked worriedly. Sengoku waved his hand and said, it's okay, you can go down. Okay, Marshal Sengoku. After hearing the order, the Marine soldier exited Marshal Sengoku's office. Advertisement. Sengoku muttered to himself, what's the reason? That woman Boa Hancock didn't come to attend the call. Don't you know that if you don't participate in this call, you will be expelled from the Seven Warlords of the Sea? No matter what your reasons are, your Seven Warlords of the Sea is over, Boa Hancock. Sengoku finally made a decision and planned to expel Boa Hancock from the Seven Warlords of the Sea team. After all, a Seven Warlords of the Sea who doesn't obey orders at all might as well just replace them. At the same time, far away in the Calm Belt, the Palace of Nine Snake Island, Granny New has tried to persuade Boa Hancock countless times. Hancock, are you really not going to participate in Marine summons? Did you know that once the war between Marine and the Whitebeard Pirates is over, they will send troops to our Nine Snake Island? Now that Marine has enough technology to sail in the Calm Belt, do you know the seriousness of the matter? Boa Hancock. Granny New said now that she was almost speechless. But Boa Hancock remained unmoved throughout the whole process, ignoring Granny New and the Marine Vice Admiral Flying Squirrel waiting on the sea outside Nine Snake Island. What no one knows is that the person Boa Hancock is thinking about at this moment is Luo Chen, the man who dared to kidnap the Celestial Dragons. Directly refreshing Boa Hancock's knowledge, it turns out that someone really dares to challenge God. Advertisement. Chapter 28 Whitebeard Takes Action. Advertisement. Granny New was so angry with Boa Hancock that she almost had high blood pressure. At the same time, on the sea outside Nine Snake Island, Vice Admiral the Flying Squirrel was sitting alone on a military ship, surrounded by petrified marine soldiers. Then the phone bug in the Flying Squirrel's pocket rang, doo -doo -doo. after answering, came the voice of Marshal Sengoku, Moses Moses, this is Sengoku, don't pay attention to Boa Hancock. Flying Squirrel, you should return to Naval Headquarters immediately, there should be enough time. Sorry, Marshal Sengoku, I may not be able to return here. All the marine soldiers except me have been petrified. I alone cannot start the warship to sail in the calm belt. Flying Squirrel reported truthfully. Sengoku said, what? What does that woman Boa Hancock want to do? Openly resist Marine. We can't spare Admiral's manpower now, otherwise we will send Admiral to arrest her immediately. Flying Squirrel, please wait for my notification. Naval Headquarters Marine Ford, after Sengoku hung up the phone. Take out another phone, this is the phone bug used to connect to Seven Warlords of the Sea Boa Hancock. Not only is the Seven Warlords of the Sea Boa Hancock missing, but now there is also the Vice Admiral missing. The upcoming battle is full of high risks. Advertisement. On Nine Snake Island, Boa Hancock was quarreling with Granny New, and her sister Boa Sonia ran over with a phone bug. Boa Sonia quickly said, Sister, this is Marine Marshal Sengoku's phone number. At this time, both Granny New and Boa Hancock stopped arguing. Because Marshal Sengoku of Naval Headquarters called, this matter is no small matter. Boa Hancock picked up the phone and answered. When Sengoku saw that the call was finally connected, he said directly, Boa Hancock, I am ordering you immediately to release the Marine soldiers outside and let the Flying Squirrel return to Naval Headquarters. Otherwise, even if I am under pressure, I will immediately send Admiral to Nine Snake Island. Don't think I'm kidding. At this moment, Sengoku's tone of voice became very strong. 
Marine was under too much pressure now. Marshal Sengoku, can I understand that you are threatening the Aijia and me? Boa Hancock's tone also became very unpleasant. Sengoku ignored Boa Hancock and continued, I can let go of your disobedience to the summons of the seven warlords of the sea, but you must go and release the marine soldiers outside immediately. Okay, keeping those men on the outskirts of Nine Snake Island has already made the AI family very disgusted. Boa Hancock agreed to Sengoku's proposal. In fact, regardless of Sengoku's suggestion or not, Boa Hancock would not let a marine warship stay outside Kuja Island. That would be very bad for Nine Snake Island. After both parties hang up the phone. Advertisement. Granny Nu said, Sengoku's tone just now was a bit strong, but he is tolerant enough for what you did Hancock. It's probably because Marine is about to face a battle with the Whitebeard Pirates, so he has to make concessions. However, this crisis may only be over temporarily, whether Marine will settle the score afterwards remains to be seen. Come if Marine comes, if you dare to come, destroy them. Boa Hancock turned and walked towards the door and responded confidently. On the military ship outside Kyuji Island, Flying Squirrel saw the Kyuji Pirates ship sailing over, and his eyes became wary. After getting close, Boa Hancock used the Devil Fruit ability, release. With the activation of the Sweet Fruit ability, the petrification of the Marine soldiers on the military ship was lifted. The Flying Squirrel breathed a sigh of relief when he saw his men restored to their original state. The Marine soldiers who had just recovered continued to look at Boa Hancock lustfully. When the Flying Squirrel saw this scene, he was instantly furious. It was like this before, before he was petrified by the Devil Fruit ability of that woman Boa Hancock. The Flying Squirrel said loudly, How long will you guys be embarrassed? Take action and return to Naval Headquarters. Yes, Vice Admiral Flying Squirrel. The Marine soldiers reacted immediately after being scolded and responded in unison. As the Marine warship went away, Boa Hancock also ordered the female warriors of Nine Snake Island to sail the ship back. Advertisement. On the way back to the Nine Snakes pirate's ship, Boa Hancock kept looking at the bounty poster about Luo Chen in his hand. Naval Headquarters Marine Ford. A Marine soldier rushed to Marshal Sengoku's office in panic and reported, Marshal Sengoku, the 20 warships monitoring the Whitebeard pirates have all lost contact together. Now we have completely no control over the dynamics of the Whitebeard pirates. What? Sengoku stood up immediately and said, Whitebeard, have you finally started to take action? Immediately, use all methods now, as long as we can detect the next move of the Whitebeard pirates, do you understand? Yes, Marshal Sengoku. The Marine soldier responded respectfully and then exited the Marshal's office. Now there are basically Marine soldiers coming in and out of the Marshal's office, reporting work constantly. It can be said that at this time, Sengoku is completely busy. Relatively speaking, Marine Admiral is much more relaxed, as long as it is prepared to deal with the next battle. Sengoku looked at the sea outside Marineford and said fiercely, Whitebeard, as long as you dare to come to naval headquarters, no matter what the price, I will let you come back. Marine, I only need to tell the world one answer, and that is Marine's final victory. Advertisement. Chapter 29 Luo Chen with no upper limit. Advertisement. There was only one day left before the public execution began. North blew in the four seas. A drunk man looked at the sky while drinking and said, I don't know if this world will still be there after tomorrow. Drink as much as you can now, but you may never be able to drink again in the future. West blew. In a tavern, a group of people were drinking, and someone commented, even Whitebeard, he must be very old now, right? After all, I haven't heard anything about Whitebeard for several years. Will he really go to naval headquarters Marine Ford? That is the Marine headquarters, so he might not dare to go. As soon as this was said, someone immediately refuted it. Are you kidding me? Said a big man with one leg. Just a year ago, I had the honor to meet Whitebeard himself. At that time, I just looked at him from a distance and was so frightened that I thought he was about to die. That feeling of terror is still fresh in my memory. So you think, will Whitebeard appear? That man is a real monster. South Blue. A nun stood on the coast and prayed to the sky, saying, I hope Marine can win and protect the justice of the world. Defeat the Whitebeard pirates and restore peace to all parts of the world. East Blue. In a small village, a woman was washing clothes and said, No matter how powerful the pirates are, it is impossible to break into the naval headquarters. Advertisement. It's wrong to say that. Then an old man smoking not far away said, About 22 years ago, a golden lion pirate broke into naval headquarters Marine Ford. Also destroyed most of naval headquarters Marine Ford. It is estimated that this time it will be more serious than the last time, that's why Marine is treating it so seriously. After all, the opponent is not an ordinary pirate, but the great pirate Whitebeard who has been active since before the Great Pirate Era. Meanwhile, Sabayati Archipelago, 13 GR in the ripoff tavern, Straw Hat Luffy was so anxious that he almost jumped up. He ran to Luo Chen and asked, Luo Chen, when are we leaving? I can't wait. If we don't leave quickly, Ace might be in danger. Luffy, don't worry, Luo Chen should have his own considerations. Robin reminded Luffy not to worry. Frankie raised his hands in the air, banged his arms together and said, Super, Luffy, your brother is going to be fine. Luo Chen slowly stood up and said with a smile, It's almost done, we can set off. Then he looked at Rayleigh and asked, Rayleigh, are you going to act with them, or... No, we will split into two groups. I will have other plans when the time comes. I will go directly to naval headquarters. Rayleigh stated his own plan. Yusuf said, as powerful as you are, Uncle Rayleigh, basically no one can threaten you wherever you go. Yes, yes. Chopper also responded. Advertisement. Shucky smoked a cigarette and said, you guys are really making fun of an old man like Rayleigh. Haha. <laughs> Rayleigh laughed, my old bones can barely move. Luo Chen took the lead and walked out, and the Straw Hat Pirates followed immediately. They had been waiting for this moment for a long time. Sanji walked beside Zoro and asked, you haven't spoken in the past few days. What's wrong? After fighting alone with Luo Chen, you became depressed. You're a bad cook, do you want to die? The reason why Zoro hasn't spoken much in the past few days, mainly because I'm recalling the feeling after fighting Luo Chen, the gap with Luo Chen is indeed huge, but it was not without gain. It allowed Zoro to feel in advance what the power of swordsmanship at the level of a great swordsman should be. The group boarded the Thousand Sunny. With the blessing of Luo Chen Lion Fruit's ability, Thousand Sunny slowly lifted into the air and headed towards Impel Down. 13 GR Coast. 
Shucky looked at Rayleigh on the side and said, Rayleigh, if you don't go with us, aren't you afraid that Brother Luffy and the others are in danger? After all, this place is impelled down, and it must be heavily guarded. Don't worry, with that kid Luo Chen, any danger will be eliminated. And it is probably one of his goals to impel down. Rayleigh said, looking at Thousand Sunny who was getting further and further away. Shucky looked back and looked at Thousand Sunny who was getting farther and farther away, and said, that little brother Luo Chen is really not simple. It is estimated that he will be the fastest riser after this major incident, and he may also become the leader of a new era. Advertisement. Enter Thousand Sunny. Luffy shouted excitedly, Ace, wait, I will save you right now. Luffy, we are about to face real danger. Why are you so excited now? Nami looked at Luffy speechlessly. It hasn't even started yet. Do you really think you can save your brother? The place they are going to now is the Dragon's Pond and the Tiger's Den. How could it be simpler? It's not simple at all. Although Usopp and Chopper are scared, no matter what decision Luffy makes, they will follow it to the end. Luo Chen stood on the bow of Thousand Sunny, looking calmly at the blue sky. The system prompts you to participate in the summit war to start a new round of gift packs. Luo Chen estimates that the rewards of the gift pack should be similar to those previously opened. Zoro walked up to Luo Chen and said, Luo Chen, sooner or later I will defeat you and become the world's greatest swordsman with my hawk. Don't mind me, I'm not a pure swordsman. Luo Chen responded casually, but in Zoro's opinion, it's not true. Even if he has such a powerful swordsmanship, even if he is not a pure swordsman, his swordsmanship is not fake, right? Then he is also one of the objects that Zoro wants to surpass. Luo Chen smiled and said nothing. Anyone who wants to challenge him in the future will never have a chance to win, because Luo Chen has no upper limit. Advertisement. Chapter 30 Only 4 Shishibukai left to join the battle. Luo Chen invades Impel Down. Advertisement. Naval Headquarters Marine Ford. A Marine soldier ran to the Marshal's office in a panic. The door of the Marshal's office happened to be open. It's not good, Marshal Sengoku. The Marine soldier reported, Seven Warlords of the Sea Blackbeard Daiki. Now his whereabouts are unknown, and at the same time, we have one less military ship docked on the shore. What? Blackbeard Daiki. When Sengoku heard this, his whole face darkened instantly. Sengoku has long known that Blackbeard Daiki had bad intentions when he became Seven Warlords of the Sea, but he also knew that among those who became Seven Warlords of the Sea, which one would be sincere? Therefore, Sengoku chose to turn a blind eye. Unexpectedly, at this juncture when he was about to start a war with the Whitebeard Pirates, he would pull off such a trick. All of a sudden, the Seven Warlords of the Sea's combat power was reduced by one. There were originally seven Seven Warlords of the Sea. Now there are only four Seven Warlords of the Sea left participating in the war. It can be said that nearly half is missing. This operation alone has already shown how serious the shortcomings of Seven Warlords of the Sea are. Sengoku said with a gloomy face, Blackbeard Daiki, Boa Hancock, you people who have ulterior motives at this critical moment, I will come back to settle matters with you later. Now give the order, all the troops will shrink back and prepare to fight. Yes, Marshal Sengoku. After hearing the order, the Marine soldier immediately ran out of the Marshal's office. Time keeps passing by bit by bit. Luo Chen controlled Thousand Sunny of the Straw Hat Pirates to a position a hundred meters above Impel Down. Advertisement. Frankie said in shock, is that the Impel Down down there? What a magnificent building. Yes, I heard that there are countless powerful criminals imprisoned here. Usopp said fearfully. Luffy punched his fists and said, Yoshi, everyone, let's get ready to board the Impel Down. Everyone in the Straw Hat Pirates smiled, except Luo Chen who looked at the Impel Down below. Luo Chen's body slowly floated up and flew towards Impel Down. Luffy quickly shouted, Luo Chen, wait for us, how are we going to get down? It seems we have to find a way to get down by ourselves. Sanji responded, lighting a cigarette. Robin said, Luo Chen probably has his own purpose in bringing us to Impel Down. It is very likely that he did so by the way. Several military ships docked below Impel Down also discovered that someone wanted to invade Impel Down. The siren sounded immediately. After all, Impel Down being invaded is a very serious matter. When Luo Chen landed at the gate of Impel Down, Conqueror's Haki spread out instantly, knocking out all the Marine soldiers on several military ships. There are only a few school-level Marines left who can barely support it. Marines below the school level simply cannot withstand the impact of Conqueror's Haki. As for the remaining school-level Marines, Luo Chen simply ignored them. Pull out the big sharp knife withered wood and wave it. Slash wave. A huge flying slash hit Impel Down's door. Advertisement. Boom. In a burst of explosions, Impel Down's door was completely destroyed. Luo Chen walked in with such a swagger. After Luo Chen entered, the Lion Fruit ability exerted on Thousand Sunny of the Straw Hat Pirates was also released. The moment Lion Fruit's ability was released, Thousand Sunny fell heavily from a hundred meters away. Otherwise, Thousand Sunny, which was made using Base Hu Adam, would probably be damaged by such a large impact. Brook said, Luo Chen, you have done us a big favor. All the surrounding marine soldiers have been cleared. But there are still a few guys left. Zoro said, looking around at the marine warships. Usopp suggested, let me stay. I will protect Thousand Sunny and deal with the marines who have not yet been dealt with. At this time, Luffy said directly, then Usopp, Nami, Robin, Chopper, and Frankie, you five will stay. Me and Zoro, Sanji, and Brooke are going to rescue my brother. Thousand Sunny's safety is too important to them, and it is also their retreat. Someone must be left to protect it. Impel down the fourth floor control room. Summer Chief Magellan stared at the screen and said, The intruder, Luo Chen, is with the Straw Hat Pirates? You are really overestimating your capabilities. However, fortunately, Marshal Sengoku sent people to transfer Fire Fist Ace to naval headquarters two days ago. Otherwise, there may be a certain risk of being invaded now. Advertisement. When Luo Chen and the Straw Hat Pirates first invaded Impel Down, they were already under surveillance. After all, as the world's largest prison, Impel Down, it is basically close to 100% all-round surveillance. Deputy Summer Chief Han Yabao stood up and said, Chief Summer, let me, the Deputy Summer Chief, suppress the intruders. Han Yabao, the Deputy Summer Director, stepped forward specifically at this time for his own small purpose. That is to suppress these invaders, and then the credit will be added to them. Magellan can be squeezed out of the position of Summer Captain, and Han Yabao can be the Summer Captain of Impel Down. 
Just thinking of this made Hanyabal excited. But Magellan said, No, Hanyabal, you will be on duty to avoid mistakes. It will be faster for me to suppress the intruders. It's not that Magellan doesn't want Hanyabal to suppress the invaders, but that Luo Chen is not a simple character. I was able to use Conqueror's Haki to clear the field as soon as I invaded Impel Down. Are there any pirates who can use Conqueror's Haki? Will it be a simple pirate? Therefore, Magellan didn't let Hanyabal suppress him because he didn't want Hanyabal to die in vain for no reason. But what Magellan didn't know was that Hanyabal was already very angry deep down at this moment. You are already the summer chief, and you still want to take the credit from him as the deputy summer chief? Magellan ignored Hanyabal and got into the elevator to suppress the intruders. Advertisement. Chapter 31 Luo Chen's plan goes wrong. Advertisement. Luo Chen kept his feet off the ground the whole time, flying at a low altitude, and arrived at the first floor of the basement in a short time. On the first floor of the basement, the crimes of prisoners imprisoned on this level of crimson hell are less serious. None of the imprisoned prisoners can beat a blue gorilla. There is a large area like a forest outside the cell. The trees are sword trees with leaves as sharp as blades. The grass is needle grass that can pierce the human body like needles. Prisoners will be chased by poisonous spiders and jailers and run back and forth. In the end, they will be cut with blood by these leaves and grass, and they will suffer endless pain. As Luo Chen continued to move forward, a big man appeared in front of him. Luo Chen stared blankly and said, Magellan, the reaction was really fast. They came out right after the invasion, but it's still impelled down after all. When Magellan saw Luo Chen's figure, he immediately roared loudly, Intruder Luo Chen, let's capture him without mercy, impel down here will be your final destination. Poisonous Dragon After Magellan finished speaking, a large amount of blue venom emerged from his body, forming a poisonous dragon and flying towards Luo Chen. What a troublesome devil fruit ability. Faced with Magellan's poison fruit ability, Luo Chen would not choose to take it hard. After all, being hit by venom will be quite troublesome. Luo Chen stretched out his hand and touched the wall, Lion Majesty. Earth Coiling The Lion Fruit ability was activated, and the entire underground level including Impel Down shook slightly. Five huge lion heads formed around Luo Chen and surrounded Magellan. Magellan looked at the five huge lion heads in front of him and said in surprise, could it be the devil fruit ability of the golden lion? Impel Down has records of criminals who have been imprisoned in Impel Down, so Magellan recognized Luo Chen's devil fruit ability at a glance as golden lion's devil fruit ability. Advertisement. Boom, boom, boom. As the battle between Luo Chen and Magellan continued to intensify, the prisoners in Crimson Hell on the entire underground level suffered. At this time, Magellan also realized that Luo Chen was very powerful, so powerful that even Magellan felt that he might not be able to defeat Luo Chen in the end. The main thing is that Luo Chen seems to know the characteristics of his poison fruit ability. He avoided his poison fruit ability throughout the whole process and used long-range attacks. This makes Magellan very passive. Magellan's movement speed is much slower than Luo Chen. In addition, Luo Chen's observation Haki is far stronger than Magellan, which means that the two sides seem to be evenly matched. The actual situation is that Magellan is constantly being kited by Luo Chen. During the fierce battle between Luo Chen and Magellan, from the Straw Hat Pirate's side, Luffy, Zoro, Sanji, and Brooke also ran over. Sanji smoked a cigarette and said, that's Luo Chen, is he fighting with someone else? Those who can fight Luo Chen are very strong. Zoro had fought with Luo Chen before, so he knew how powerful Luo Chen's swordsmanship was. Since he can fight Luo Chen, it means that that person is also very strong. If he is not strong, he will not be able to fight Luo Chen at all. Advertisement. Luffy said loudly, hey, Luo Chen, we will go over to help you right away. In Luffy's opinion, since Luo Chen has helped them, now that Luo Chen is in trouble, he should also go and help. Magellan frowned and said, is it the Straw Hat Pirates this time? Today's incident is a major shame for the history of Impel Down. We have been invaded by pirates continuously, and I, Magellan, have to stop all of you here at the stake. Magellan used more poison dragons and split two to catch up with the four Straw Hat Pirates. Facing Magellan's attack, Luffy immediately used the second gear, Zoro assumed the three sword style, Sanji used the devil's wind kick, and Brooke pulled out the staff sword. Just when the two sides attacks were about to collide, a huge lion's head blocked the way. Boom, what? Luffy, Zoro, Sanji, and Brooke were all stunned, wondering what Luo Chen was going to do. Luo Chen's body floated in midair and said, you guys, keep moving forward. If you face Magellan, you will definitely die. The power of the poison fruit is not something you can handle yet. Poison. Brooke responded. So Luffy, Zoro, Sanji, and Brooke looked at each other. Finally decided to move on and leave this place to Luo Chen. Luffy said, then leave it to you, Luo Chen, let's go. Luffy, Zoro, Sanji, and Brooke continued their journey to the Impel Down Underground. Advertisement. Magellan said in a deep tone, Luo Chen, do you think letting a few of them down can cause damage to Impel Down? When I take you down, I'll go down and suppress a few of them. It's the same thing. Haha. <laughs> Luo Chen raised the corner of his mouth and sneered, and said, Magellan, where did you get the confidence to defeat me? The four straw hats Luffy, Zoro, Sanji, and Brooke set out for the second underground floor and ran with all their strength. B2F, Wild Beast Hell. This floor houses various ferocious beasts, including cockatrices, man-faced lions, poisonous scorpions, etc. The boss is the Sphinx. The prisoners on this floor know that they will become wild beasts sooner or later. Food, I don't even have the strength to be afraid. Brooke asked, Luffy, does it matter if we leave Luo Chen like this? It doesn't matter, Luo Chen is very strong. Luffy responded. Sanji also nodded and said, our situation is also very dangerous. We don't know how many strong people we will encounter if we go down. This is interesting. Zoro said excitedly. Underground level Crimson Hell, the battlefield of Luo Chen and Magellan. Luo Chen calculated in his mind that if he continued to waste time with Magellan, his plans might be delayed. Then we must defeat Magellan as quickly as possible. It can be said that this incident was not within Luo Chen's plan. The plan really couldn't keep up with the changes? Advertisement. Chapter 32 The Chaotic Interior of Impel Down. Advertisement. Luo Chen and Magellan have been fighting continuously for nearly an hour. Just when Magellan's body turned into red venom and was about to give Luo Chen a fatal blow, when Magellan saw that the attack was about to fall on Luo Chen, he said excitedly, I win, haha. Luo Chen waited for this opportunity and sneered, Magellan, you have been fooled. What? 
Magellan couldn't understand what Luo Chen meant. Boom boom boom. The entire underground level of Crimson Hell was shaking violently. Magellan knew he had fallen into a trap when he saw the ground rolling beneath his feet. Everything around is surrounding Magellan. Layer after layer of cages surrounded Magellan, tightly controlling Magellan. Trouble. Magellan realized that his body was constantly trapped by these stone walls. Once trapped, he would definitely not be able to escape within a short time. When the underground Crimson Hell shock ends, a brand new pyramid stands, and Magellan is trapped inside it. Luo Chen breathed a sigh of relief. Finally the trouble of Magellan was temporarily trapped, and continuing to waste time with Magellan would just be a waste of time. It also consumes a lot of physical strength. Luo Chen felt the state of his body and said in a low voice. Luo Chen continued to fly to the second underground floor. Advertisement. As Luo Chen moved forward, he found that the prisoners' cages had been opened. Luo Chen smiled and said, It's interesting, release all the prisoners and create chaos, right? At the same time, impel down the perimeter. A military ship sailed in. Thousand Sunny got on. Frankie said warily, Oh no, a military ship is coming. Military ship? Is it marine support? Usopp said fearfully. Chopper said in horror, What should we do? It seems that even the few of us can't defeat marine. No matter what, get ready for battle. Robin responded in a serious tone. Nami looked at the time and said, We have to hold on until Luffy and the others come back. On the military ship, Blackbeard Daiki took the lead and walked down in a swaggering manner. Followed by Lafitte, Burgess, Fan Oka, and Poison Q. Be ha ha ha. Captain, those over there seem to be the Straw Hat Pirates. Burgess raised his hands and laughed. Fan Oka, carrying the sniper rifle, tapped his shoulder and said, It turns out that we are not the only ones who have the idea to invade Impel Down. How about killing those people on the Straw Hat Pirates ship now? Poison Q responded evilly as he licked his tongue. Lafitte turned the sword and the gentleman said, Captain, if necessary, let me handle it. No, it's not necessary. Blackbeard Daiki responded by directly rejecting their proposal. Advertisement. When the Blackbeard Pirates and others entered the Crimson Hell on the underground level. See the scene here. Blackbeard Daiki smiled and said, Ha ha ha. Looking at the scene here, it seems that the previous battle was very fierce, right? Kids. Captain, to be able to cause such a large-scale battle, is it possible that the captain of the Straw Hat Pirates, Straw Hat Luffy, is very strong? Luffy turned his sword and said seriously. Blackbeard Daiki's face was very gloomy. Before he defeated Fire Fist Ace, his original target was Straw Hat Luffy. If Straw Hat Luffy was really that powerful, once there is a loud battle, winning or losing will be a question mark. Blackbeard Daiki put away his gloomy face and said directly, Young man, don't pay attention and continue to set off. Ha 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 Burgess raised his hands and laughed loudly, It would be interesting to meet that Straw Hat Captain. Burgess, the captain hasn't spoken yet. Poison Q teased Burgess. Fan Oka carried the sniper, tapped his shoulder and said, We have not encountered any enemies along the way. It seems that many of the guards in Impel Down have been cleared. In the original work, the Blackbeard pirates were intercepted by Magellan as they advanced, and were rescued after obtaining the Shirio Antidote of Rain. Now Magellan was trapped by Luo Chen in advance, so the Blackbeard pirates did not encounter Magellan, nor did they meet Shirio of Rain. Impel Down the sixth underground floor eternal hell. Straw Hat Luffy, Zoro, Sanji, Brook, Ivankov, Imazuna and others have already arrived here, but after searching around, they couldn't find their brother Fire Fist Ace. Luffy looked around anxiously and shouted, Damn it, Ace, where are you? Advertisement. Brother Ace, we were transferred two days ago. At this time, a voice came from a cell. Who is it? Ivankov looked around to find where the speaker was. When Ivankov looked around, he saw one of the cells and said in surprise, Are you? Seven warlords of the sea Jinbei. It's me, let me out, I can go with you to rescue brother Ace. Jinbei responded in the cell. A voice also came from another cell, in that case, then add me, I can help you fight out together, he he he. Luffy looked at the voice and said in shock, are you Crocodile? So you were imprisoned here. Zoro, Sanji, looked warily at Crocodile, a former enemy after all. After Luffy was shocked, he said, okay, I agree, Luffy. Sanji looked at Luffy worriedly. Luffy shook his head and said it was okay. Subsequently, the cells where Jinbei and Crocodile were held were opened. What a breath of fresh air, Crocodile said, twisting Jingu's arm. Hi Xiaojinbei said, we have to hurry up, otherwise the process of arriving at Naval Headquarters Marine Ford will be difficult and dangerous. Luffy punched his fists and said, Yoshi, it's decided, let's set off for Naval Headquarters Marine Ford. Zoro, Sanji, Brook, Ivankov, Imazuna, Jinbei, Crocodile, and others all stood beside Straw Hat Luffy. Advertisement. Chapter 33 Haki sweeps across eternal hell. Advertisement. When Luo Chen came all the way to the fifth underground floor, he saw Straw Hat Luffy and others going back and forth. Straw Hat Luffy said loudly, Luo Chen, Ace is not on the sixth underground floor. We have to go to Naval Headquarters Marine Ford now. You guys go first, I have something else to do. Luo Chen refused to go with Straw Hat Luffy and continued to move down. That guy. Crocodile looked at Luo Chen's figure and his words were full of doubts. Jinbei also looked at the departing figure and said, That man must be Luo Chen. I heard that there has been a lot of news recently, and even the Celestial Dragons have been kidnapped. Kidnapping Celestial Dragons. These words instantly startled Crocodile, Ivankov, and Imazuna. How brave this is. Even the Celestial Dragons dare to kidnap? This can no longer be described as bold. He is simply the strongest king among terrorists. At this time, Luffy, Zoro, Sanji, and Brook also explained what happened to Luo Chen. At the same time, Luo Chen also came to Eternal Hell, the sixth underground floor. Is someone coming in again? Who is it this time? Let me out quickly, Laozi has had enough of this place for a long time. There is still me, there is still me, let me out, and I will give you the treasure. Let me go, I can help you kill him. As soon as Luo Chen entered, the six underground floors of Eternal Hell were filled with all kinds of sounds. Advertisement. Luo Chen ignored these people's screams. Idiots, calm down. Luo Chen roared in a deep voice. At the same time, Conqueror's Haki swept across the entire six underground levels of Eternal Hell, and huge Haki filled every cell. 
Conqueror's Haki. The outbreak of Luochen Conqueror's Haki instantly shocked many people, but some people were not affected by Conqueror's Haki. These people are all truly top-notch strong men, and none of the pirates who can be imprisoned in the sixth level of eternal hell are ordinary people. The lowest is a pirate with a bounty of over 100 million. Luochen watched as these people finally calmed down a little and began to walk forward, observing each cell in detail as they passed. When passing one of the cells, Luo Chen stopped, walked up to it, and said with a smile, Impel Down's Warden, Shiryu of the Rain. It's really strange that someone can recognize me. Yuji Shiryu slowly raised his head and looked at Luo Chen and asked. Luo Chen extended the invitation and said, How about it? Do you want to go to see with me and see the vast world outside? If you continue to stay here, you are just wasting your time. A smile appeared on Shiryu's lips and she responded, It seems you are well prepared. Please give me more advice in the future, Captain. The reason why Shiryu of Rain agreed to the invitation of the man in front of him, who could accurately control Conqueror's Haki, who would be the weak one. Another point is that Shiryu of Rain has had enough of staying here in Eternal Hell. Now it happened that a powerful person invited him, and Shiryu of Rain was also going out, so they hit it off immediately. Advertisement. Luo Chen drew out his sharp sword and struck dead wood with a flying slash, instantly cutting off the sea stone iron pillars of the cell. There was a clang. The flying slash continued unabated, cutting off the sea stone holding the rainy Shiryu. As the sea stone handcuffs fell off, Shiryu of the rain was completely free. After regaining his freedom, Shiryu aim slowly stood up and said with a smile, Captain, the swordsmanship you used just now has reached the level of a great swordsman, right? Yeah, Luo Chen responded lightly. To this, Shiryu of Rain is very satisfied, which means that the captain he follows has amazing potential, and at such a young age, it seems that he will have great achievements in the future. And the flying slash hit by Luo Chen just now once again shocked the pirates imprisoned in eternal hell. Those who possess conqueror's haki and the swordsmanship of the great swordsman are the top level strong men on the sea. Shiryu of Rain followed Luo Chen and continued walking forward. Shiryu Aim didn't say anything and just followed quietly. After all, Shiryu Aim didn't know much about this new captain, so choosing silence was the most correct choice. Luo Chen passed one cell after another, filled with various voices roaring. When Luo Chen came all the way to the deepest cell, Shiryu of the Rain who was following behind also changed his expression. Who is the person imprisoned here? He he he. Kid, do you want to invite me to be your crew member? Let me tell you, Lao Zi. Lao Zi doesn't like a kid like you at all. The voice of the prisoner came from the cell. Advertisement. Luo Chen crossed his arms and said leisurely, Douglas. Bullet, former member of Roger Pirates. After becoming the strongest in the world, you were eventually imprisoned by Marine and put into Impel Down. However, your current situation means that you are a loser. As a loser, where do you get the confidence to be arrogant? What did you say? Kid. Bullet was about to burst out of the cell. He had not been so angry for a long time. The sea stone chain was dragged so that the whole cell was shaking. Shiryu of Rain on the side felt that his captain was really tough. The words are astonishing. But it suits his taste for aim no Shiryu. Luo Chen invited, become my crew member and I will give you a future where you can fly high. Ha 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 Douglas. Bullet burst out laughing and said, kid, after all, you'd better invite me to be your crew member. But Lao Zi looks down on a brat like you. No one in this world can be my captain. I am the strongest. Stupid confidence. Luo Chen commented with a glance. So I ignored Douglas. Bullet and continued downhill with Shiryu of Rain. When Shiryu of Rain passed Douglas Bullet's cell, his eyes were locked on Douglas Bullet. And Douglas. Bullet also stared at Shiryu of the Rain. The two looked at each other from afar. Advertisement. Chapter 34 Seducing Redfield, the strong man from the old era. Advertisement. At this time, Douglas. Bullet, who was staring at Shiryu of the Rain, said, Although you are a good warden, what Lao Zi didn't expect was that you would choose to follow such a kid. Haha. <laughs> Shiryu of the Rain found a cigar from nowhere and lit it, and said with a smile, I don't need to report to you what I will choose. Bullet. Luo Chen ignored the conversation between Shiryu and Douglas Bullet and continued walking forward. When he came to another cell, he looked at an old man leaning on the ground who was aging to the point of being disfigured. Luo Chen still crossed his arms and said, Mr. Redfield, how do you feel after staying in Impel Down for so many years? Shiryu of the Rain, who was following Luo Chen, was once again shocked by Luo Chen. Who would have thought that his new captain would even recognize a figure like Redfield? Strictly speaking, this Redfield was a pirate from a long time ago. It turns out there are still people who can recognize me, an old man. The wrinkled Redfield opened his eyes and said, Redfield could not remember how long he had not spoken, nor how long he had been imprisoned in the Eternal Hell on the sixth level of Impel Down. Here in Eternal Hell, it is dark every day, and there is no accurate concept of time at all. Redfield then asked, Boy, I know your purpose. Do you want me to join your pirate group? I have never become anyone else's subordinate during my lifetime, so you go. Advertisement. Haha, <laughs> don't rush to refuse, I know what you want, Mr. Redfield. Luo Chen responded with a smile. Now Redfield became interested and asked, Tell me, what do I want? Restore your youth and regain your peak strength. Luo Chen directly said what Redfield cared about most in public. When Redfield heard this, his eyes changed slightly, but this change did not escape Luo Chen's perception. After a few seconds, Redfield asked, Do you have a way to restore my youth and restore my former peak strength? What do you think? Luo Chen did not answer directly, but returned the topic to Redfield. Redfield responded, I owe you a favor, tell me, how do you regain your youth? In fact, Redfield had another thought that he didn't say out loud in his heart, that is, there was a devil fruit with the ability to restore his youth, but he didn't know where it was. Luo Chen got straight to the point and said, a devil fruit. You also know what that devil fruit is capable of, right? Mr. Redfield. And I also know where the devil fruit's ability is. That's it. It seems you are well prepared, little guy. Redfield finally said with a rare smile. Luo Chen pulled out his sharp knife, broke open the cell, and released Redfield. Whether you can leave here depends on your own ability. Mr. Redfield, if you successfully leave, come to me in one month and tell me the answer you want. Luo Chen said. Advertisement. No one knows the purpose of Luo Chen's doing this. Only Luo Chen knows it. Redfield moved his old body, feeling the current strength and said, My strength is really weak. Luo Chen said to Yuji Shiryo, We are leaving him hell down. 
Captain, let me retrieve my weapon. Shiryu said respectfully. Let me out too. I will become your strongest subordinate. And me, I've been here for a long time. When Luo Chen and Shiryu of Rain left Eternal Hell and passed the cell, various voices screamed again. Less than five minutes after Luo Chen and Yuji Shiryu left, another group of people walked into Eternal Hell. This group of people is the Blackbeard Pirates. Because of Luo Chen's intervention, everything that happened in Impel Down changed differently from the original work. The Blackbeard Pirates came all the way down without encountering Magellan, Shiryu of the Rain, or Straw Hat Luffy. Ha ha ha. Invading the sixth floor of Impel Down Eternal Hell, I didn't expect it to be so easy. It was a smooth journey. Blackbeard Daiki laughed excitedly. This was infinitely smoother than what he had originally planned. Advertisement. Luffy turned the sword and said with a pale face and respect, it means that everything is looking after the captain. Someone has come in again. What happened today? Is this the third wave of people? At this time, someone in the cell expressed doubts. And this sentence was also heard by the Blackbeard pirates and others. Ha 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 Blackbeard Daiki said with an evil smile, so that's it? We are the third wave of people? No wonder we got here so smoothly. However, Lao Z's plan will not change, let's get started. Lafitte, Burgess, Van Oka, and Poison Q all held keys and walked towards the cells from four directions. Blackbeard Daiki opened his hands and laughed loudly, ha ha ha. Listen to me, those who want to be my crew, start fighting? Only the winner is worthy of being my crew. Blackbeard Daiki's words made the originally restless criminals of eternal hell become even more riotous. Who doesn't want to go out? They have long been exposed to the darkness here. However, some people reacted slower and were killed in the next second. Blackbeard Daiki heard the pleasant killing sound and enjoyed this feeling very much. The fighting became more and more intense, and the number of people was decreasing at a speed visible to the naked eye. At the same time, Impel went down one level, and Straw Hat Luffy and others finally arrived at the exit. Advertisement. Chapter 35 Domino begs for mercy and joins. Advertisement. Luo Chen and Shiryu of Rain came to Impel Down storage room. All the jailers along the way were killed by Shiryu of the Rain. Even if Shiryu of the Rain had no weapons and relied solely on his fists, the jailers would be like nothing more than trash. Domino, who had just come back to recover from his injuries, saw the two people walking over. Shocked, he said, are you the warden of Rain Shiryu? It turns out to be Domino, didn't you get promoted to warden while I was in prison? Shiryu of the Rain said with a sneer while smoking a cigar. Domino was very anxious at this moment and didn't know what Magellan was doing. The enemies began to invade on a large scale, but they disappeared. And she was also injured by Straw Hat Luffy and others, and now she met the Warden Shiryu of the Rain and the pirate Luo Chen. The smart Domino certainly knew what Warden Shiryu of the Rain came to the storage room to do, so he said, Warden of the Shiryu of the Rain, you came here to retrieve the weapons, right? Haha, ha, that's right, my weapon is inside. Shiryu of the Rain looked at Domino with a very ferocious look. Yes, Domino responded truthfully. If you resist, you are no match. You might get killed if you don't resist, so it's better to just go with the flow. Shiryu of the Rain turned his head and reported respectfully to Luo Chen, Captain, I'm going to get my weapon back. Advertisement. Yeah, Luo Chen nodded and responded. This Rain Shiryu seems to know how to give the Captain face. Only then did Domino look squarely at the Luo Chen in front of him. It was certainly not easy for the man who could make the Warden of Rain Shiryu bow his head and recognize him as the Captain. When Shiryu of the Rain walked out with his own weapon, Thunderstorm, he smiled and said, Haha, Domino, as the first person to get my weapon, come and be his sacrifice. After Domino heard what Shiryu said, he was instantly frightened. He thought he had escaped, but was he still going to be killed in the end? Domino really felt desperate at this moment. Domino yelled with all his strength, Wait, don't kill me, Captain Luo Chen, I will listen to you in anything. Shiryu, wait. Luo Chen said calmly. As soon as Luo Chen said these words, Shiryu of Rain quickly stopped what he was doing and said, I understand. Domino gasped for air. If she had been a little slower, she would have been killed by now, right? However, Domino immediately said, Captain Luo Chen, I want to join your pirate group and become your subordinate. Oh, really? Okay, I agree. Luo Chen looked at Domino with a half smile and agreed. Compared with death, Domino has not yet realized that he is willing to sacrifice himself for any justice. Luo Chen said, let's go, a lot of time has been wasted. When Luo Chen, Shiryu of the Rain, and Domino came to the entrance of Impel Down, they saw Luffy the Straw Hat and more than 200 people here. Luffy saw Luo Chen back and said excitedly, Luo Chen, you are finally back, we have been waiting for you for a while. Advertisement. Luo Chen didn't speak, but raised his eyes and looked at Straw Hat Luffy. As expected, he had a strange charm. However, this will not have any impact on Luo Chen. Crocodile said unhappily, that bastard Straw Hat's proposal really made Lao Z wait for a long time. Jinbei looked at Aim No Shiryu dozens of meters away and whispered, Impel down to guard Ching Aim No Shiryu. And Shiryu of Rain also noticed Hai Xia Jinbei's gaze. There is one person who is very depressed throughout the whole process, that is Buggy the Clown, and there is a group of new boys behind him. Soon, everyone boarded Thousand Sunny and a marine warship, and flew towards naval headquarters Marine Ford under the control of Luo Chen Lion Fruit's ability. And when Luo Chen controlled the two ships to fly away from Impel down, the huge cage that imprisoned Magellan was also unlocked by Luo Chen. The entire cage with a diameter of more than a hundred meters, even if Magellan continues to destroy it internally and is constantly being repaired under the control of Luo Chen's Lion Fruit ability, unless Magellan can break it open in one go, the cycle will continue indefinitely. Of course, this kind of remote control is also very expensive for Luo Chen, so after leaving Impel Down, the Lion Fruit ability was released. Impel Down underground level Crimson Hell, Magellan's roar spread throughout Impel Down, Luo Chen, I want you to die a good death. Magellan, who broke out of the prison, was so angry that he was about to explode. That guy Luo Chen's Devil Fruit ability was so bad. Back then, Golden Lion didn't use the Devil Fruit ability as rogue as Luo Chen. Advertisement. However, one group of people suffered a disaster, it was the Blackbeard Pirates who came up from the sixth level of Eternal Hell. Magellan, who was furious, happened to see the Blackbeard Pirates and his group. Magellan said angrily, are they intruders again? Taking away prisoners? Stay. Poison Dragon. The terrifying red venom enveloped all members of the Blackbeard Pirates. Captain, be careful of Magellan's fruit ability. Avalo Pizarro, the new crew member, quickly warned. They, the prisoners imprisoned in the sixth level of Eternal Hell, know how ferocious Magellan's devil fruit ability is. Basically, you will die if you are touched by the venom. What? 
Blackbeard Daiki hadn't fully reacted yet. Magellan's red poisonous dragon is about to trap all members of the Blackbeard pirates. Avaro Pizarro quickly used his island fruit ability. Integrate everything around you into your body to resist the attack of Magellan. Catlin Depen and Wine Barrel Choke both quickly entered combat mode. Catlin Depen said, Captain, that is Impel Down Magellan, the person with poisonous fruit ability. Ha 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 Blackbeard Daiki said with an evil smile, it turns out he is the leader of Impel Down. It seems that before leaving Impel Down, you have to go through a battle first. Are you ready? Guys. Advertisement. Chapter 36 Summit War Begins. Advertisement. Naval Headquarters Marine Ford. Marine soldiers continued to gather towards the square. In an admiral office, Admiral Aokiji was lying on the floor sleeping, when a marine soldier ran in and reported, Aokiji Admiral, it's time to assemble. Alala Aokiji opened his eyes and scratched his hair and said, is the time up? I know. Aokiji stood up, put on his cloak and walked out. On the other side, Kizaru is in his office, trimming his nails. There was absolutely no sense of tension before the war started. A marine soldier ran in and reported, Kizaru Admiral, the time to assemble has come. Kizaru slowly put down his nail clippers and said slyly, I don't even have a lunch break. This shift is so tiring. The marine soldier on the side reminded him worriedly, Kizaru Admiral, please stop joking, the war with the Whitebeard Pirates is about to begin. I'll have to talk to Marshal Sengoku later and ask for a few more days off. Kizaru put on his cloak, put his hands in his pockets and walked out with a dead-eyed look. At the same time, in the Marshal's office, Admiral Akaino was exchanging strategic countermeasures with Sengoku. Akaino looked at the time, raised his hand and pressed the brim of his hat and said, the time is up, I'm going out first. After Akaino finished speaking, he turned and walked out of Sengoku's office. After Sengoku watched Akaino leave, he also stood up and tidied up briefly. The enemy he was going to face next could not tolerate any sloppiness. Advertisement. Around the world, on the Sabayati Archipelago, three large screens opened to reveal scenes from Naval Headquarters Marine Ford Square. Among the people watching, Supernova, except Luo Chen, Straw Hat Luffy, and Zoro, were all there. After all, how could they miss such a huge event? This could be the end and the beginning of an era. Naval Headquarters Marine Ford Square, at this moment, elite marine soldiers from all over the world have gathered. Standing at the front are the four seven warlords of the sea, Bartholomew Kuma, Doflamingo, Gecko Moria, and My Hawk. In front of the execution platform, the giant vice admirals serve as a line of defense. At this time, three people wearing yellow, red, and blue cloaks and coats came out. Look, those are the admirals. Soon a marine soldier pointed in the direction of the three admirals and said in shock. The marine soldier who was also looking at the three admirals said, What a strong sense of oppression. Is this the admiral? Soon, the three admirals sat down on the three chairs under the execution platform, forming the strongest line of defense. Sengoku took the phone number, stood on the execution platform, looked forward, and said to the phone number, Bring Fire Fist Ace up. After Fire Fist Ace was brought up, Sengoku directly announced the life experience of Fire Fist Ace in public. Fire Fist Ace is the son of Pirate King Roger after being revealed by Sengoku. Everyone was shocked, no one could believe that the son of Pirate King Roger was still left in this world. So this time Marine's public execution seems very meaningful, and it is also of great significance. It turns out Fire Fist Ace is the son of Roger, the Pirate King. No wonder it turns out to be so powerful. Advertisement. But now I'm finally going to be judged by Marine. Many of the people watching Sabayati Archipelago are very happy now, because they see that Marine is doing something very right now. That is the public execution of Fire Fist Ace, the captain of the second division of the Whitebeard Pirates and the son of Pirate King Roger. A panicked Marine soldier ran behind the execution platform and reported to Marshal Sengoku. Marshal Sengoku, it's bad, the door of justice has been opened for unknown reasons. What? As soon as Sengoku heard that the door of justice was opened for no reason, he immediately realized that something was wrong. On the sea directly in front of Marineford Square, haze continues to rise. The increasing haze made it difficult for the Marine soldiers to see clearly. Then, visible to the naked eye, pirate ships of various sizes appeared on the sea one after another. The sirens on Marineford sounded immediately. The Whitebeard Pirates are here. Scuyard, Thomas the Knight, Makuga, the Decalvin Brothers, Whitebeard. Oh my god, they are all famous pirate captains in the New World. There are 43 fleets in total. Everyone is ready to fight. Hurry up and find the main ship of the Whitebeard Pirates, the Moby Dick. At this time, there were Marine generals who said in a panic, the Whitebeard Pirates Moby Dick has not been found. Advertisement. Sengoku saw the scene and shouted angrily, What are you doing? Find the main ship of the Whitebeard Pirates quickly. The 43 pirate ships under the Whitebeard Pirates are constantly approaching Naval Headquarters Marine Ford. Many Marine soldiers panicked. At the bottom of the sea, the main crew members of the Whitebeard Pirates, including the captain of the 5th Division, Foil Hakita, said, Then, let's start ascending. Every crew member of the Whitebeard Pirates looked serious and showed no fear in the face of the upcoming battle. Suddenly, large bubbles appeared on the sea's surface in the bay. Garp, who was standing under the execution platform, frowned and said, Maybe the Whitebeard Pirates will appear from unexpected places? Not necessarily. Garp, now is not the time to make sarcastic remarks. Vice Admiral, the crane on the side, warned. To this, Garp looked indifferent. As the bubbles grew larger and larger, a huge coated Moby Dick broke out of the water. Landed on the sea surface in Naval Headquarters Marine Ford Bay. The huge Moby Dick landed heavily on the sea, causing large waves. It's the Moby Dick. Many Marine soldiers began to scream in horror. When the first Moby Dick main ship landed on the sea, the second, third, and fourth Moby Dick rushed out and landed on the sea from left to right, forming a trend of front, back, left, and right. Advertisement. Chapter 37 Luo Chen is about to arrive on the battlefield. Advertisement. The pirates of the Whitebeard Pirates were all roaring loudly, Naval Headquarters, please be prepared. Destroy Marine, rescue Ace. Capture the Naval Headquarters and eliminate the Marines. The sound spread throughout Naval Headquarters Marine Ford, and all Marines could hear it clearly. How scary? The Whitebeard Pirates. Kizura said lewdly, sitting on the Admiral chair. At this time, the Marine soldiers in Marine Ford Square heard footsteps. When the footsteps stopped, the figure of Whitebeard, the strongest man in the world, stood on the bow of the Moby Dick. Hulalala Whitebeard looked directly at the execution platform and smiled. Sengoku, we haven't seen each other in decades. My dear son, are you okay? 
Sengoku on the execution platform said with a gloomy face, White Beard, I didn't expect you to invade such a close place. A Marine General pointed to the White Beard pirate's ship Moby Dick and said, All 14 squad captains are here. White Beard backhanded the Supreme Sharp Sword Kong Yunpai into the deck. The burly body squatted down and clenched his fists. The strong wind blew White Beard's cloak constantly fluttering. White Beard punched the air with his fists. Boom. Advertisement. Instantly, cracks appeared in the atmosphere on both sides, and then the sea began to shake violently. What is that? The atmosphere actually cracked. A marine soldier said as he looked at the monster White Beard in shock. Severe vibrations caused the seawater around Naval Headquarters Marine 4 to rise and fall continuously. The 100,000 marine soldiers in the square were instantly dumbfounded. On the sea surface? What is going on? Every marine soldier opened his eyes wide. The fluctuations slowly calmed down. A marine soldier saw that the sea water level was decreasing rapidly and said, The sea water level is decreasing. When the sea water level dropped to a certain level, everyone in the Whitebeard Pirates became quiet. What's going on? Why have everyone in the Whitebeard Pirates become so quiet? Are they waiting for Whitebeard's order? At the same time, Luo Chen controlled Thousand Sunny and a marine warship, flying on the path of Naval Headquarters Marine Fort. A huge strong wind blew towards my face. It blew so much that both ships would not be able to move forward smoothly, if it weren't for Luo Chen Lion Fruit's ability. No one knows how far it will retreat. Why is there such a strong wind all of a sudden? Luffy grabbed the board with both hands and said doubtfully. Nami, Usopp, and Chopper were all almost blown away, but it was Robin who used his flower flower fruit ability to catch everyone at the critical moment and escaped. Jinbei looked at the strong wind coming towards his face meaningfully and said, This is advertisement. In fact, Jinbei already basically knows the answer. And Luo Chen is not on the thousand sunny of the straw hat pirates, but on a military ship. The whole person ignored the strong wind blowing in his face and stood on the bow of the ship. Compared with other people who were blown away, there is a direct and sharp difference. When the strong wind passed, Shiryu of Rain came to Luo Chen and asked, Captain, what happened to the strong wind just now? Normally, there has never been a scene like this on the route from Impel down to Naval Headquarters Marine Ford. After all, the world government's dedicated route is the same as the Calm Belt. There is no wind all year round, and navigation can only rely on ocean currents. Not to mention that Shiryu of the Rain was confused, Domino was also even more confused, and the criminals who were released from Impel down all looked confused. Who knew what was going on? Luo Chen explained calmly with his hands in his pockets, the cause of the strong wind just now was caused by Whitebeard using the Devil Fruit ability. Whitebeard's ability. Shiryu of Rain opened his eyes wide with disbelief on his face. What kind of Devil Fruit ability can cause such an exaggerated scene? It's like a natural disaster destroying the world. After hearing Luo Chen's explanation, the prisoners behind them all raised their hands in fear. Whitebeard, is that the strongest man in the world? Whitebeard. It's terrible. Do we really want to go to Naval Headquarters Marine Ford? It feels like it's a living hell now. We just escaped from Impel Down. Captain Buggy, let's go. Advertisement. Asshole, let's go. Where are you going? If you get off the boat now, you will die. Buggy was speechless to this group of brainless men. Didn't he see that there was sea around him? Captain Buggy, what did you say? You said you're not going anywhere but going to Naval Headquarters Marine Ford, giving Whitebeard a dead end. Oh my god, you are truly a legendary crew member. We admire you so much, Captain Buggy. These pirate prisoners were instantly in awe of their Captain Buggy. Buggy was dumbfounded for a moment. Did he say such a thing? Give Whitebeard a dead end? I'm afraid Whitebeard gave him a dead end. These bastard idiots are going to kill him Buggy got tear. MR3 shook his head speechlessly and said, I really don't know how these guys ears grow. Domino, on his side, also looked at Buggy and the others like idiots, and said, Are these prisoners stupid because of being imprisoned? Or do you mean you can't understand people? You're so obviously scared? Can you hear it wrong? It's so speechless. It's such an idiot. Shiryu of the Rain smoked a cigarette and said, Captain, that kind of eyesore, I'll go over and kill him now. No, keep it. Luo Chen rejected Shiryu's proposal. Buggy is said to have conqueror's luck in the original work. In fact, Luo Chen also wanted to see if there was such a thing as conqueror's luck. What if there really is something called conqueror's luck? Then Luo Chen will naturally accept the so-called conqueror's luck in the future. Advertisement. Chapter 38 Jinbei admires Luo Chen's courage. Advertisement. The calm sea did not affect the progress of Thousand Sunny and the warship at all, because the controller was Luo Chen's lion fruit ability. Then he moved on for less than a minute. A huge tsunami hundreds of meters high behind them rushed over at an alarming speed. Luffy, Zoro, Sanji, Nami, all the straw hats, and the people on the other side were instantly dumbfounded. In other words, Luo Chen was very calm throughout the entire process, without any fluctuations. Even Shiryu of Rain, Crocodile, Jinbei, Ivankov, and others have some small psychological fluctuations. After all, facing such a terrible natural disaster. Is that a tsunami? Help. Usopp was so scared that his eyes almost turned white. Chopper was so frightened that he lay motionless on the floor, as if dead. Luffy quickly shouted to Luo Chen on the military boat more than 20 meters away, Luo Chen, there is a tsunami behind us. Get the boat up quickly, otherwise we will be killed by the tsunami. Facing the tsunami that was quickly coming towards him, Luo Chen slowly raised his hand, and under the control of Lion Fruit's ability, the two ships quickly rose higher. However, a scene that exceeded everyone's expectations appeared. Luo Chen controlled two ships and rode directly on the huge tsunami. This scene can be said to have stunned everyone instantly. I never imagined that Luo Chen could do this. The speed is several times faster than the original one. Luffy said excitedly, it's amazing, the speed suddenly became faster. Advertisement. Jinbei said in admiration, that Captain Luo Chen is very courageous and dares to do this. Hip. Ivankov said with a strange movement, isn't this a good idea? It will help us reach Naval Headquarters Marine Ford better. That's true. Sanji responded, lighting a cigarette for himself. Back to Naval Headquarters Marine Ford. At this time, the 100,000 Marine soldiers in the square could feel the ground beneath their feet beginning to shake. Gekko Moria said in confusion, what's going on? Why does it start shaking? 
Fa, Fu Fu Da Flamingo put one hand in his pocket and pointed in the distance with the other hand and said, Look over there, you will know what is going on, Gecko Moria. Gecko Moria looked in the direction of Da Flamingo's finger, his eyes widened and he said, Is that a tsunami? 100,000 marine soldiers also discovered that there were huge tsunamis on both sides of Marine Ford that were approaching quickly. Even the rear admirals and vice admirals all looked nervous. Garp looked at the vibrating ground and said seriously, Whitebeard, Edward Newgate, shock fruit ability user, the ability that was activated just now has now turned into a tsunami. When the huge tsunami came completely over Marine Ford, Belmer looked at the tsunami that was about to fall and said dumbly, Help? Kabe, this is a tsunami. There's nothing I can do. Kabe looked at such a huge tsunami and was also at a loss, not knowing what to do. There are more marine soldiers who are even worse than Velmer and Kobe. Advertisement. Hula la la Whitebeard looked up to the sky and laughed. Laughter spread throughout Naval Headquarters Marine Ford Square. The crew members of the Whitebeard Pirates were all roaring with excitement. This is their father's ability. One blow is enough to destroy the Naval Headquarters base camp. Three in the Admiral position. Aokiji slowly stood up, took a step forward and then disappeared, arriving above Marine Ford. Ice Age. Aokiji opened his hands and fired two icicles, completely freezing the tsunamis on both sides. This scene also made all the Marine soldiers breathe a sigh of relief. They almost thought they were going to die just now. However, Aokiji's counterattack did not stop. Two stabbing spears. Whitebeard looked at the two ice spears flying towards him and smiled, Aokiji, you kid. Whitebeard clenched his fist and punched it in the midair direction where Aokiji was. Boom. Aokiji's two-thorn spear attack was instantly shattered, and Aokiji's body was also shattered by Whitebeard's attack. However, Aokiji had already entered the elemental state in advance and escaped Whitebeard's attack. Aokiji fell from midair and landed on the sea. The moment he landed, his whole body turned to ice and his right hand pressed against the sea surface. Advertisement. Ice Age. With Aokiji's frozen fruit ability activated, the entire bay and the sea outside the bay were frozen. The four Moby Dicks of the Whitebeard Pirates were firmly controlled within the bay, and the 43 ships of the Whitebeard Pirates were controlled outside the bay. The surrounding temperature also dropped sharply. On the Whitebeard Pirates Moby Dick, a crew member looked at the ice and said, Our ship is blocked by ice, but it still provides us with a place to stay. In another place, unbeknownst to both Marine and the Whitebeard Pirates, the Straw Hat Pirates, Buggy, and others breathed a sigh of relief. Buggy said with lingering fear, What a risk, what a risk, the ship was almost blocked by ice. Fortunately, Luo Chen reacted quickly enough to avoid the fate of being blocked by ice. Crocodile smoked a cigarette and looked at Luo Chen standing at the bow of the boat and said, It seems that the man had already guessed that this scene was going to happen. On Thousand Sunny, Luffy said excitedly, Everyone, we have arrived at Naval Headquarters Marine Ford, and we will be able to rescue A soon. Yes, but the real battle is about to begin. Zoro clenched his weapon and responded excitedly. In such a big scene, there must be many masters who can hone their sword skills. Nami ran to the deck, looked down, and said in shock, Down there, there are so many Marines. Oh my god, there are so many Marines, how are we going to rescue your brother? Following Nami's reminder, others also came to the deck and looked down. Advertisement. Chapter 39 The system starts the gift package again. Advertisement. Luo Chen stood on the bow of the warship, put his hands in his pockets and said calmly, Are you ready? We are ready to start descending and join the battlefield. I've been looking forward to it for a long time. Shiryu of Rain said, licking his tongue. This time, Shiryu of Rain felt that he would be able to enjoy enough killings. Domino seemed to be running with me throughout the whole process, without any sense of presence. Domino also knows why she joined the Luo Chen pirates. As a result, Thousand Sunny and the warship began to descend towards Marine Ford under the control of Luo Chen's lion fruit ability. Just when the Whitebeard pirates were about to attack and Marine was about to meet the enemy, he saw two ships landing in the sky. There were many Whitebeard pirates who were puzzled. One of them said, there is a military ship? Is it Marine support? But why is there a pirate ship next to it? What kind of combination is this? Marine and the others are also confused. Are you all thinking that this is Marshal Sengoku's strategic plan? Directly attack the Whitebeard Pirates Moby Dick? Not to mention that the Marine soldiers were confused, including Sengoku himself, who was also confused, thinking where did this military ship come from? Why didn't he know? Marco came to Whitebeard's father and asked, Dad, the two ships landed next to our Moby Dick, should we take the lead in attacking? No, wait. Whitebeard looked at the two landing ships. Advertisement. Bang, bang. In the end, Thousand Sunny and the warship landed on both sides of the Moby Dick. At this moment, everyone could see clearly who were on the ship. There were all kinds of miscellaneous people. Anyway, that was how it felt to them. Sengoku, who was on the execution platform, roared directly at Garp below. Bastard Garp, are you your guy's family again? Luffy. Garp held his head in his hands in shock, unable to believe that his grandson actually came to Naval Headquarters Marine Ford. Don't you know where this place is, and come to such a dangerous place? After the shock, Garp looked at the combination and said doubtfully, but then again, don't you think that combination is weird? There are the original seven warlords of the Sea Crocodile and the Sea Hero Jinbei. There is also the revolutionary Ivankov and a group of impel down criminals. There are also Luo Chen who kidnapped celestial dragons, Chan Game Shiryu, the guard of impel down, and others. Garp, our impel down may have been breached, otherwise those people would not have gathered together. Crane Vice Admiral on the side responded seriously and worriedly. Impel down was breached, and for them, Marine, the impact was quite severe. Sengoku ignored Garp, turned his head and looked straight ahead again, finally landing on Luo Chen, and asked loudly, Luo Chen, you kidnapped three celestial dragons, how dare you come to Marine Ford? If you are wise, release the celestial dragons immediately, otherwise this will be your graveyard today. Advertisement. Haha, <laughs> Sengoku, who are you trying to scare? Whether you let me go or not depends on whether Marine has the strength to let me go. Luo Chen responded mockingly with a half smile, and Luo Chen's arrogant words immediately aroused the anger of all the Marines in the square. How much do you look down on them, Marine, to dare to be so arrogant? Three Akino, who was sitting on the admiral chair, was feeling hot all over and said, You are a brat who overestimates your capabilities. How scary? Super pirate newcomer Luo Chen. Kizura, who was sitting on the chair next to Akino, said lewdly, 
Sengoku's face turned red with anger at Luo Chen's words. Luo Chen was trampling Marine's dignity under his feet in public. Hula Lala Whitebeard laughed loudly and said, Sengoku, it seems that you Marines are really in trouble. You can't even protect the celestial dragons. Be smart and let my son go, or Lao Zi will sink naval headquarters Marine Ford to the bottom of the sea. Sengoku tightened his grip on the phone and announced loudly, All Marines, please obey the order. No pirates will be spared here today. Ho ho ho, destroy the pirates and justice will prevail. The Marine soldiers in the square roared in unison. After Crocodile glanced at everyone present, he finally focused on Whitebeard. Crocodile turned into sand and flew towards Whitebeard quickly. Ivankov looked around in confusion and said, Where is that Crocodile guy? Advertisement. Where? Sanji pointed out the direction of Crocodile for Ivankov. When Crocodile flew behind Whitebeard, he smiled and said, It's been a long time, Whitebeard. You little brat with a short memory. Whitebeard didn't even turn his head away, because for Whitebeard, Crocodile is powerful, but that's all. Dad. On the Moby Dick, the main crew of the Whitebeard pirates were worried. However, Crocodile's sneak attack was stopped by a figure. This person was Marco, the captain of the Whitebeard pirates. When Crocodile was just stopped, another figure hit him. Crocodile was forced to take several steps back. Crocodile looked at the water on Straw Hat Luffy's body unhappily, and thought in his mind that this Straw Hat Boy had mastered the skills of fighting him, and said, Straw Hat Boy, after we came to Marineford, our cooperation agreement has been terminated. Why do you want to help? Whitebeard. Ace likes this uncle very much, so you can't hurt him. Straw Hat Luffy said back firmly, This boy. Whitebeard looked at the Straw Hat Boy standing aside with a smile. Everyone was nervous, but Luo Chen was relaxed. At this moment, Luo Chen has opened his system panel. The prompt to open the gift pack is to participate in the summit war, so you have just arrived at Naval Headquarters Marine Ford. The system is activated. Advertisement. Chapter 42's Nika or Phoenix. Advertisement. Intervention Summit War Gift Pack opens. Acquire strengthening to copy Devil Fruit's ability once and directly awakening. Get a copy of a certain ability except Fruit ability once. Acquire absolute control over the person for 10 seconds except suicide. The next stage starts the Four Emperor's Gift Pack. Luo Chen looked at the three abilities given after opening the gift package and already knew what they were. Obtained to copy a certain ability except the fruit ability once. This was obtained once before. Luo Chen also used it to copy Yuxiao's observation hacky, which resulted in the current SS plus level observation hacky. The ability to gain absolute control over a person for 10 seconds, except for suicide, can also be understood at a glance. It can be said that even if it is just 10 seconds, if used properly, it can definitely bring about super god-like effects. How about a sudden backstab when multiple enemies are fighting you? What will happen? Not to mention turning the tide of the battle in an instant, but it can also gain a huge advantage. Not only can this be the case, or is it not impossible to use these short 10 seconds to achieve the desired goal? So that's it. A plan has been formed in Luo Chen's mind. Obtaining strengthening and copying Devil Fruit's abilities once and directly awakening is particularly awesome. Find an extremely powerful Devil Fruit, copy it directly, and reach the awakening level immediately. With good use, Luo Chen's combat ability will instantly rise to a big level. Advertisement. So in today's Summit War scene, if you have to make a choice, there are only two Devil Fruit abilities that Luo Chen can take a fancy to, Zoan the Phantom Beast in the Phoenix form, and Zoan the Phantom Beast in the Nika Sun God form. To be comprehensive, Nika's Sun God form is definitely more comprehensive and improves combat effectiveness more. It is estimated that after awakening in the Phoenix form, it basically has the ability to be truly immortal, but its weakness is the Sea Stone Sealing ability. However, this is not the case with Luo Chen. There are no side effects of the Devil Fruit ability, so the Phoenix form will be within the range of Luo Chen's choices, otherwise it will have to be decided. In the original work, the awakening of the Nika Fruit gave Luffy the right to shout with Kaido again, and this time, Luffy only relied on the Fruit's ability to successfully let Kaido use his ultimate move, that is, he transformed into a Fire Dragon himself. It has to be said that after entering the fifth level, Luffy is able to fight and resist, and his recovery ability is also extremely outstanding. He can charge his scrap body to full power in an instant. This recovery ability far exceeds that of most Zoan fruits. Recovery ability is a passive skill unique to Zoan ability users. Anyone with Zoan ability will have a high recovery skill, and this has become the key to long-term combat for Zoan ability users. Among the many Zoan users with excellent recovery abilities, there is one Esper who is the king among them. His recovery ability is one of the few among all Zoan users. This person is Marco, the Phantom Beast Phoenix. Luffy's Nika fruit and Marco's Phoenix fruit both belong to the category of Phantom Beast species, but the main ability of the Phoenix fruit is recovery, while the Nika fruit is more comprehensive. Just looking at the recovery abilities of the two Phantom Beast fruits, which one is better? It must be Marco's Phoenix fruit. First of all, Luffy's Nika fruit ability is more comprehensive. After awakening, it can improve attack, defense, recovery, and many other aspects. It can be said to be the only devil fruit on the sea. Moreover, the recovery ability of the Nika fruit is indeed not inferior to Marco's Phoenix fruit. Even if Luffy has tried his best, he can still charge to the full state in an instant, just like a perpetual motion machine. Advertisement. Judging from the performance of Nika fruit, it seems that it not only consumes physical energy, but even overdraws vital energy in advance. In fact, the Phantom Beast Phoenix fruit itself is a fruit that focuses on healing, just like Bado's Barrier fruit. This type of fruit is more scientific and the corresponding ability and function are relatively simple, but the corresponding strength is higher. Higher than other fruits. And Luffy's Nika fruit is more like an all-powerful fruit. Luo Chen thought about so many things at once and made up his mind to copy the phoenix form of the phantom beast species. It is true that it is not as comprehensive as Nika's sun god form, but after awakening, it can be said to be unkillable in the true sense. For Luo Chen, being killed is the most important way to save his life. Now that you've felt it, then. System, call up Marco's abilities for enhanced copying. Received. Host. Strength and copy devil fruit's ability once direct awakening. Copy object, Marco. Zoan phantom beast phoenix fruit ability, unawakened. Observation hacky, S rank. Amament hacky, S rank. Physical skills, S plus level. Advertisement. Swordsmanship, D level. Basic. Physical endurance defense, SS level. Comprehensive attack power, S level. Comprehensive defense power, SS level. Luo Chen saw that Marco's personality was very biased. Basics. 
Physical Endurance Defense, SS Level. Comprehensive Defense Power, SS Level. These two are the highest, and it is estimated that the Phoenix Form ability also plays a role in them. Obviously he has the basic Physical Endurance Defense, SS Level. Why does Marco become exhausted so quickly during the battle? It is probably because the recovery ability of the Phoenix Form consumes a lot of money. It also has something to do with it. If we wake up, this shortcoming will probably be solved. Looking at Marco's attributes, Luo Chen felt that Marco was neither good nor bad. There's nothing wrong with being able to play high-end games. Unfortunately, the damage is not enough. Armament Haki is S-level, his physical skills are S-plus level, and his overall attack power is S-level, although he is also at the top of the S-level. However, the strong players in the high-end game all start at SS level, and no matter how bad they are, they will have to have S-plus level defense at the lowest level. If the Phoenix form had awakened, luckily, Marco hadn't awakened either. Advertisement. Chapter 41 Become an all-round monster with high attack, high defense, and unlimited recovery. Advertisement. As the system operates rapidly, the energy of Marco's Phantom Beast Phoenix form fruit continues to appear in Luo Chen's body. Ding! Strength and copying is successful. The Phantom Beast Phoenix form fruit ability has been awakened. Host, Luo Chen. Paramecia Lion Fruit Ability, Awakened. Zoan Phantom Beast Phoenix Fruit Ability, Awakened. Observation Haki, SS Plus Level. Amament Haki A Level. Conqueror's Haki, S Plus Level. Physical Skills, A Plus Level. Swordsmanship, SS Level. Basic. Physical Endurance Defense, SS Plus Level. Comprehensive Attack Power, S Plus Level. Comprehensive Defense Power, SS Level. Luo Chen's body incorporated the form of the Awakened Phantom Beast Phoenix, which instantly increased his basic physical strength and endurance defense from B level to SS plus level, reaching the astonishing peak of the general level. Advertisement. With this amazing energy in the body, there is no problem at all for fighting for 10 days and a half. Luo Chen lamented that it was indeed the awakening of the Zoan Phantom Beast species, and the magnitude of the enhancement was quite large. The Awakened Phantom Beast species led to a basic improvement, and the basic improvement led Armament Haki to upgrade from C level to a level, spanning two levels in a row. At the same time, the Zoan Phantom Beast breed purely increases the physical strength, making single combat more powerful, so the physical skills are also upgraded from B level to A plus level. Conqueror's Haki is upgraded based on strength and courage, so Conqueror's Haki is also upgraded from S level to S plus level. Due to the awakening level of the Phantom Beast Phoenix form, the comprehensive defense power directly increases from B plus level to SS level to the general level. Before, Luo Chen was completely an assassin with high attack and low defense. Now he has become an all-round monster with high attack, high defense, and unlimited recovery. Nowadays, if you are fighting admirals like Akino or Aokiji, the attack power is indeed a bit low, but Luo Chen is also a strong man at the general level. Four of the attributes have reached SS level or above, and two of them have reached SS plus level. It can even consume an admiral like Akino or Aokiji to death. While Luo Chen was copying the Phoenix Fruit ability and looking at the panel, Straw Hat Luffy completed a wave of confrontation with Whitebeard. Whitebeard raised the supremely sharp sword Kong Yunki with one hand and turned it quickly, and finally hit it hard on the deck. With a smile on his lips, he said, Boy, you'd better not hold me back, otherwise I won't be able to spare you. Stop talking, I will arrange my own way to rescue Ace. Straw Hat Luffy waved his hand and looked directly at Whitebeard and responded loudly. This scene can be described as instantly frightening both sides. Advertisement. Straw Hat Luffy snorted, looked at Ace on the execution platform, and said loudly, Everyone, let's go and rescue Ace. As soon as Straw Hat Luffy finished speaking, he rushed out first, followed by Thousand Sunny, followed closely by Zoro, Sanji, Usopp, Chopper, Frankie, Brooke, Nami, and Robin. Together with Ivankov, more than a hundred people including the Ladyboy jumped down together. Diamond George, the captain of the third division of the Whitebeard Pirates, jumped off the Moby Dick and roared loudly, Whitebeard Pirates, we are coming to. Ho 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 then all the crew members of the Whitebeard Pirates, as well as the captains of the division, all attacked together. Kai Shiajinbei chose to act with the Whitebeard Pirates. Suddenly, there were only two people left in the entire Moby Dick, Whitebeard, and Marco, and everyone else attacked. Marine also reacted immediately, attack, 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 bombard Moby Dick, destroy Whitebeard, justice will prevail. Suddenly, countless marine soldiers jumped from the square to the ice to meet the impact of the Whitebeard Pirates. The war instantly turned into a melee. On Luo Chen's side, Yuji Shirio and Domino are standing behind Luo Chen. Captain Luo Chen has not given an order, and they will not act without authorization. Further back, there is Buggy the Clown and a group of prisoners who came out of Impel Down. At this moment, the Clown Buggy is so scared that he wants to escape from here, because this place is so scary and there are too many powerful people. Luo Chen slowly turned his head to look at Buggy and said, Buggy, hmm, who is calling me uncle? Buggy the Clown was very confused. Who would call him? Advertisement. Suddenly Buggy saw Luo Chen's gaze. Buggy the Clown thought Luo Chen was going to kill him, and he was so frightened that he fell to the ground. Luo Chen directly threatened Buggy and said, Buggy, I give you a task, which is to find a way to get Marine's video phone bug and control it for broadcast. Remember not to make any small moves, or I won't let you out of Naval Headquarters Marine Ford. Do you understand? Uncle, how is it possible? Listen, you, I understand. I will take someone to make arrangements right away. Buggy wanted to refuse, but in that moment, after Buggy felt Luo Chen's murderous intent, I was so scared that I agreed immediately. In fact, Buggy didn't know how many times he scolded Luo Chen secretly in his heart. Buggy took his impel down boys to do some work afterwards. Shiryu of the Rain asked, Captain, what about us? Shiryu, if you want to fight, go in. On the battlefield here, you can do whatever you want. It doesn't matter how many marines you kill. As long as I'm here, no one can touch you, Luo Chen said calmly. After hearing the satisfactory answer, Shiryu of the Rain responded respectfully, Thank you, Captain, then I will attack now. After saying this, Shiryu of the Rain jumped up and rushed towards Marine, holding onto the demon sword Rayo in his hand. Eyes full of excitement, Shiryu's purpose today is not to defeat anyone, nor to kill anyone, but to have enough Marine soldiers here. You can make Shiryu of Rain kill him until he doesn't want to kill him. After Shiryu of the Rain also attacked, Luo Chen and Domino were left on the military ship docked next to the Moby Dick. Advertisement. Chapter 42 Sengoku issued an order to get rid of Luo Chen. Advertisement. 
On the execution platform, Sengoku said to Akaina below, Akaina, the Luochan who kidnapped the Celestial Dragons is left to you. You must capture it, otherwise the Celestial Dragons will keep bothering us. I understand, every pirate here today will not be able to leave Marineford. Akaina responded ruthlessly while sitting on the middle chair. As for why Sengoku didn't give this task to Kizura, the main reason is that Sengoku was also afraid that Kizura would be too lazy to do anything about it. Luo Chen took Domino to the Whitebeard Pirate's Moby Dick. Whitebeard looked at the young man who fell beside him and said, You are the kid who kidnapped the Celestial Dragons a few days ago. You are very brave. Whitebeard, I have admired his reputation for a long time, and now I see that it is indeed well deserved. Luo Chen looked at the burly body in front of him and responded with a smile. Domino, who was brought here by Luo Chen, was frightened. Facing Whitebeard, the strongest man in the world, she would certainly feel particularly scared as a woman. Fortunately, Luo Chen was here. Hula la la Whitebeard looked at the sky and said with a smile, that's all in the past tense. Now is the time for you young people. Marco expressed his gratitude and said, Luo Chen, thank you. Although I don't know what your purpose is, you did help our Whitebeard pirates share some of the pressure. I would like to express my gratitude, Whitebeard. If you unfortunately die in this war, let me become the new captain of the Whitebeard pirates. I will protect your sons and leave Marineford smoothly. Luo Chen went straight to the point and stated his purpose. Marco was instantly angry and roared, Luo Chen, do you want to start a war with our Whitebeard pirates? Say such unlucky words for dad. Advertisement. On the Moby Dick, this noisy scene was also seen by the pirates of the Whitebeard Pirates and the Marine Soldiers. A pirate from the Whitebeard Pirate group pointed at Luo Chen and said, That bastard Luo Chen, what do you want to do to dad? Could Luo Chen's goal when he came to Naval Headquarters Marineford be Whitebeard? Marine had a different view, thinking that Luo Chen's goal might be Whitebeard. After all, Whitebeard's reputation is so great that many people in the sea want Whitebeard's head. However, the scene that Marine expected did not appear, and Luo Chen and Whitebeard did not fight. Whitebeard stopped Marco and said to Luo Chen, Boy Luo Chen, according to your wishes, Lao Zi will die on this battlefield, right? If nothing else happens, it should be so. Luo Chen was not 100% sure of his answer. Whitebeard would definitely die on the battlefield. After all, the scene now is not the scene of the original work. Hula la la Whitebeard laughed heartily and said, He really dares to say anything. He is indeed the guy who dared to kidnap the Celestial Dragons. Instead of being passive, it is better to take the initiative, maybe the effect will be better. Luo Chen said in a subtle way. Hula la la Whitebeard said with a smile, if the situation didn't allow it at this time, I really want to have a good fight with you. Old man, I guess there won't be this chance. Luo Chen responded, looking in the direction of Marine. Marco looked at Whitebeard's father worriedly. In fact, Marco knew that his father's physical condition was very bad now. Advertisement. When daddy has a hidden illness, he still has to face being surrounded by so many strong men like Marine. Therefore, in this war, Marco has made up his mind not to let his father fight for too long. The task of rescuing Ace must be completed by his sons. But Marco couldn't say these words in front of his father, otherwise he wouldn't agree without even thinking about it. After following his father for so many years, Marco knows very well what his father is like. At the same time, where the seven warlords of the sea were standing, my hawk jumped a step forward. And it was this step that instantly attracted the attention of many people. Doflamingo on the side smiled and said, Fuff, fu, fu. It's rare? My hawk, I never thought you would plan to join the war. I just want to test how big the gap is between the man in front of me and us. My hawk raised his hand and grasped the supreme sharp sword black blade knight on his back, and pulled it out. Three Akaino, who was in the admiral position, raised his head slightly and said, That guy who goes his own way actually wants to join the war. The world's greatest swordsman, my hawk. The marine soldiers looked at that figure and said in surprise. Foil Hakita, the captain of the 5th division of the Whitebeard Pirates, looked at My Hawk with a smile on his lips and said, I have long wanted to meet him. Anyone who is a famous swordsman will think that man My Hawk is the most powerful swordsman. My Hawk swung his sword fiercely, and the huge flying slash was shot out instantly, directly hitting Whitebeard on the Moby Dick. Advertisement. The huge flying slash of hundreds of meters swept across the ice, blowing away all the marines and pirates in its path. Dad, 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 dad. All the pirates in the Whitebeard Pirates looked at Father Whitebeard worriedly, because My Hawk's attack was directed at his father. The marines are holding their breath, waiting for My Hawk and Whitebeard to tell the result. Zoro clenched the weapons in his hands and stared at My Hawk, that guy My Hawk. To this day, Zoro still clearly remembers the scene when he was defeated by My Hawk in East Blue. It can be said that in that duel, Zoro was completely defeated when facing My Hawk. Now seeing My Hawk again, Zoro wants to challenge again, but he also knows that with his current strength, he is still no match for My Hawk. The greatest swordsman in the world, Zoro, he vowed to get it sooner or later. Advertisement. Chapter 43 Luo Chen is interested in eagle eye swordsmanship. Advertisement. Suddenly a figure rushed out quickly, blocking the path of the flying slash. Use your body to block this huge flying slash from the front. Diamond Jose had half of his face left, and the rest turned into diamonds. He roared with all his strength and threw this huge flying slash into the sky. The flying slash exploded in the sky. The world's best slash was blocked. Lieutenant Colonel Marine said as he looked at the flying slash exploding in the sky in shock. Another major marine pointed at the figure in front of him and said, That is Diamond Jose, the captain of the Whitebeard Pirates 3rd Division. Diamond Jaws looked at Myhawk with a smile on his lips. Hawkeye Myhawk also looked at Diamond Jose, but Hawkeye Myhawk did not continue to choose to attack, but put away the Supreme Sharp Sword Black Blade Knight. From what he had just done, Myhawk had already figured out that it was the Whitebeard Pirates who would not give him a chance to fight Whitebeard. Since there was no such opportunity, Myhawk chose to give up. There was no need to force it. Once he forced it, he would really start a war with the captains of the Whitebeard Pirates. Luo Chen squinted his eyes and looked at Myhawk meaningfully. The opponent's swordsmanship was a good consideration. Now is not the time to look around. The pirates of the Whitebeard Pirates immediately took advantage of the gap created by Diamond George and immediately launched a fierce attack on the Marine soldiers. Sanji smoked a cigarette and looked in the direction of Diamond Jose and said, This Whitebeard Pirate group is so powerful. Even the Myhawk attack that crushed the green algae head can be easily blocked. Damn pervert cook, do you believe I can teach you how to speak? Zoro said to Sanji. Advertisement. 
After forcing a marine soldier back, Robin said, however, with the help of the Whitebeard pirates, the pressure on us to rescue Brother Luffy will be reduced countless times. Yes, if we rely on just a few of us, it won't take more than a minute. Nami said without continuing. Shiryu of Rain, who was massacring Marine in another direction, stopped, took out a cigar and lit it, then said slowly, My hawk. I wonder whose swordsmanship is more powerful compared to Captain Luo Chen. Shiryu of Rain can certainly tell that Captain Luo Chen's swordsmanship is superior to his, and now he sees my hawk as well? Shiryu Rain's own swordsmanship is very close to that of a great swordsman, but he is not a great swordsman after all. The systematic evaluation is swordsmanship, S plus level, the peak of swordsmanship. A marine rear admiral rushed behind Shiryu of the Rain and roared loudly, the traitor Shiryu of the Rain, suffer death. Just when the marine rear admiral attack is about to fall, Shiryu of the Rain slashed the marine rear admiral away with a backhand slash. Shiryu of the Rain exhaled a puff of smoke and said mockingly, a mere marine rear admiral wants to attack Shiryu of the Rain? He is overestimating his own capabilities. Then let me be your opponent? Shiryu of Rain, Ghost Spider, one of the elite vice admirals of naval headquarters, slowly walked over. When Shiryu of the Rain saw that the visitor was the vice admiral Ghost Spider, he smiled excitedly and said, interesting, finally here comes someone who is better at fighting. Ghost Spider used life return, held eight knives and rushed towards Shiryu of the Rain, Marine will not show mercy to traitors. Then it depends on you, whether you have the strength or not. Shiryu of Rain also waved the demon sword Leo and pushed forward. Bang, bang. Shiryu of the Rain instantly fought with the Ghost Spider, and the fierce fight forced the nearby marine soldiers and pirates away. Advertisement. Luo Chen, who was watching the battle on the Moby Dick, also saw Shiryu, the strongest thug currently under his command, fighting against the naval headquarters Vice Admiral Ghost Spider. System, can you bring up the panels of Shiryu of Rain and Ghost Spider? Yes, host. Luo Chen smiled with satisfaction when he heard this. The system is still very powerful? You can also call up the other party's data without using the gift package. Object, Ghost Spider. Observation Hacky, Class A. Amament Hacky, S Rank. Swordsmanship, A Plus Level. Physical skills, A plus level. Basic. Physical endurance defense, S level. Comprehensive attack power, S level. Comprehensive defense power, S level. Luo Chen looked at the panel of Naval Headquarters Vice Admiral Ghost Spider. In terms of strength, it was quite good. He was considered a master. The comprehensive attack power and defense power have reached S level. Of course, this S level is also the weakest S level, but being able to enter S level already shows that this Ghost Spider has entered the threshold of the strong. Among them, the S level armament hacky plays a big role. The swordsmanship and physical skills are both A plus level. When combined with each other, it is considered to be among the weakest S level. The weakest aspect of Ghost Spider is Observation Hacky, which is only A level. Advertisement. A level Observation Hacky will most likely become a weakness in a battle of the same level. Of course, this assumes that the other party, Observation Hacky, is stronger than Ghost Spider. System, why don't you adjust the sensitivity, speed and the like, after all, these are also related to the overall combat effectiveness? Answer host, the system gives a data panel. Luo Chen didn't bother to ask anymore, so he continued to look at the panel of Shiryu of Rain. Object, Shiryu of Rain. Observation Hacky, Class A. Amament Hacky, S Rank. Swordsmanship, S Plus Level. Physical Skills, A Level. Basic. Physical Endurance Defense, S Level. Comprehensive Attack Power, S Plus Level. Comprehensive Defense Power, S Level. Looking at the comparison between Rain Shiryu's panel and Ghost Spider, Observation Hacky is both A Level, and Armament Hacky is also S Level. Level A in Physical Skills is half a level lower than Level A Plus in Ghost Spiders, and Level S Plus in Swordsmanship is directly one whole level higher than Level A Plus in Ghost Spiders. Looking at the panel, the basic, physical, endurance, defense, and overall defense are the same. However, in terms of overall attack power, Shiryu of Rain is stronger than Ghost Spider. Advertisement. Chapter 44, Capture the Thief First and Capture the King First. Advertisement. A very fat figure landed on the ice, intercepting the nine straw hats Luffy, Zoro, Sanji, Usopp, Chopper, Frankie, Brooke, Nami, and Robin. Straw hat Luffy stared at the person in front of him with wide eyes and said, Gecko Moria. He 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 Gecko Moria opened his hands and laughed, Straw hat boy, I will definitely kill you this time. Trouble, it took a lot of effort to defeat this guy last time. Zoro said seriously, clenching the weapon in his hand. Sanji lit a cigarette for himself and said, Since we have already encountered each other, a battle will inevitably occur. Super. Frankie posed and said, Gecko Moria doesn't have the help of Monster Oz this time. Yoshi, everyone, let's use our full strength to defeat Gecko Moria as quickly as possible. While Luffy said this, his body had already entered the second gear. Gecko Moria said disdainfully, Do you think you can defeat me again if we go together? It's ridiculous. Luffy took the lead and rushed towards Gecko Moria. Gecko Moria was not a fool, but used zombie soldiers to fight against the Straw Hat Pirates. On the execution platform, the kneeling ace looked at Luffy who kept fighting, and said painfully, Luffy, why did you come here? Sengoku looked at Fire Fist Ace and said, Fire Fist Ace, both you and all the pirates present must die today. Ace did not answer Sengoku, but looked at Luffy who was fighting in distress. Under the execution platform, where the three admirals were, Akainu and Kizuru were left. Kizuru stood up, put his hands in his pockets, took a few steps forward and said in a vulgar manner, those captains are all as strong as monsters. If you want to minimize the loss, you can only capture the thief first and capture the king first. After Kizuru finished speaking, his body turned into a stream of light and flew out, appearing above the battlefield. Advertisement. The dazzling light caused many pirates to cover their eyes. When the light dissipated, a pirate immediately exclaimed, it's Admiral Kizuru. Kizuru crossed his arms and used the sparkling fruit ability to attack Whitebeard on the Moby Dick, along with Luo Chen, eight foot beautiful Megatama. Countless laser rays covered the entire area of the Moby Dick. Whitebeard squinted his eyes and said, Hey, why is it so dazzling? Marco's hands turned into blue flame wings and flew out, blocking the Moby Dick directly in front. Boom, 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 then countless laser rays hit Marco. The strong air waves swept away the marine soldiers and the pirates of the Whitebeard pirate group and almost couldn't open their eyes. When Kizuru's attacks stopped, 
A marine soldier pointed to the sky and said, That man is Marco, the captain of the Whitebeard Pirates' first division. Unexpectedly, he withstood a frontal attack from Kizaru Admiral and was fine. How can we allow you to disturb our king as soon as he comes? Marco said with blue flames burning all over his body as he quickly repaired his body, the trick just now worked. Stop lying. Kizaru responded obscenely, not believing Marco's lies at all. Whitebeard smiled. Kizaru continued to show a lewd expression and said, It's so scary. The Whitebeard Pirates. Advertisement. The phoenix form of the phantom beast species Zoan, which is even rarer than Logia. Marco completely transformed into a blue flame bird and flew towards Kizaru. How could Kizaru let the enemy get so close to him? So there was another attack. Eight foot beautiful Megatama. Countless laser rays hit Marco, and all these attacks were repaired by Marco at the fastest speed visible to the naked eye. Marco was rapidly approaching Kizaru the entire time. When he got closer, Marco kicked Kizaru hard, but Kizaru blocked it with his hands. Kizaru looked at Marco and said slyly, This trick also worked. You bastard, stop lying. Marco continued to use force and knocked Kizaru's whole body away. Kizaru's whole body was like a stream of light hitting Marineford's wall. Boom, isn't this true? Mr. Kizaru, the Marine soldiers couldn't believe that their highest combat power, the Admiral, was actually knocked away by a pirate? A stream of light reappeared in the sight of the Marine soldiers. Marco, who was in midair, raised the corners of his mouth and smiled. After a brief exchange between Kizaru and Marco, he also asked the Marine giant Vice Admirals to pay attention to the air to avoid being exploited by the Whitebeard pirates. Luo Chen looked up at Kizaru not far away and called the system in his heart. System, bring up Kizaru's data panel and take a look. Target, Horus Alino. Advertisement. Logia Sparkling Fruit, Awakened. Observation Hacky, SS Level. Armament Hacky, S Plus Level. Swordsmanship, S Plus Level. Physical Skills, S Plus Level. Basic. Physical Endurance Defense, S Plus Level. Comprehensive Attack Power, SS Level. Comprehensive Defense Power, S Plus Level. Luo Chen was analyzing the data on Kizaru's panel. Looking at the data, it seemed that Kizaru was not very good. Observation Hacky reaches SS Level, and its comprehensive attack power relies on Sparkling Fruit's lethality to reach SS Level. But the real power of Kizaru is the speed of its Sparkling Fruit ability. The extremely fast speed gave Kizaru a great advantage. Even if the Sparkling Fruit ability has not been awakened, it is still much stronger. What's more, Kizaru's Sparkling Fruit ability has awakened now. Facing anyone below the general level, Kizaru can form a crushing advantage. Excluding Devil Fruit ability, just look at the data. Kizaru is indeed not very powerful at the general level. But that's only for people at the general level level. Kizaru also has the Sparkling Fruit ability, which can basically compete with the general level level. It's no wonder that Kizaru can secure the Admiral position for a reason. Advertisement. Chapter 44. Capture the Thief First and Capture the King First. Advertisement. A very fat figure landed on the ice, intercepting the nine straw hats Luffy, Zoro, Sanji, Usopp, Chopper, Frankie, Brook, Nami, and Robin. Straw Hat Luffy stared at the person in front of him with wide eyes and said, Gecko Moria. He 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 Gecko Moria opened his hands and laughed, Straw Hat Boy, I will definitely kill you this time. Trouble, it took a lot of effort to defeat this guy last time. Zoro said seriously, clenching the weapon in his hand. Sanji lit a cigarette for himself and said, Since we have already encountered each other, a battle will inevitably occur. Super. Frankie posed and said, Gecko Moria doesn't have the help of Monster Oz this time. Yoshi, everyone, let's use our full strength to defeat Gecko Moria as quickly as possible. While Luffy said this, his body had already entered the second gear. Gecko Moria said disdainfully, Do you think you can defeat me again if we go together? It's ridiculous. Luffy took the lead and rushed towards Gecko Moria. Gecko Moria was not a fool, but used zombie soldiers to fight against the Straw Hat Pirates. On the execution platform, the kneeling ace looked at Luffy who kept fighting, and said painfully, Luffy, why did you come here? Sengoku looked at Fire Fist Ace and said, Fire Fist Ace, both you and all the pirates present must die today. Ace did not answer Sengoku, but looked at Luffy who was fighting in distress. Under the execution platform, where the three admirals were, Akainu and Kizaru were left. Kizaru stood up, put his hands in his pockets, took a few steps forward and said in a vulgar manner, Those captains are all as strong as monsters. If you want to minimize the loss, you can only capture the thief first and capture the king first. After Kizaru finished speaking, his body turned into a stream of light and flew out, appearing above the battlefield. Advertisement. The dazzling light caused many pirates to cover their eyes. When the light dissipated, a pirate immediately exclaimed, It's Admiral Kizaru. Kizaru crossed his arms and used the sparkling fruit ability to attack Whitebeard on the Moby Dick, along with Luo Chen, Eight foot beautiful Megatama. Countless laser rays covered the entire area of the Moby Dick. Whitebeard squinted his eyes and said, Hey, why is it so dazzling? Marco's hands turned into blue flame wings and flew out, blocking the Moby Dick directly in front. Boom, 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 then countless laser rays hit Marco. The strong air wave swept away the marine soldiers and the pirates of the Whitebeard pirate group and almost couldn't open their eyes. When Kizaru's attack stopped, a marine soldier pointed to the sky and said, That man is Marco, the captain of the Whitebeard pirates' first division. Unexpectedly, he withstood a frontal attack from Kizaru Admiral and was fine. How can we allow you to disturb our king as soon as he comes? Marco said with blue flames burning all over his body as he quickly repaired his body, the trick just now worked. Stop lying. Kizaru responded obscenely, not believing Marco's lies at all. Whitebeard smiled. Kizaru continued to show a lewd expression and said, It's so scary. The Whitebeard Pirates. Advertisement. The phoenix form of the phantom beast species Zoan, which is even rarer than Logia. Marco completely transformed into a blue flame bird and flew towards Kizaru. How could Kizaru let the enemy get so close to him? So there was another attack. Eight foot beautiful Megatama. Countless laser rays hit Marco, and all these attacks were repaired by Marco at the fastest speed visible to the naked eye. Marco was rapidly approaching Kizaru the entire time. When he got closer, Marco kicked Kizaru hard, but Kizaru blocked it with his hands. Kizaru looked at Marco and said slyly, This trick also worked. You bastard, stop lying. Marco continued to use force and knocked Kizaru's whole body away. Kizaru's whole body was like a stream of light hitting Marineford's wall. Boom, isn't this true? Mr. Kizaru, the marine soldiers couldn't believe that their highest combat power, the admiral, was actually knocked away by a pirate? A stream of light reappeared in the sight of the marine soldiers. Marco, who was in midair, raised the corners of his mouth and smiled. 
After a brief exchange between Kizaro and Marco, he also asked the marine giant vice admirals to pay attention to the air to avoid being exploited by the Whitebeard pirates. Luo Chen looked up at Kizaro not far away and called the system in his heart. System, bring up Kizaro's data panel and take a look. Target, Horasalino. Advertisement. Lokia Sparkling Fruit, Awakened. Observation Hacky, SS Level. Armament Hacky, S Plus Level. Swordsmanship, S Plus Level. Physical Skills, S Plus Level. Basic. Physical Endurance Defense, S Plus Level. Comprehensive Attack Power, SS Level. Comprehensive Defense Power, S Plus Level. Luo Chan was analyzing the data on Kizaru's panel. Looking at the data, it seemed that Kizaru was not very good. Observation Hacky reaches SS level, and its comprehensive attack power relies on Sparkling Fruit's lethality to reach SS level. But the real power of Kizaru is the speed of its Sparkling Fruit ability. The extremely fast speed gave Kizaru a great advantage. Even if the Sparkling Fruit ability has not been awakened, it is still much stronger. What's more, Kizaru's Sparkling Fruit ability has awakened now. Facing anyone below the general level, Kizaru can form a crushing advantage. Excluding Devil Fruit ability, just look at the data. Kizaru is indeed not very powerful at the general level. But that's only for people at the general level level. Kizaru also has the Sparkling Fruit ability, which can basically compete with the general level level. It's no wonder that Kizaru can secure the Admiral position for a reason. Advertisement. The melee on the battlefield became increasingly fierce. You all get out of the way. Diamond Jose, the captain of the 3rd Division, ran quickly and asked his companions to get out of the way. Upon seeing this, the pirates of the Whitebeard Pirates scattered around. Diamond Jose's punch hit the ice hard, and the violent force will cause a huge circle of cracks. All the marine soldiers were deeply shocked by Diamond Jose's power. What a terrifying wrist strength. Diamond Jose lifted up an extremely large area of ice, and the terrifying power once again shocked the marine soldiers. Diamond Jose's veins popped out, he held up an ice block bigger than Moby Dick, and roared, Marine, if you have the ability, try to block it. Diamond Josie threw the ice block at Marine with such force. The Marine soldiers looked at the huge ice cube flying towards them and said in despair, It's too big, there's no way to reach it. Everyone, including the giant vice admirals, also had solemn expressions. Akino, who was sitting on the three admiral chairs under the execution platform, stood up and took two steps forward and said, Those two guys who left their posts without permission, if we all attack, then who will guard this place? As Akino spoke, his right hand turned into a magma fist. Great eruption. Advertisement. The magma fist, comparable to a huge ice block, collided with the flying ice block, and the two collided for a moment. The entire huge ice block was evaporated by Akina's magma fist. Diamond Josa stared at the attack he launched with white eyes, was he easily cracked? This time, the pirates of the Whitebeard Pirates were shocked. Such a huge ice cube was evaporated in an instant. In their field of vision, the magma fist exploded and turned into countless magma bombs flying towards the pirates. No, that's a magma bomb. Run. The pirates of the Whitebeard Pirates quickly looked for a place where they could avoid the magma bombs. The Straw Hat Pirates and others who were fighting Gecko Moria looked at Thousand Sunny worriedly. After all, if Thousand Sunny is hit, it will be really troublesome. It is the dream ship of their Straw Hat Pirates. Nami asked worriedly, what should we do? Luffy, what if our Thousand Sunny is hit? Leave it to me, I'll use the wind cannon to prevent the magma bombs from changing their trajectory. Then I'll guard the ship, and the battle will be left to you. Frankie stood up and said, no problem, Frankie, Thousand Sunny will be left to you. Anyway, Gecko Moria is about to be defeated by us. Luffy has great confidence in Frankie and thinks that Frankie will have no problem guarding Thousand Sunny. In addition, the seven warlords of the sea Gecko Moria have been defeated steadily by them. As the magma bombs continued to fall, many pirates of the Whitebeard Pirates were hit, causing considerable casualties. Even Marine was inevitably affected. Advertisement. One of the magma bombs was forced to change direction by Frankie using the wind cannon, thus preventing Thousand Sunny from being hit by the magma bomb. On the Moby Dick, Whitebeard looked at the magma bomb flying straight towards him, raised his supreme sharp knife, cloud slash, and stabbed the magma bomb, blowing it out in one blow. Whitebeard looked at Akino with a smile and said mockingly, Lava kid, go light the candles on the birthday cake. How dare you set fire so unscrupulously. Haha, <laughs> don't you like luxurious funerals? Whitebeard. Faced with Whitebeard's taunt, Akino mocked back unmoved. Luo Chan rarely took out a cigarette and lit it. He added hacky to his words and said, It's a pity that it was almost lava to light the cigarette, otherwise it would have been perfect. Hula la la Whitebeard laughed heartily and said, Boy Luo Chan, you are so fond of me. Akina's face turned dark when he heard this. The pirates of the Whitebeard Pirates seized the opportunity to attack while Marine was stunned. They all roared loudly, seized the opportunity, destroy Marine, and rescue Ace. Fu 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 Doflamingo put his hands in his pockets and smiled leisurely, it's so interesting. In this battlefield, justice must win, that's for sure. Only the winner deserves justice. Only the winner deserves justice? Don't be ridiculous, Doflamingo. The flying squirrel on the side heard Doflamingo's words and objected very much. According to Doflamingo's meaning, doesn't it mean that if the pirates win, then the pirates become justice? After the flying squirrel finished speaking, he looked at the battlefield where the ghost spider was. The fighting there was already very fierce, but the ghost spider was becoming more and more passive. Advertisement. Another wound was cut on ghost spider's body by Shiryu of Rain. Fortunately, Ghost Spider's body was strong enough, otherwise he would have fallen down long ago. Shiryu of the Rain chased the Ghost Spider and said, Ghost Spider, is this all your strength? In fact, Shiryu of the Rain also had two wounds on his body from the Ghost Spider, but the wounds of the Ghost Spider were more than those of Shiryu of the Rain. Including the newly added wounds, there were a total of nine. Damn it, Shiryu Rain, you are a traitor. If you join the pirate group that kidnapped the Celestial Dragon's murderer, your future is doomed. Ghost Spider still fought back fiercely. Suddenly, Ghost Spider was caught in a gap by Shiryu of Rain. The sword flashed across, and the Ghost Spider was adding a wound. Ghost Spider, I won. Just when Shiryu of Rain was about to completely defeat Ghost Spider, his attack was blocked by someone. Bang! Shiryu of Rain looked at the person who stopped him and said, It's you, Flying Squirrel. Shiryu of Rain, Marine can't possibly let you be so arrogant, the Flying Squirrel said. Rain Shiryu distanced himself. The Flying Squirrel also came to Ghost Spider and asked with concern, Ghost Spider, are you okay? 
Can you still continue to fight? No problem, I was careless just now. Shiryu of the rain is difficult to deal with. Let's go together. Ghost Spider responded as he wiped the blood from the wound. That's what I planned to. Needless to say, Ghost Spider had the same plan for Flying Squirrel. Advertisement. Chapter 46 Pluton Rayleigh arrives on the battlefield. Advertisement. On Rain's Shiryu side, facing two elite vice admirals alone, he instantly felt the pressure rising. However, Shiryu of the Rain also looked very excited and said, Come on, Ghost Spider, Flying Squirrel, let me see if you two work together to defeat me. Since you chose to betray Marine, then wait to be judged. Flying Squirrel said. On the Moby Dick, Whitebeard asked Luo Chen on the side, Boy Luo Chen, your subordinate is being besieged by two vice admirals right now? Aren't you worried? Don't worry, that guy Shiryu of Rain can handle two vice admirals. Luo Chen responded calmly. With the current strength of Shiryu of Rain, it will not be easy for the two elite vice admirals to work together to defeat Shiryu of Rain. If the two elite vice admirals are on the same level as Shiryu of Rain, then Shiryu of Rain will indeed be defeated, but whether it is Ghost Spider or Flying Squirrel, they are even worse than Shiryu of Rain. The results are self-evident. Whitebeard originally planned to test Luo Chen's ultimate goal, but it seems that it will not be revealed for the time being. Sengoku's face on the execution platform couldn't be darker. He gritted his teeth and said, Shiryu of the damn rain, he restrained two vice admirals as soon as he came. It was the vice admiral who had the strongest combat power, and the most dim one was Luo Chen. At this time, Garp walked to the execution platform, and Sengoku asked in confusion, Garp, what are you going to do? Advertisement. I'm warning you, it's best not to mess around and remember your identity for me. Of course I always know who I am, I just want to come here to spend time with my family at the last moment. When Garp spoke, he already looked particularly decadent and sad. Ace, who was kneeling, looked at his grandfather Garp, opened his mouth and said, Old man, I, don't say anything. This is the path you choose. No matter whether it's right or wrong, you have to keep going. Garp said while wiping tears. Sengoku searched his temples, as long as Garp didn't mess around, Sengoku was afraid that Garp would mess around. Suddenly, the ground at Naval Headquarters Marine Ford began to shake slightly with increasing frequency. The Marines were confused. The pirates of the Whitebeard Pirates were all excited and said, Great, Oz is finally here. Then a huge figure began to appear in everyone's field of vision. Lieutenant Colonel Marine said in horror, What is that? Isn't it too huge? Several times bigger than the giant Vice Admiral. Leave it to us. The giant Vice Admirals all started to move. After all, facing such a huge guy, only the giant Vice Admiral could handle it. However, as Oz continued to approach, a person on his shoulder also appeared in everyone's field of vision. There was nothing they could do because it was too obvious. The eyes of both Sengoku and Garp fluctuated. Advertisement. Garp said in surprise, Pluton Rayleigh, he's here too. Garp, we can't just sit idly by now. Sengoku has become seriously aware of the seriousness of the matter. Marine had already made a lot of preparations to face Whitebeard, the strongest man in the world, and now there was another legendary figure. If he and Garp continue to choose to sit on the sidelines, then maybe Marine will really face failure in the end. Kizaru said wretchedly, it's so scary, is Pluton Rayleigh here too? Alas, Aokiji scratched his hair and said, now the war has to break through again. Akainu looked coldly under the execution platform and said, Pluton Rayleigh, if the old guy doesn't hide and take care of himself, if he dares to come to Marineford, then today this place will be the graveyard of you old guys. Whitebeard also looked at Rayleigh and said, Rayleigh. Rayleigh jumped off Oz and landed on the Moby Dick. Rayleigh smiled and said, I haven't seen Whitebeard for decades, and there is also Luo Chen, the old man here who cheated me. Hula la la Whitebeard laughed heartily and said, It's true that I haven't seen you for decades, and you are so old now, but you said Luo Chen cheated you? Interesting. Old man Rayleigh, you can't just leave your captain's son to die, right? Luo Chen looked at Rayleigh with a half smile and asked, Yeah, it's okay if you don't know, but now that you know it, you have to take a trip. Rayleigh said with a smile on her lips, Advertisement. Doflamingo put his hands in his pockets, laughed loudly and said, Fuff, fu, fu. This war is so interesting. The vice captain of Pirate King Roger has also appeared. So who will win this war? Pluton Rayleigh. My hawk looked at Pluton Rayleigh, although it was the first time he saw such a person. However, Hawkeye My Hawk can also feel that Pluton Rayleigh is also a master of swordsmanship, which makes Hawkeye My Hawk start to feel itchy. On the Moby Dick, Rayleigh scanned the entire battlefield and said, Logically speaking, I shouldn't get involved in this war. After all, Ace is already your Whitebeard crew member. Whitebeard, you don't like others to interfere with your affairs. However, Fire Fist Ace is Captain Roger's only bloodline left in the world, so our purpose is the same, Whitebeard. Hula la la Whitebeard could tell why Rayleigh said these words. If it were before, Whitebeard would definitely choose to beat Rayleigh out first. He is a dignified Whitebeard and does not need anyone to help him yet. However, Whitebeard has to admit that his body is starting to fail and he is getting old. Faced with so many strong men in Marine, Whitebeard cannot guarantee that he will be able to rescue Ace. You can choose to risk your life. But now it seems that the possibility of him rescuing Ace is getting higher and higher, and Whitebeard is willing to accept it. Ace was kneeling on the execution platform, looking at the strange old man on the Moby Dick. Is that guy the deputy captain with an irresponsible father? Advertisement. Chapter 47 Aokiji takes action to freeze Oz. Advertisement. The arrival of Pluton Rayleigh instantly put a lot of pressure on Marine. Crane Vice Admiral muttered, Accidents happen one after another. It's better to be well prepared, otherwise the consequences will be disastrous. Demon Oz pushed all the way, even if the giant Vice Admiral blocked him, he still couldn't stop Demon Oz. The Marineford wall was also smashed with a warship by the Demon Oz. Follow Oz, rush into the square, occupy the naval headquarters, and rescue Ace. The pirates of the Whitebeard Pirates roared loudly. Attack, attack, never let the pirates board the square. The Marine soldiers were also constantly boosting their morale to resist the attack of the Whitebeard Pirates. Ace, I'm here to save you. Oz carried the big knife and kept pushing forward. Several giants, Vice Admiral, were also beaten to pieces by the Demon Oz. In the original work, Bartholomew Kuma, Gekko Moria, and Doflamingo took action one after another to stop the Demon Oz. Now Gekko Moria has been defeated by the Straw Hat Pirates and others, and Bartholomew Kuma is stopped by Ivankov. 
There was only one Doflamingo left who was leisurely throughout the whole journey. Doflamingo put his hands in his pockets and said with a smile, Fa, fu, fu. The defense line is almost broken, so Marine, what should you do? Anyway, Doflamingo has no plans to take action for the time being. Of course, he will take action based on his mood. Advertisement. In today's battlefield, to put it bluntly, he, Doflamingo, is a neutral party. Just when Demon Oz was about to lead the pirates of the Whitebeard Pirates into Marine Ford Plaza, a man with a cold air all over his body stood up, there is really nothing we can do. Aokiji jumped up and stood directly opposite Majin Oz and said, if a big guy like you rushes into the square, it will cause massive casualties to Marine. Frozen Time Capsule. Two pillars of freezing air were sprayed from the palms of Aokiji's hands towards the huge Demon Oz. What? The moment Majin Oz was hit by this freezing air, his entire huge body began to be frozen and fell down. This shows how exaggerated the power of Aokiji's frozen fruit ability is. Ace, who was kneeling on the execution platform, looked at Oz worriedly and shouted loudly, Ozzy. The pirates of the Whitebeard Pirates were also calling for Oz. 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 The marine soldier screamed with excitement after seeing the huge monster Majin Oz being stopped by Aokiji Admiral. Great, this big guy was finally stopped. Fortunately, Aokiji Admiral took action. That's right, we have the three most powerful admirals here, so there is no need to be afraid of the Whitebeard Pirates. Advertisement. That's right, there is no need to be afraid of the Whitebeard Pirates, we will kill them. The morale of the marine soldiers has improved slightly. After all, the Whitebeard Pirates charge was blocked. But the breakthrough has been opened by the Devil Oz. Whitebeard looked at the frozen Oz with distress, then looked at the breach, and said loudly, You guys, step on Oz and rush into the square. The pirates of the Whitebeard Pirates were inspired by their father's voice. On Rainy Shiryu's side, against the cooperation between Ghost Spider and Flying Squirrel, there was no way to break through for a while. Ghost Spider threatened, Shiryu of Rain, since you have become a traitor, you and Luo Chen will both die in Naval Headquarters Marine Ford today. Haha. <laughs> Shiryu of the Rain sneered, If you want to kill me, Shiryu of the Rain, and ask Admiral to fight me, just the two of you are not qualified. You are so arrogant, the two of us are enough to take you down. The Flying Squirrel used the six-style shave to appear behind Shiryu of the Rain and launch a surprise attack. Rain Shiryu raised Thunderstorm sideways to block the Flying Squirrel's sneak attack. The Ghost Spider held eight knives and slashed at Shiryu of the Rain from midair. Rain Shiryu had to choose to be forced to retreat to avoid the attack of the Ghost Spider. However, when Shiryu of Rain had just avoided the attack of the Ghost Spider, he sensed someone attacking from behind, which instantly made Shiryu of Rain frown. Shiryu of the Rain had to retreat and quickly adjust his body to deal with the sudden attack. White Smoke Launcher. Advertisement. At the very moment of making a fortune, Rain Shiryu's dangerous legs blocked the incoming attack. Shiryu of the Rain looked at a man holding a Marine Commodore with a rank of 10 on his hands in confusion, and asked, Who are you? Smoker also smoked a cigar and said, Get your people. Haha. <laughs> Shiryu of the Rain was instantly amused and laughed, Are Marines so arrogant nowadays? Does this guy think he can take down Shiryu of the Rain? Smoker, why are you here? Flying Squirrel asked. Of course, Flying Squirrel and Ghost Spider also knew Smoker. It was unclear why Smoker suddenly stopped dealing with the Whitebeard Pirates and instead came over to them. Battlefield. After all, Smoker is one of the few Logia Demon Fruit Powers in Naval Headquarters, and it's hard not to recognize him. Smoker held Ten's hand tightly. After his subordinate Tashiji was taken away by Luo Chen, Tashiji was now a bounty criminal because of the kidnapping of the Celestial Dragons. Even if Tashiji is successfully rescued, in the end Tashiji will no longer be able to continue being a Marine. Originally, Smoker wanted to settle a score with Luo Chen, but he tried to break through to the Moby Dick, but was constantly stopped by the captain of the Whitebeard Pirate team. Therefore, Smoker had to take a step back and find Luo Chen's hand to rein Shiryu. Shiryu of the Rain also used this free time to light a cigar for himself and said slowly, Ghost Spider, Flying Squirrel, plus a Marine Commodore with Logia Demon Fruit Power? Three people. Shiryu of the Rain kicked the stones under his feet. It seemed that a fierce battle was about to begin. He originally wanted to kill the Marine soldiers, but now he had to deal with so many Marine Masters at the same time. Rain Shiryu is not timid at all, because Captain Luo Chen has the whole story. Advertisement. Chapter 48 Garp's Rayleigh. Advertisement. Sengoku on the execution platform said to Garp on the side, Garp, originally, I didn't want you to get involved in this war, but, Pluton Rayleigh, I want you to stop it. Garp, you also know how serious the consequences will be if our Marine fails. Garp did not answer Sengoku immediately, but looked at Rayleigh on the Moby Dick. Speaking of which, he and Rayleigh can be considered old rivals. Okay, I agree. Garp closed his eyes and opened them again in response. Ace said, old man. Ace. Garp also called out Ace's name. Now Garp was very conflicted in his heart. But Sengoku is right. Their Marine cannot fail. Once it fails, the consequences will be completely unimaginable. So Garp accepted Sengoku's proposal. As for whether Ace can be rescued in the end, it depends on fate. Garp slowly stood up. On the Moby Dick, Whitebeard said, Rayleigh, that guy Garp is going to find you. I know, it's been a long time since we've had a confrontation, so I'm kind of looking forward to it. Rayleigh responded. He and Whitebeard both noticed Garp's gaze just now, so of course they knew what was going on. Garp took a deep breath and roared loudly, Rayleigh, your bones are not rusty yet. You are not rusty yet, how can I be rusty? Rayleigh responded loudly with a smile. Hero Garp. Pluton Rayleigh. Are these two big shots about to fight? Both the Whitebeard Pirates and the Marines were talking about these two old men. It's the old man. But Garp and Rayleigh are too famous. Advertisement. Garp walked to the edge of the execution platform and jumped up. The moment he landed on the square, he ran towards Moby Dick. The pirates were completely unable to stop Garp along the way. Vice Admiral Garp is on the attack. The Marine soldiers were excited. The captains of the Whitebeard Pirates did not step forward to intercept Garp because they knew that Garp was not going for his father but for Pluton Rayleigh. Their purpose is to rescue Ace, and rescuing Ace is their first priority. On the Moby Dick, Rayleigh took two steps forward and said, Whitebeard, I guess I can only help you so far. After all, dealing with Garp is enough for me to have no time to spare. Hula la la Whitebeard smiled confidently and said, These Marines can't do anything to me. Rayleigh ran out in an instant, with an astonishing speed. As if they had agreed in advance, Rayleigh and Garp kept running towards the edge of the battlefield. Sengoku saw that Garp and Rayleigh were about to face each other, and secretly breathed a sigh of relief. 
Otherwise, a Pluton Rayleigh would be very troublesome, and it was just right for Garp to stop it, so that the battlefield would not develop in an unfavorable direction. Rayleigh, Garp. Garp and Rayleigh made moves at the same time when they were ten meters away from each other. One fist with black lightning and one knife with black lightning. Boom, the moment the two collided together, the entire ground shattered. Advertisement. As the ground breaks, Garp punched quickly, and Rayleigh counterattacked quickly with a knife. Garp laughed while fighting, Rayleigh, you're getting old, you can't swing your sword as fast as before. Garp, you must be old, your fists look so soft. Rayleigh also mocked him unceremoniously. The confrontation between Garp and Rayleigh instantly became the most intense place on the battlefield. The terrifying battle made it impossible for Marine and the pirates to get close. Once they got close and were affected, they were basically either dead or injured. Luffy looked in the direction of Grandpa and Rayleigh and said, It's so amazing. Grandpa and Rayleigh are both so powerful. After all, one is the Marine hero Vice Admiral, and the other is the Vice Captain of the Pirate King. They are definitely powerful. Sanji responded after kicking a Marine soldier away. Zoro gritted his teeth and said, But there are too many Marines we have to face. It's not that easy for us to rush to the execution platform. Luo Chen on the Moby Dick was also watching the battlefield between Garp and Rayleigh. Luo Chen looked at the two old guys. They were not really fighting desperately. Instead, they looked a bit like old friends who had not seen each other for many years. Luo Chen also had a bad idea and asked the system to bring up the data panels of Garp and Rayleigh. Object, Garp. Special state, entering Mad Dog state. Armament hacky further improves briefly. Observation hacky, SS level. Armament hacky, SS plus level, Mad Dog state, Super SS plus level. Conquerors hacky, SS level. Swordsmanship, D level. Physical skills, SS plus level. Advertisement, basic. Physical endurance defense, S plus level. Comprehensive attack power, SS plus level. Comprehensive defense power, SS level. After Luo Chen looked at Garp's data panel, he looked at Rayleigh's. Object, Rayleigh. Observation hacky, SS level. Armament hacky, SS level. Conquerors hacky, SS level. Swordsmanship, SS level. Physical skills, SS level. Basic. Physical endurance defense, S level. Comprehensive attack power, SS level. Comprehensive defense power, S plus level. After Luo Chen saw these two old guys, he couldn't help but take a breath of air. It's simply ridiculously strong, especially Garp Armament Haki and Teijutsu, which are completely at the peak of the Shogun level. Rayleigh is incredibly comprehensive. Conquerors Haki, swordsmanship, and physical skills all reach the general level, and there are no shortcomings. However, regardless of whether it is Garp or Rayleigh, their basic, physical, endurance and defense are no longer at the general level. However, both of them have reached the advanced age of 76. It is pure nonsense that their physical endurance will not decrease as they get older, and their combat effectiveness has not decreased to the same level. Advertisement. Chapter 49 Copying Hawkeye My Hawk Swordsmanship. Advertisement. Garp's comprehensive defense can continue to be maintained at the general level because the SS plus armament hacky is half a level stronger than Rayleigh's SS level, and the basic physical endurance defense S plus level is also half a level higher than Rayleigh's S level. Therefore, the comprehensive defense power is still at the general level, and Rayleigh's comprehensive defense power is only S plus level. It is estimated that the general defense power of Rayleigh at its peak is also at the general level. Luo Chen analyzed according to the data panel. Garp, Rayleigh, and Haki have not declined in physical skills. What has declined is only the basic physical strength, endurance, and defense. To put it bluntly, the physical energy has declined. At Garp's peak, his basic, physical, endurance and defense were definitely at the SS plus level, and Rayleigh would also be at the SS level. When these two old men were at their peak, there was absolutely no so-called shortcomings. At this time, Luo Chen couldn't help but look at Whitebeard on the side. Whitebeard focused his entire attention on the battlefield and did not notice Luo Chen's gaze. Since the panels of those two old guys, Garp and Rayleigh, are so gorgeous, what about Whitebeard's? As soon as I thought of it, I asked the system to bring up Whitebeard's panel. Object, Newgate, Hidden Disease State. Paramecia Shock Fruit, Awakened. Observation Hacky, S Rank. Amament Hacky, SS Level. Conquerors Hacky, SS Plus Level. Swordsmanship, SS Level. Physical Skills, SS Level. Basic. Physical Endurance Defense, S Level. Comprehensive Attack Power, Super SS Plus Level. Comprehensive Defense Power, S Plus Level. Luo Chen looked at the panel with a puzzled expression for the first time. Advertisement. System, what do you mean by Super SS Plus Level? What is the difference between it and SS Plus Level? Answer to host, Super SS Plus Level is a level between SS Plus Level and SSS Level. Because the power of SSS Level has been qualitatively improved, the determination of Super SS Plus Level is stronger than the peak of Emperor Level and weaker than God Level. System, how did you calculate that Whitebeard has Super SS Plus Level attack power? Answer to host, Whitebeard uses the Shock Fruit ability to awaken and superimposes SS Plus Level. Conqueror's Winding can temporarily step into Super SS Plus Level attack power. However, according to Whitebeard's current state, if he uses it once, the hidden disease in his body will immediately break out. After hearing the system's explanation, Luo Chen finally understood what was going on. It is the Shock Fruit ability awakening superimposed with SS Plus Level Conqueror's Entanglement, allowing the power to briefly reach Super SS Plus Level attack power. After all, Shock Fruit's ability is still the most destructive. At present, Whitebeard's physical condition seems to be very strong, but his condition is not stable at all. Observation Hacky is weakened, and the basic physical endurance defense is also weakened due to age. If a hidden disease suddenly breaks out in the battle, the basic physical endurance defense will continue to weaken immediately. The minimum standard for using Conqueror's Entanglement is SS Level, currently Luo Chen himself. Host, Luo Chen. Paramecia Lion Fruit Ability, Awakened. Zoan Phantom Beast Phoenix Fruit Ability, Awakened. Observation Hacky, SS Plus Level. Amament Hacky A Level. Conqueror's Hacky, S Plus Level. Physical Skills, A Plus Level. Swordsmanship, SS Level. Basic. Physical Endurance Defense, SS Plus Level. Comprehensive Attack Power, S Plus Level. Comprehensive Defense Power, SS Level. Luo Chen looked at his data panel and had already locked in on the next target. 
Advertisement. It's time to push our strength to a higher level. Luo Chen could hardly control his excitement. Luo Chen looked at where the Myhawk was and directly asked the system to bring up the data panel of the Myhawk. That's right. Luo Chen will take aim at the opportunity to copy an ability from Myhawk, that guy's swordsmanship. Object, Myhawk. Observation hacky, SS level. Amament hacky, SS level. Conqueror's hacky, SS level. Swordsmanship, SS plus level. Physical skills, S level. Basic. Physical endurance defense, SS level. Comprehensive attack power, SS plus level. Comprehensive defense power, SS level. He is indeed the greatest swordsman in the world, SS plus level in swordsmanship. But I don't know if there is a swordsman even more powerful than my hawk hidden in the world. Luo Chen licked his tongue unconsciously and said silently in his heart. System, copy my hawk sword skills for me. Received, host. Eagle Eye My Hawk Swordsmanship SS plus level is being integrated. As My Hawk Swordsmanship is continuously copied to Luo Chen, Luo Chen's aura is also changing. Whitebeard, who was closest to Luo Chen, immediately felt some changes in his body. Whitebeard thought to himself, has this Luo Chen strength improved? Otherwise, why would it make me feel dangerous? Advertisement. Whitebeard had only felt this feeling among enemies at the same level, and now Luo Chen actually gave him this feeling. My Hawk, who was cutting down the pirate minions, suddenly looked at Luo Chen, with an inexplicable perception of the swordsman. Luo Chen's eyes flashed red, as if he felt like he was bullying the world. The data panel after merging My Hawk's sword. Host, Luo Chen. Paramecia Lion Fruit Ability, Awakened. Zoan Phantom Beast Phoenix Fruit Ability, Awakened. Observation Hacky, SS Plus Level. Amament Hacky, S Rank. Conqueror's Hacky, SS Plus Level. Physical Skills, S Level. Swordsmanship, Super SS Plus Level. Basic. Physical Endurance Defense, SS Plus Level. Comprehensive Attack Power, Super SS Plus Level. Comprehensive Defense Power, SS Level. It seems that the superposition of an SS Plus Level and an SS Level Swordsmanship cannot break through the SSS Level. However, Luo Chen could already feel that his attack power increased several times instantly. Armament Haki and Teijetsu have been driven along, but it will probably be difficult to do so in the future unless Armament Haki and Teijetsu are copied or inherited. Otherwise, the S Level Level already belongs to the standard of the first class strongman in the sea. The main Conqueror's Haki has the ability to use Conqueror's Entanglement. Fencing? It's time for a replacement as the world's greatest swordsman. Advertisement. Chapter 50 It would be interesting to let Marco go to trouble Akaina. Advertisement. Like Whitebeard, he also has Super SS plus level attack power, but Whitebeard can barely use it, while Luo Chen can use it regularly. This is the biggest difference. Luo Chen opened his right hand and looked at his clenched fist, covered with a layer of black lightning. Whitebeard looked at Luo Chen in shock and said, Boy, have you mastered that trick yet? That's right. Luo Chen responded. Whitebeard sighed and continued, It seems that times have moved forward. I, Rayleigh, Garp, Sengoku, we are all old. In fact, after Whitebeard saw Luo Chen's ability to override Conqueror's Entanglement, he already recognized Luo Chen from the bottom of his heart. After all, those who can control Conqueror's Entanglement in the sea are all strong men who dominate the area. Just like the four emperors of New World today, Luo Chen put down his right hand and said with a smile, How about it, Whitebeard, have you considered handing over the Whitebeard pirates to me after your death? Hula la la Whitebeard said with a smile, I can see that your boy has great ambitions, but I don't want my sons to take risks. There is another thing Whitebeard didn't say, that is, his sons, once they follow this kid Luo Chen, they will definitely fight endlessly. Advertisement. Luo Chen did not answer Whitebeard's words, because in Luo Chen's view, Whitebeard was too protective of his sons. If cultivated properly, for example, if Marco awakens the phoenix form, then a master of the general level level will be born? It's true that Marco is very powerful below the general level, but after all, if you don't reach the general level, there is an essential gap. At today's naval headquarters Marineford Battlefield, the strongest person is Luo Chen himself. With the ability to awaken in phoenix form, coupled with the current lethality, it is completely enough to kill seven in and seven out of Marineford. At this time, Luo Chen gave instructions to Domino behind him and said, Domino, I give you a task. Find Buggy the Clown and tell him to put the video phone bug in your hands and say it was me. Okay, Captain Luo Chen. Domino felt that he was finally useful, otherwise Domino would feel uncomfortable hiding behind Captain Luo Chen all the time. After all, she had just joined Captain Luo Chen's pirate group, so she had to make some contribution. She was afraid that Captain Luo Chen would despise her. Sengoku, who was on the execution platform, was very anxious as he watched the entire battlefield turn into white heat. So he said to Akainu below, let's start according to the plan, Akainu. Yeah, Akainu stroked his hat and stood up. He had been waiting for Sengoku's order. Akainu could hardly wait. After getting up, Akainu walked down to the execution platform, bypassed the building behind, and headed to the battlefield outside the bay. This plan was also discussed between Akainu and Sengoku before the war started. Advertisement. If this plan can be successfully implemented, Whitebeard's combat effectiveness will be greatly weakened. This is also what Sengoku wants. The main reason is that Whitebeard's destructive power is too powerful, which worries Sengoku. After all, Sengoku is lucky enough to have seen Whitebeard use that kind of power. After Sengoku finished giving instructions to Akainu, he picked up the phone and conveyed another order. He used the secret code he had prepared before, which was to ask the marine soldiers to retreat in an orderly manner. Prepare to activate the siege wall. At that time, the Whitebeard pirates will be the turtle in the urn. Including the prisoners who escaped from Impel Down, the revolutionaries, the Straw Hat pirates, and the most important criminal Luo Chen. In the end, Marine will take them all. When Luo Chen saw the guy Akaino walking down the execution platform, he was probably going to trick Skiard into assassinating Whitebeard just like in the original work. After a while, Marco flew back to the Moby Dick with wings burning with blue flames. Shen Qi knelt down next to Whitebeard and reported, Dad, we just received information that Marine plans to execute Ace in advance. Ha. Huh. Whitebeard said disdainfully, that guy Sengoku won't make such a low-level mistake when it comes to intelligence leakage. Dad, what should we do now? Marco asked. Whitebeard asked, where are Squard and the others? We're in a tough fight with Marine outside the bay. Dad, how about I fly over and help Squard and the others? Marco responded, 
No, I guess the so-called early execution is the key. After thinking about it, Whitebeard said, let Squard and the others spread to both sides of the bay. Advertisement. When Marco was about to respond, he was interrupted. At this time, Luo Chen intervened and said, Whitebeard, why not let Marco go to the outside of the bay for support? Boy Luo Chen, do you have any different opinions? Whitebeard couldn't help but ask. Luo Chen did not directly answer Whitebeard's question, but said directly, let Marco go to Skiard's side to support him, and we will know. Dad. Marco looked at his father, waiting for his order. Whitebeard had no intention of letting Marco go outside the bay, and he didn't know what kind of medicine Luo Chen was selling in the gourd. But since Luo Chen said that in front of him, Whitebeard said, Marco, go to Squard and the others and help them break through the marine defense line. Okay, Dad. After Marco responded, his hands immediately turned into blue flame wings and flew out of the bay. At the same time, outside Naval Headquarters Marine Ford Bay, there is a battlefield where 43 pirate ships under the Whitebeard Pirate Group are located. Skiard led the team to continuously kill Marine soldiers, and said to his men, remember not to confront the Marine Vice Admiral alone. After Squard finished speaking, he looked at the breach opened by Oz before and said calmly, if we attack from here, we can form a flanking attack on Marine with Dad and the others. 